uh, is the Dr. Barnwal. First uh, two keynote lecture I I will conduct and then I will hand over this uh, floor to the Dr. K P Singh for conducting uh, proceeding for the two remaining uh, keynote lecture and then we will come on the oral. And all together I think 15 to 16 minutes because 18 minutes one and a half hour if you look the divide by five. So 18 minutes will be there. So I think 15 minutes uh, presentation and two, three minute discussion. And I hope the discussion I think will be at the end or in between that. What Dr. Bernal, what we are suggesting because we all are the <laughs> uh, quickly one would, or two uh, questions uh, one or two questions quickly we can ask in between that yes, and the last yes. if time will be there then we have to uh, detail discussion if any any anything is required so first of all I would like to I think introduce Professor Bernamal everybody is knowing he don't need any introductions uh, for a, such a gathering a small gathering uh, although he Everybody, those in belongs to the plant pathology and biotechnology fraternity, they are well known, knowing well knowing me, knowing to the Professor Bernamal, uh, his special area uh, in the molecular characterization uh, of the viruses, especially uh, horticulture crops viruses, very, very, some of the very tedious and quarantine significance viruses are important viruses he handled, especially in the grapes and citrus. And he developed a DNA chip, I think, so any private uh, public organization. This is the first time he developed a very, 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 very uh, important DNA chip for diagnostics of the several viruses. <laughs> Eliza based uh, diagnostics also he worked. And his contribution has been very well recognized by the different society of the plant productions, uh, including uh, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, where he got the uh, fellow. And best teacher award from IERI also is the professor in plant pathology and one of the best teacher in the IERI. So I welcome you, Dr. Bernamal, for your presentation. Kindly share your slide and make a presentation. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Visible, yes. Uh, very good morning to all of you, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. S.C. Dube, ADG Plant Protection and Biosecurity, for uh, introducing me to the small gatherings. And I also must thank Indian Phytopathological Society <clears throat> to give me this opportunity to share my uh, work uh, before you on high throughput sequencing. So I'll be talking, uh, I will not take more than 15 minutes. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, uh, we know that uh, there are more than 2000 plant uh, viruses and currently they are uh, routinely detected by ELISA and PCR. And uh, both these methods uh, only detect uh, known viruses and ELISA at a time can detect only one virus while variant of PCR like multiplex PCR can detect uh, uh, multiple viruses, uh, maybe up to eight viruses and wires. Then uh, uh, because we can only detect known viruses and that too in a limited fashion, uh, another method came into picture that is microarray chip where RNA is used and we can detect, uh, uh, we can have detection of, uh, parallel detection of about uh, 1000 uh, viruses and 30 wire wires. And more recently, next generation sequencing or high throughput sequencing has come into picture and that was uh, first uh, used for detection of plant viruses in 2009. And the advantage of uh, high throughput sequencing is that we can detect multiple virus infection, known as well as unknown viruses, particularly novel viruses. So, so this is very, very important uh, technique uh, for uh, uh, phytosanitary purpose, as well as to identify viruses which were not 
previously known in the plant. And the method uh, here, I have given the outline of the method that one has to go for total RNA sequencing because most of the plant viruses are RNA viruses and even DNA viruses replicate through RNA, uh, messenger RNA. So, so uh, then once you have RNA sequencing, one has to go for quality control checking of raw reads and then one has to remove the host reads. And after removing the host reads from uh, uh, non-host reads, one can identify known viruses as well as novel viruses. And that can be done through using plant and virus sequence database. Now I have taken an uh, example of a uh, few uh, fruit trees where uh, viruses occur in large number because of their perennial in nature. And uh, uh, in case of grape wine, uh, till 2007, there was no report of uh, occurrence of virus disease uh, in India. And then there uh, a news appeared in 2007 in Indian Express that virus strikes Maharashtra vineyards. Import stopped. Imports stopped. And this uh, uh, occurrence of viruses in uh, uh, fruit trees or uh, most of the crops may occur through exchange and introduction. Uh, and in case of fruit trees, uh, they propagate through vegetative propagation and they remain throughout the life cycle of the plant. Uh, in case of uh, grape wine, uh, leaf roll is the most important disease. And in addition to leaf roll, we come across rigose disease. Red blood disease and speckle disease. Uh, uh, so uh, amongst all these diseases, leaf roll is most important and it has been demonstrated that it can delay maturity of grapes and can reduce the sugar content by 25 to 50% and the fruit colors can uh, be poor. It can also reduce growth and yield up to 70% and the reduce, it can reduce the lifespan of vineyards. So there has been a study of screening of uh, uh, viruses in grape wine, and it has been demonstrated in a recent paper in 2019 that the benefit cost ratio of screening of GLRV3 in the North Coast region alone is more than 10 uh, is to 1. <clears throat> so when we started working on grape viruses, we applied ELISA and RT-PCR for detection of known viruses. And you can see that uh, we could get uh, presence of grape wine leaf roll virus associated virus 3 in many wine bars in different varieties of grape wine. And that was confirmed through ELISA as well as RT-PCR and they were all published in a uh, high impact factor journal like plant disease, virus disease. As uh, subsequently, we also developed polyclonal antibodies with the most common virus like grape wine leaf roll associated virus 3 and grape wine leaf roll associated virus 4 and they were published in uh, plant biochemistry and biotechnology and crop protection in 2017 and 18. So, but uh, these methods like ELISA and uh, RT-PCR have limitation as they can detect only known viruses and at a time you can detect only one uh, or at the most few viruses if you are adopting multiplex PCR. Then we started working on development of a microarray chip for virus detection. And using this chip, we could detect in one Thomson seedless uh, at least three to four viruses and three to four viroids at a time. In another variety, we could detect uh, new viruses like grape wine virus F and uh, grape wine leaf roll associated virus 4. So this was the first attempt of using microarray chip for parallel detection of uh, many viruses. If we had not used this chip, we would have never come across to know about the presence of grape wine rupestry system pitting associated virus, as well as grape wine virus F and so many wire wires. So based, uh, so th this chip was also used for many other class, but I have taken only example of grape wine. The only limitation is that this chip also uses the sequence-based detection of the uh, virus 
for for those viruses whose sequences are available in the gene bank you can see the intensity in the healthy as well as in infected plant then uh, came uh, high throughput sequencing and that happened because of the seminal work of sanger in 1970s which is also known as first generation sequencing and that laid the foundation of second or third generation sequencing so this high throughput sequencing is nothing but sequencing of a genomic region multiple times in first generation sequencing we will do sequencing only once but in high throughput sequencing we can we have to do sequencing multiple times sometimes 100 or even 1000 times and the advantage of high throughput sequencing is that it can directly detect identify and discover novel viruses in an unbiased manner and there is no requirement of antibodies or prior knowledge of the virus sequence but after sequencing in fact uh, the sequencing uh, occurs uh, in ngs or high throughput sequencing involves three steps uh, dna fragmentation to create library addition of synthetic dna adapters to these uh, fragments and then sequencing of each fragment but after sequencing uh, this sequencing can be done on different platforms and the most common platform is illumina that is second generation sequencing which is widely used because of the lowest error rate and the cost effectiveness after sequencing one has to use bioinformatics tools and earlier clc genomics workbench was commonly used but now you have we have new omics tools such as space velvet trinity and there are many uh, omics tools available on uh, in the uh, in the website like uh, viram virus tap viral zone which can uh, be used for viromics and transcript transcriptomics analysis so we used uh, sts application for the first time in 2013 to understand the etiology of urdubin leaf crinkler disease and the question was what uh, type of nucleic acid we should use for identification of the etiological agent as we all know that uh, the uh, all we know that uh, that viruses uh, have a single stranded uh, dna as a genome or single stranded rna as a genome or double stranded rna as a genome but all these viruses they produce small interfering rna si rna you can see so uh, they also produce messenger rna and and then the question was whether we should go for small rna or messenger rna or total transcriptome so initially we use small uh, rna and based on that uh, we uh, we uh, subtracted the host dry small rna and then we found the association of three viruses in the infected plant from the field and for the first time we found the association of copy mild motile virus and we described this may be the causal agent for urdubin leaf crinkle disease but subsequently in the next uh, subsequent years when we tried to find the presence of this virus we failed to detect this virus in the infected plant so sometimes even though uh, high throughput sequencing may be useful for identification of viruses but it may not solve all the problems of uh, uh, understanding the etiology of any disease but it will definitely help but we have not been able to achieve the success in case of urdubin leaf crinkle disease so far so so as i was talking about uh, what should be the ideal nucleic acid whether it should be small rna which has been used for identification of viruses in a number of cases or mrna and what will be the bioinformatics uh, pipeline for these viromatic study so to understand uh, to compare all these things we use a public uh, domain for uh, of transcriptome data of gray point which has two nucleic acid pool that is small rna as well as uh, messenger rna and they have used two tissue type uh, that is young leaf and fruit uh, peel and then this were used uh, this transcriptome data were used for uh, uh, using different bioinformatics tool like trinity spades and velvet and using this we could identify the viruses we can estimate the copy number we can reconstruct the whole genome and then we also did phylogenetic and recombination analysis and single nucleotide polymorphism study uh, 
So here, if you see uh, in the whole transcriptome data, the percentage of non-host reads were very, very small in case of uh, messenger RNA as well as small RNA. In case of messenger RNA, it ranged from 0.01% to 0.35% in uh, different uh, 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 reads of, of uh, uh, fruit uh, peel as well as young leaves. Uh, here we have given, and the percentage of reads in case of small RNA was still lesser. It, you can see 0.00025% or uh, 3% to maximum 0.006%. So from these reads, we have to identify the virus and we could uh, compare the uh, presence of different viruses using mRNA, small RNA home, and whole transcriptome in three varieties like uh, Bangalore blue, Delcus, and red globe. So you can see that uh, using mRNA, we could detect six uh, viruses in ba uh, Bangalore blue, in uh, case of Dilkus, we could detect 10 viruses. And in case of red globe, we can detect 21 viruses. While small RNA could detect only three, nine, or maybe six viruses. So, so uh, if we, we compiled all the information and we found the association of 21 viruses belonging to different genera, and that also included the presence of four my mycoviruses and our study also indicated the presence of a DNA virus, Gemini virus, grape wine, Gemini virus A. So our study indicated that the messenger RNA-based RNA high throughput sequencing is the uh, best method for identification, detection and identification of viruses. We could also find, find out the variants in the different uh, uh, viruses. Like in GLRB3, we could find in red globe, 117 vir variants. Similarly, in other viruses, variants up to 168 or 102 variants were observed in the same plant, indicating the quasi-species nature of the virus. So uh, to, uh, uh, to summarize the, this work, the red globe was in fact introduced from California and it had the maximum viral load in comparison to the native varieties like Bangalore Blue and Dilkus. Sampling different tissues revealed a more accurate sanitary status of a plant. mRNA was approach is better than small RNA home. Use of two assemblers like Velvet and Trinity or uh, Spade uh, and tissue type greatly enhanced the efficiency of viral, de viral, de viral detection. GRSLAV, which was reported originally from California in Red Globe, was also detected in our study that indicated that this virus has been introduced with the Red Globe uh, from California to India. In our study, we found the presence of nine new viruses for the first time in India, and we could reconstruct complete genome or near complete uh, genome of six vi seven viruses and one wire wire, ranging from 13 KB to about uh, 4 KB, uh, uh, sorry, 3 KB for a DNA virus, which I just talked a, a while ago. Uh, using the mRNA data, we also studied the transcriptome uh, data available publicly from NRC grape in Thompson seedness, which is grown in more than 50% area of uh, grape cultivation. And here also we could detect uh, a large number of viruses and wire wire. And we found for the first time association of grape wine leaf roll associated virus seven. So this only indicate that uh, transcriptome uh, based analysis or high throughput sequencing is a best tool for identification of known and unknown or novel uh, viruses. And all these information which we did without spending any money, because these were available in public data and that public data uh, was used for our study. But this study is not sufficient. We have to validate all these data and that I will talk at the end. Uh, yes, so based on uh, our these studies, we went for studying the seasonal dynamics of uh, viruses in two grape wine cultivars exhibiting leaf roll syndrome. And you can see that 
a grape leaf roll associated virus 3 which is the most uh, damaging virus uh, was uh, found in higher concentration in, in september as well as in march in the two varieties that is uh, uh, manjeri medica and fantasy seedless but it was almost nil in uh, in the month of december in both the varieties so this indicates that we have to uh, uh, fix our schedule a time of sample collection only then we can uh, go for virus indexing and that has been also confirmed through real time pcr here you can see that glrb3 was found in very very low concentration in case of december in these two varieties uh, so and also for other viruses like gvl and gfkv the in the month of december the virus load was comparatively much much lower than march and september so as virus population is drastically reduced in the month of december indexing and our our shared health monitoring should be done from march to september uh, we have taken another example of apple uh, uh, viral diseases where we come across 14 viruses throughout the world and in apple mosaic a large number of new viruses have been reported from different parts of the world so we did the viro and before i come to viro analysis and in different years grape wine as well as apple is imported from different parts of the world only in 2019 7 lakhs rather 8 lakh root stock and cyan and sapling of apple were uh, imported and the exim policy only suggested that they should be put into the post entry quarantine facility without bothering uh, the virus testing so when we did the three apple varieties one asymptomatic and two symptomatic we found the association of six viruses and one new viroid and you can see the presence of these viruses in these three varieties so apple necrotic mosaic virus was recorded for the first time from the mosaic disease and when we based on our study we did survey and uh, applied rt pcr and uh, for detection of this new virus we found that in large number of varieties this was the virus which was present uh, in the archer indicating that the certification program should be based on the virome analysis rather than our previous knowledge of the association of a particular virus and we also reconstructed the full genome of all these viruses so finally ngs or uh, hts detect, detected viruses in asymptomatic plants and agclav apple chlorotic uh, uh, sorry apple green crinkle associated virus was for the first time reported from india similarly apple necrotic mosaic virus and apple hammer viroid was identified for the first time from india so whether uh, our pipeline which we developed and used for transcriptome analysis in our previous studies can lead to identification of completely new viruses not reported at all uh, and not available uh, and there is no information available in the gene bank so we laid our hand on transcriptome data brahmi plant and when we applied this our pipeline analysis pipeline we found the presence of two novel rhabdo viruses and one solendo virus for the first time in the world so this is the power of high throughput sequencing which can detect not only known viruses but as well as unknown or uh, novel viruses so let us come to the, its application so in usa while we are talking about so much about high throughput sequencing but there has been always question mark whether it can be used in plant quarantine and certification program so there is a national clean plant network in usa and they do all breeding program and certification for production of clean planting material so this ncpn uh, went for partnership with the usda office on development of high throughput sequencing uh, guidelines and they uh, with the aim to validate and standardize uh, sts procedure uh, for plant viruses and virus like agent in select sorry so please conclude that ah uh, bas ho gaya uh, in uh, apple and grape wine and subsequently it was 
Hydroport sequencing has been uh, extended to citrus clonal protection program in USA. And FAO in uh, 2009 also has prepared a guidelines uh, on the use of high throughput sequencing as a diagnostic tool for phytosanitary purpose. So one can see its importance. And these are the publication on high throughput sequencing based uh, paper. We published first paper in 2015 in crop protection, followed by in frontiers in microbiology. And then in, uh, from Merit, my earlier uh, SRFN student published a paper in genomics using high throughput sequencing for characterization of a garlic virus. The Ishwar Bhatt has also published a paper on high throughput sequencing for identification of two novel viruses in ginger. And very recently, for two novel, three novel viruses, our paper was accepted in archives of virology. Uh, so in uh, finally to conclude, application of these sequencing approaches elevates the problem of false negative result during genetic. If there is a genetic vari variability at low titer, which are frequently encountered in viruses infecting fruit trees, however, the validation of sequences obtained in STS has to be there uh, uh, using conventional sequencing because so many a times we get uh, poor coverage at the five days and three days end of the genome and the integrity of unusual recombination junctions. With this, I conclude my talk on uh, uh, high throughput sequencing. I acknowledge uh, uh, all the persons who have uh, encouraged me to undertake this work and my colleague, Dr. Sarita Jitendra Susil Sajad, my student Kabi, and all students in my lab and the funding from ICR Outreach Project. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bernamal, for a very outstanding presentation. And uh, you have very nicely highlighted the, um, the different methods of diagnostics being used for the detection of viruses. And more emphasis has been given on the transcriptomics and the high put sequencing, STS, which is nowadays very, very important. Uh, tools for the identification. Definitely, there is no chance of misidentification if you have the entire sequence available with us. So this is, uh, I think, it's very one of the good and advanced tool being used worldwide for detection of viruses. And very nicely, whatever the grapes, viruses, and all these work were summarized uh, very nicely. So quickly, if anybody have any one or two clarification, then a question they can ask. Thank you. Yes, yes, Dr. C. Yes. Uh, Dr. Silverajan, please. Yeah. Uh, sir, yes, you said that uh, this is already there in the USA as a recommendation to use this technique for uh, uh, diagnosis uh, for especially germplasm, whatever it may be. But can we, is it affordable to do like in India? And all? Uh, if you see, like uh, in medical science, we say no, use of steroid, we have to see its application, like when you are importing crops like uh, apple, uh, stone fruits, or uh, grape wine, you cannot go for uh, conventional RT-PCR and ELISA because that will only tell you one or two viruses for which uh, PRA is there. Eh? But there, you have to adopt high throughput sequencing and that only will tell you which are the viruses present there and that cost is not much because it will not cost more than 15 to 20,000 yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Okay, sir. Only thing is when we import like, let us say, 1,000, 10,000 or 1 lakh uh, yes. things, you know, can, how to sample? Do we have any standard operating protocol? Uh, that guidelines is not yet uh, not developed. Yeah. Not developed. We need to develop. But from one nursery, definitely from one orchard, it's, uh, it has been imported. We can pull three to five samples, definitely. That will be a representative sample. And based on that, we can do conventional RT-PCR or ELISA for other samples. It is not necessary that all samples have to be subjected for high throughput sequencing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Celia is asking my question. Dr. Celia, you have any query? Yeah, uh, sir, thank you very much for a very uh, good presentation, very comprehensive, in fact. 
and i have a uh, just to clarify for dr selvarajan uh, for sampling procedures we have international standards for photosanitary measure sampling procedure and also directorate of plant production quarantine and storage adapts the they have the sampling procedure if tons and tons of material comes how much sample has to be taken okay that is one thing and uh, uh, to dr barinwal sir like uh, internationally the ngs or high throughput sequencing is had to be adapted for quarantine and also uh, like i have attended recently the american photopathological society webinars also so even internationally this is had to be adapted what do you suggest and also it should be cost effective like in quarantine uh, suppose in our lab if we have to test uh, 100 samples how much money we, we should be having uh no no it is it, we have to weigh which sample have to be subjected to sts if you are importing soybean seed eh? and if the known viruses are only 5 to 10 eh? one can go for pcr or elisa but cross like citrus were 25 viruses apple 14 viruses grapevine 70 viruses you cannot go for elisa and pcr for each virus so there it is must to adopt this technology and that is why uh, the national plant and clean plant network in usa they are already uh, getting into uh, mou kind of things and also standardize the procedure how it can be used for certification program similarly fao i have shown because the lack of time i did not elaborate it fao has already published in 2009 how it should be uh, used for certification and phytosanitary purposes. Of course, uh, we have to develop models of R&I, but definitely the importance of technique cannot be underestimated. <laughs> no, no, that I agree. That's but uh, uh. that's a what about the major ch challenges in corporation of STS in Indian scenario? Uh, Indian scenario, it is just like other diagnostic technique, even the routine diagnostic techniques, uh, as I said, Apple, 8 lakhs plants were imported uh, in 2019. And uh, Jim said the post anti quarantine facilities should be there and viruses should be tested. But I am not sure there is any regard that viruses were tested. Mm -hmm. So it has the same challenge as other diagnostic uh, tools. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Dr. Barnawal. This is the, the one Dr. Barnawal, Dr. Silva Rajan has asked for the sampling. This is somewhat different from the sampling yes, procedure yes. mentioned right. in the I standards. Said. It has to because be. this sampling means high, uh, if you have to do a, a high put sequencing, how, how the sample has to be taken from, how much representative has to come to detect almost all the associated viruses still SOP has to be developed for this. And of course, this is very sensitive technique. This cannot be routinely be used. This may be only apply where there is COVID-like situation, the plant is there. Mm -hmm. If large number of uh, just like ap apples and presently uh, millions of apple seedlets are being imported. And if any country has to be suspected, definitely randomly some simple apps down and see whether this uh, unknown viruses are coming or not coming. I, I must so, add just for a minute. A uh, couple of days back, my friend in the horticulture division called me to visit Grapevine Orchard in IRI. And many plants were showing virus-like disease for the first time. We were just not sure yeah. which virus is associated. Of course, based on the symptom, we tested through conventional PCR. And we found for the first time association of a nematode-transmitted virus. Just imagine. Yes. Uh, and, and we have sent it for high throughput sequencing also. So let us know how conventional versus high throughput sequencing uh, works. No, no, this is very good. There is no doubt. But at least we have, I hope that in IRI... At least we, we have can, developed capabilities. We can, yes. we can <laughs> develop a virus-free, at least uh, using all these equipments, at least we can, our techniques, we can develop a virus-free planting material. At that least is the uh, role of horticulture scientists. <laughs> yeah, jointly we have to do yes. like this because in country, at least we can claim any ICR institutes like IHR or... Um, in, in, in another uh, horticulture based institutes or IRI should have the at least few plants which are maybe in the protected conditions which are the virus free. Uh, so show the, the techniques what we have for the 
detection and identification of virus. Thank you, Professor Bernamal, for thank explaining you, thank and Thank you, Dr. Dubey, for giving So now I, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. R. Uh, when Jahan, I think my pronunciation may, be, may not be right very. Uh, uh, and he's from India, presently working in the university, uh, in a college of agriculture and marine sciences, Sultan Kubas University, Muscat. Uh, and uh, just uh, I, I feel my pleasure introducing him. Uh, he did a BSc and MSc from the Annamalai University, India itself and PhD degree in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University where subsequently after doing his PhD, he joined as assistant professor and elevated up to the professor in 2006. Again, then he left this university and postdoctoral fellow in the uh, Kansas University in USA. And after that, he's presently working in the Muscat. Uh, and uh, he's the winner of uh, several awards. A few of them I would like to definitely list that mentioned that Rockefeller Foundation Rice, Rice Biotechnology Postdoctoral Fellowship Award, and then the Best Researcher Award by TNU, Professor Hiralal Chakravarti Award of the Indian Science Congress Association in Biotechnology, Overseas Associateship Award and Depart from the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. And uh, he contributed uh, 32 years in the teaching and research uh, I think and published more than 150 research publications, guided several PG students and all our publication, very good impact factor. Uh, and his contribution has been uh, recognized by the several uh, academies and societies, including National Academy of Biological Sciences. So on behalf of the society and my own behalf, I am welcoming you, Natsap, for the presentations. Now floor is yours. You have to share your slide and make the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Good morning to all of you. Can you able to see my slides? No, no. Yes, no, sir. sir, no. No. You are not started, sir. Screen ah, you share. You first you Start open your open yeah. the PDF, yeah. right. desktop, and then share. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Yeah, it is okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Sir, you can. Uh, yeah. Fine, sir. Our respected chairs and reporters and dear participants, good morning to all of you. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of the Indian Phytopathological Society National EG Conference for inviting me to give a keynote lecture. The topic of my presentation today is uh, detoxification of aflatoxins, a promising approach to reduce the risk of aflatoxin contamination of foods and feeds. The mycotoxins are toxic secondary metabolites produced by fungi that contaminate agriculture commodities as well as food. The consumption of the mycotoxin contaminated food can cause a toxicity in human beings as well as animals. According to World Health Organization, 25% of the world's food crops are affected by mycotoxins. The major mycotoxin producing fungi are Aspergillus, Penicillium, Fusarium, and Alternaria. The important mycotoxins that are contaminating agriculture commodities and foods are aflatoxins, fumonisins, ucratoxin, zearalino, fatulin, citronin, and diacinivalinol. The aflatoxins are toxic secondary metabolites that are mainly produced by aspergillus flavors and aspergillus parasiticus. The aflatoxins are hepatocarcinogenic, mutagenic, teratogenic, 
and immunosuppressive compounds. In the picture, you can see this growth of aspergillus on the peanut kernels. This greenish growth represents aspergillus flavors or aspergillus parasiticus and the toxin produced by these phytotoxins. We can remove these aspergillus by processing technologies, but the toxins, once if it is secreted inside the kernels, it is very difficult to remove. It is highly stable. The fungus aspergillus flavors produces aflatoxin B1 and aflatoxin B2, whereas aspergillus parasiticus produces four important aflatoxins, namely aflatoxin B1, B2, G1, and G2. These toxigenic isolates of aspergillus flavors or aspergillus parasiticus produces aflatoxins in the cells and secreted into the matrix by the process called exocytosis. It has been demonstrated by using immunofluorescence technique by using anti aflatoxin antibodies. The major susceptible crops for less flavors contamination and aflatoxin contamination is peanut, corn, rice, sorghum, and chili. In addition, several tree nuts that include almonds, walnuts, and pistachios are being affected by aflatoxin contamination. More than 18 types of aflatoxins have been described so far. Among them, aflatoxin B1, B2, G1, and G2 are commonly present in most of the agriculture commodities and foods. The aflatoxin M1 is mostly found in milk. And when the, when the animals consume aflatoxin B1 contaminated food, it will be converted in its body and secreted in the milk in the form of aflatoxin M1. Among these aflatoxins, the aflatoxin B1 is highly dangerous, which causes uh, the cancer in human beings as well as animals. The dietary intake of aflatoxin leads to the disease called aflatoxicosis. In poultry, it causes stunted growth, increased mortality, reduced excise and production, liver and kidney disorders, and suppression of immune system. In dairy cattle, it causes reduced feed intake and weight loss, decreased reproductive performance, liver and kidney damage, depression of immune system and edema. In humans, it causes liver cancer and suppression of immune system. The symptoms related to dietary exposure to aflatoxin depends on the type of aflatoxins, level of aflatoxins in the food, amount of such a contaminated food consumed and body weight of the individual and physiological state of the individual. Humans are exposed to aflatoxins through direct consumption of the contaminated food or indirectly through the milk, egg or meat derived from animals that have previously consumed aflatoxin contaminated feed. The presence of aflatoxins in the food chain threatens people's livelihood, food security, and human health. This table shows the effect of different levels of aflatoxin consumption on human and animal health. Up to 20 parts per billion, no health hazard in humans. Up to 50 parts per billion, no health hazard in animals. Above 400 parts per billion causes liver damage in both humans as well as animals. So each and every country has aflatoxin regulations on aflatoxin minimum level in the foods and the feeds. The US Food and Drug Administration has set an aflatoxin tolerance limit of 20 parts per billion for foods as well as feed and feed ingredients. According to World Health Organization and FAO regulation, the content of aflatoxin M1 should be less than 0.5 microgram per liter in milk. So this 0.5 ppb is the recommended uh, levels of aflatoxin M1 in milk. When I was working in India, we conducted a survey to assess the prevalence of aflatoxin B1 contamination in pre and post harvest maize kernel food products and feeds in Tamil Nadu. We collected pre-harvest and post-harvest maize kernels, food samples, poultry feeds, and livestock feeds, and analyzed for the presence of aflatoxin B1. 
the results indicated that 32% of the pre-harvest maize kernels, 22% of post-harvest maize kernels, and 12% of livestock feed contain aflatoxin level more than the per, more than permissible level of aflatoxin B1. So it, this indicates the prevalence of aflatoxin B1 in food commodities as well as the feed. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India conducted a survey and collected milk samples. They collected more than 6,000 milk samples during the month between May and October 2018 from over 1,100 cities and towns. And the results and the analysis for the aflatoxin M1 content, the results indicated that 93% of the samples were absolutely safe. And 5.7% of the samples had aflatoxin M1 residues beyond the permissible limit of 0.5 parts per billion. The highest residue levels of aflatoxin M1 was found in milk samples collected from Tamil Nadu, Delhi, and Kerala. This news appeared in the Hindu online edition in the month of October 2019. The aflatoxin contamination can occur at any stage of food supply chain. It may be in the pre-harvest stage or at the post-harvest stage. At the pre-harvest stage, the aflatoxin contaminations can be controlled by growing resistant or tolerant varieties or by following good agronomical practices and by adopting biological control methods. At the post-harvest stage, the aflatoxin contaminations can be reduced by reducing the moisture content to 8%, storage of the commodities under dry and insect-free conditions, treatment of the food commodities with the electromagnetic radiations like gamma radiation or UV radiation, and ozone fumigation, adopting improved packaging methods, and improved sorting technologies. If the contamination still occurs, then we can go for detoxification of aflatoxins because we cannot destroy all the food materials which contains above tolerance limit. So we can use the detoxification procedures to reduce the level of toxins in the foods and the feeds. There are certain prerequisites for the detoxification procedures. The toxins should be destroyed or transformed into non-toxic compounds after treatment. The food or feed material should retain its nutritive value and remain edible. The physical properties of the material should not change significantly and the detoxification process should be economically feasible. For detoxification of aflatoxins in feeds, we can use ammoniation or addition of adsorbents or biological methods. Ammoniation is an approved procedure for detoxification of aflatoxin contaminated materials prior to processing feed. However, the drawback is the possible degradation of the animal health by residual ammonia present in the feeds. The adsorbents, otherwise called as toxin binders or sequestering agents can also be used to treat the animal feeds. The aflatoxins in the gastrointestinal tract will adsorb by these uh, toxin binders. And for example, the toxin binders like hydrated sodium, calcium, aluminosilicates, bentonite, and zeolites are widely used. And, but the drawback is several adsorbents impair nutrient utilization by poultry. The Novosil Plus is commercially available and it can be used at the dose of 0.1 to 0.5% to reduce the level of aflatoxins in the feeds. Biological detoxification by employing lactic acid bacteria is also recommended, but the drawback is the utilization of nutrients from the food because the microorganisms which are used in the biological control process will utilize the nutrients from the substrates. In addition, there are possibility of release of some undesirable compounds in the substrates. Detoxification in the food commodities is possible through physical methods chemical methods, as well as by biological methods. Physical methods like heating and roasting are used to, uh, to certain extent, but the main drawback is certain nutrients are destroyed in the process. We cannot completely eliminate the toxin, but we can uh, reduce up to 90%. But during the process of heating and roasting, certain nutrients will be lost. Chemical methods 
by using citric acid, sodium hydrosulfide, and isothiocyanates also um, recommended, but their applicability in foods are restricted because of the safety problems. The microorganisms like lactic acid bacteria and Saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast can also be used for the removal of a protoxin, but these organisms not only utilize the food for its growth, but it will secrete some undesirable compounds on the food materials. So the immediate need is biologically safe and cost effective aflatoxin detoxifying compounds for use and in the feed as well as the food industries. Several others reported the use of medicinal plants for detoxification of aflatoxins. For example, Trachysperma mummy, Zimu, which is a natural hybrid of uh, onion and garlic, and Barleria lupulina, Adadoda vesica, Corymbia citiodara, Asimum basilicum. These medicinal plants are having potential to degrade aflatoxin under the in vitro conditions. We reported the effect of Trachysperma mummy extract in the detoxification of aflatoxin G1. The crude aqueous extract derived from the Trachysperma mummy seed extract showed 64.5% degradation of aflatoxin G1. After boiling, the extract loses its activity and the degradation percentage was reduced to 44% upon boiling for 10 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. The same extract after dialysis by using dialysis membrane having molecular cutoff for 12,014 kilodalton increase the percentage de degradation. So these results indicated that the aflatoxin detoxifying compounds present in the trachysperm ambi extract may be of heat labile and high molecular weight compound. The time course study of aflatoxin G1 by trachysperm mummy extract indicated that 78% degradation occurred within six hours of treatment with the trachysperm mummy extract. And 90% degradation occurred after 24 hours of incubation with this same plant extract. Then the, the structural products, the, the, the degradation products of aflatoxin G1 was analyzed by LCMS to find out the compound. The aflatoxin G1 without treatment showed the most abundant peak, molecular ion peak at 329. This is uh, untreated aflatoxin G1. The same aflatoxin G1 after treatment with the plant extract showed different uh, ion, molecular ion peak. One is at 288.29. Uh, this uh, 329 peak disappeared. Then the, the tandem was spectrometry analysis of this 288 peak showed transition of the ion peak to 270. So that uh, indicates the loss of 18 Dalton. So this indicates the transformation of aflatoxin B1. The predicted molecular structure of the degradation product of the de degraded products of G1, aflatoxin G1 showed the opening of lactone ring structure. This is the bisphenol ring and this is lactone ring. And here, this predicted structure shows the opening of lactone ring structure. So the modification of ring structure may be responsible for the degradation. Then the biological activity of the degraded products of aflatoxin G1 was tested by using chromosomal aberration test in maize. The aflatoxin G1 without any treatment caused 2% chromosomal aberration in maize. Whereas the aflatoxin G1 after treatment with the plant extract, that is trachysperma mummy extract, failed to induce such a chromosomal aberration. This indicates the biological degradation of the toxin. Then uh, Iram and co-workers studied the aflatoxin B1 degradation potential of this same trachysperma mummy extract and they found six degraded products by using LCMS analysis. The degraded products are found by the removal of the double bond in the furan ring and modification of lactone group. Then they tested the biological activity of the degraded products by using brine shrimp bioassay. And this aflatoxin B1, untreated aflatoxin B1, showed 91% mortality of 
the brine streams. The same aflatoxin B1 after treatment with the seed extracts of Trichosperma mummy showed only 23% mortality of the brine streams uh, uh, larvae. So this indicated that the low toxicity of the degraded product compared to the parent compound. Then we report, recently reported the uh, efficacy of Adazada vesica extract in detoxification of aflatoxins. This uh, Adazada vesica extract showed detoxification against all of the four important aflatoxins, B1, B2, G1, and G2. The time course uh, study on uh, aflatoxin B1 detoxification by Ada Dada Vasika extract indicated that about 90% degradation of aflatoxin B1 occurred 48 hours after treatment with the plant extract. LCMS analysis of the aflatoxin B1 showed a peak molecular ion peak at 313, but the same aflatoxin B1 after treatment with the Adadoda vesica extract showed uh, this particular ion peak completely disappeared. Instead, another peak at a molecular uh, ion peak at three, uh, the 189 was observed. So this indicate, uh, indicated that complete loss of this particular compound. Yeah. To analyze the nature of the compound, which is responsible for detoxification in Adadara vesica, the methanol extracts prepared from the Adadara vesica leaves were subjected to thin layer chromatography and then analyzed for alkaloids because Adadara vesica leaves contains more of alkaloids. So on TLC, we could observe three different uh, compounds with a varying um, retention factor. These compounds were individually removed and then these were tested for the detoxification of aflatoxins. Among these three compounds, the, com the compound number three, that is with the RF value of 0.37, showed complete detoxification. This compound was analyzed by GCMS and then this uh, GCMS analysis showed the homology to the quinoxaline, the alkaline. So in conclusion, Plant products biologically eco-friendly, cheap, and these are all easily available, and there is no residual effect, and these materials are easily degradable. The Trachyspermum mummy is widely used in the traditional medicine um, for treatment of uh, several ailments. Similarly, the Adadara vesica is commonly used as ingredients in the Ayurvedic medicine to treat, to treat cough, asthma, and bronchitis. The Zimu extract already is a uh, natural hybrid of uh, the onion and garlic. So this uh, Zimu, Trichosperma mummy, and Adadara vesica extracts offer this biologically safe alternative to detoxify aflatoxins and have huge potential to be used in food and feed industries to reduce aflatoxin-induced toxicity in humans and animals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's have, please and share your slides. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Velajan, for a nice presentation and very informative lecture on the, the one of the very notorious uh, uh, mycotoxins, aflatoxins. And we have nicely covered the what is the aflatoxins, what are the different type of the aflatoxins there, what are their contaminant sources, level of contamination and hazards and finally detoxification by using eco-friendly approaches, especially plant-based approach, gymnase uh, and azwine and wasaka. This is the, all three are the very important and very historical plant products for the country like India also. So thank you very much uh, for very nice uh, and informative presentation and uh, very important topics. Uh, this is this, now it is open. Uh, please unshare your slides and, and uh, anyone, a quick one or two questions anybody wants to have? Please answer. Uh, sir, uh, one, one question. Sir, yes. thanks for a wonderful lecture, uh, uh, wonderful talk on this aflatoxin. Uh, and uh, in fact, this is the first time I am listening to you that I missed your webinar on this similar uh, topic. Sir, my question is, you said 2% uh, chromosomal aberrations in uh, maize, uh, what we have done in 2010 publication. 
uh, how do you ascertain that it's a 2% uh, chromosomal aberration i think it's a full big damage no 2% if it's a vital or uh, genes uh, chromosomal aberrations may lead um, uh, it, it it will be very lethal to the seed itself you know matlab the genotype itself yes uh, thanks dr selvarajan and actually we treated the maize seedlings uh, with aflatoxins and then at anaphase stage we took the samples and it was sustained and we counted several cells for the uh, chromosomal aberrations based on the number of cells we calculated 2% chromosomal aberrations caused because of the aflatoxin g1 the same aflatoxin after treatment with the plant extract failed to show such chromosomal aberrations so that indicates the loss of its activity Okay. Uh, yeah, dear doctor. Uh, I'll share your slide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dear doctor Alex Ham. Yeah. No, yeah. thanks for the excellent presentations. Now, I, one of my question is, from uh, from the farmer point of view, uh, what are the way for reducing the contamination of aflato aflatoxin in the food and feed? so at the pre harvest stage we can as uh, say pointed out my slides so we can go for uh, um growing resistant varieties following good agronomical practices and biological control methods but after harvest the harvested produce should be stored properly otherwise it may lead to contamination because most of the fungi are coming from the field into storage so if the products are dried properly then we can reduce the development of the fungus in storage but once the toxin is formed already in the field level it is very difficult to remove even under storage so only by uh, package improved packaging methods uh, sorting technologies can we can avoid certain contaminated grains of during storage <coughs> it's a really a big problem in uh, warehouses exactly yeah mr chair can i have a question yes yeah. oh, why not why not yeah uh, the, the doctor belalehan uh, it's a very good presentation uh, one of the strongest criticisms in terms of uh, decontamination process is that the metabolites which are formed are we able to detect all of them and then how many of them are really toxicenic or non toxicenic do we know about this thank you uh sir doctor you are uh, you are asking about the toxicenic strain of aspergillus i mean no 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 the once i do the detoxification using any of the methods what you have said yes uh, how do I, how do i ensure that the products which are formed subsequently are not toxicenic anymore yeah. or they have their own effects Yeah, one yeah. of your slide you have shown already. One peak has yes. been changed, and another peak has appeared very significantly. So maybe that peak also toxic, toxicogenic. Yeah, that's a good question. Right? So the main problem is we have to assess the biological toxicity of the degraded product. That's why we are using some animal studies. Even right now we are conducting some animal studies uh, by using shrimp biopsy as well as rat. so if it loses its the biological activity then we na we may not be able to see any kind of the toxicity in the animals after feeding so yeah, it is important to assess the biological toxicity of the degraded product yeah how many products are formed and then how many of them are there to be tested that's a big question that's the reason why in case of mycotoxin research always what is proposed is that prevention is better than cure thank you that yeah research is better but if you have commodities which cannot be destroyed on a large scale still we can try this method to make use of these available commodities to either use it as a food or to as a feed material okay, okay. thank you dr desai this is very actually in the food products in the feed up to some extents we can do it but suppose if wheat flour is there yeah SPS requirement is there. It has to be tested, and it should be free from the any any kind of the mycotoxins. Exactly. If it is at at that level, if contamination is there, very difficult to detoxify them. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, for human human consumption, con use the material used for the human consumption, it is very difficult. It's very difficult unless we should have to take the precaution. It should not be contaminated in early stage. Yeah, uh, yeah. Still, we are struggling in the same uh, what ten years back we are there. Uh, of no, course, but, uh, uh, we no, have advanced okay. technology for detection and all these things, but yeah, detoxification yeah. is still we are struggling. Yeah, but then that uh, way, uh, with all the protocols, uh, what we have say like if we follow this HACCP approach, hazard analysis, critical control point approach, there is always a possibility that you can get aflatoxin free ground nuts or aflatoxin free crop products. Comfortably, yeah, without any difficulty. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There is no doubt at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, very nice presentation and discussions. Now I am giving this floor to Professor K P Singh, and you are requested to conduct the presentation of two. First, you have to for the uh, Dr. Suresh and then myself. Dr. Singh, please. Now floor is your. Okay. 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 Thank you, Dr. Dubey. <clears throat> now dr lm suresh is here dr lm suresh yeah i am here good morning okay okay thank you dr sir so dr suresh now has worked in the field of uh, plant pathology for at least 25 years now his professional work now focus on especially the disease diagnosis surveillance epidemiology disease management and disease resistance he he has developed and optimized the disease screening protocol especially for the fungal bacterial viral phytoplasma and nematode diseases in maize and in vegetable crops now uh, he also did lot of work uh, in collaborations and developing a world class research facility in nairobi kenya now this has a was the ease the scientific process of identifying and developing the mln disease resistance maize hybrid especially in the sub saharan uh, africa dr suresh has made an immense contribution in the food security in east and central africa by uh, uh, by monitoring and training teams of the students extension worker and research worker in the field of pathology and inspiring the numerous young people to pursue the agriculture as a career now dr suresh in addition he has published more than 30 articles in the leading journal and has been awarded with more than 10 national and international award for his immense contribution in the field of plant pathology so uh, behalf of ips and myself now i am here i am here by inviting dr suresh to start his lecture on maize uh, lethal necrosis before towards the containing spread and spread of the uh, spread and impact of the devastating transboundary disease in sub saharan africa please dr suresh yeah uh, so you uh, thank you uh, dr krishna singh uh, for your kind words uh, for the kind introduction uh, so i may know whether uh, uh, they are going to play a recorded or should i continue with uh, the live presentation you can you can go for live presentation if you have okay thank you so much yeah, just i'm i'm sharing the screen yeah yeah please yeah so is uh, my screen is uh, visible yes yes visible sir you can go for slides and uh, am i audible fine sir fine yeah and uh, first of all i sincerely thank indian phytopathology society for giving me an opportunity to present the work on mln in eastern africa uh, on <clears throat> especially the topic is maize lethal necrosis efforts towards containing the spread and impact of a devastating transboundary disease in sub saharan africa i am presenting on behalf of simit chi colleagues uh, uh just a second uh, and yeah and uh, one second yeah uh so today i'll be presenting uh, this topic during this e conference uh, especially on food security and challenges and opportunities 
So I'll be presenting with the outline of MLN diseases and global occurrence and distribution of maize lethal necrosis. This is the resistance and of breeding program, safe seed movement with effective quarantine measures, MLN diagnosis and surveillance, MLN pathogen free of commercial seed production and exchange, and mainly on capacity building, how we did it. And also we will help uh, to show the MLN web portal and also effort on a community of practice. In Africa, maize is the uh, life and uh, the basic food is uh, maize. So everybody is depending on the maize. So the most important food of Africa is maize. So hence the relevance is more uh, high in this crop. In Africa, the maize has been affected by various diseases, especially fungal diseases such as tussicum leaf blight, gray leaf spot, fissure rot, common rust, and among viral diseases, maize lethal necrosis and maize streak viruses. These are all uh, very key diseases and without which uh, we can't uh, produce the maize. As I just recently heard that uh, aflatoxin, fissure murat is one of the key diseases which contributes on the aflatoxins, which I will not discuss now, but uh, this is one of the key area on the aflatoxin. So maize lethal necrosis is uh, uh, caused by a combination of uh, two viruses, such as uh, maize chlorotic mortal virus, uh, and also one of the party virus such as uh, sugarcane mosaic virus. The disease was first reported in Kenya uh, during 2011. Hence, uh, then it was uh, uh, further reported in Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, DR Congo, and Ethiopia. As uh, Dr. Hugo et al., uh, he studied uh, during 2013 uh, to 2016, uh, those uh, time, the crop loss was in uh, Kenya alone around 180 million uh, US dollars. And imagine that the crop is so uh, immensely cultivated and the crop was so high. And later the same st similar study was conducted in 2018. Still, we can see there is a 23% disease is there. Disease has not eradicated. There is means that there is a lot of effort still needed to uh, contain and prevent the spread of uh, disease from endemic to non-endemic area. As I mentioned, a maize lethal necrosis is uh, affected by two major viruses. Um, especially maize chlorotic mortal viruses, and one of the party viruses that is sugarcane mosaic virus, and also associated the viruses um, MDMV and uh, uh, WSMV. So in this case, uh, each virus can alone can cause the diseases, whereas a uh, combination of these two viruses is very lethal. As uh, one of my uh, manuscript is still underway, uh, association of these two viruses is really lethal at early inoculated growth stages. And typical, one of the milder symptoms of MCMV can be easy to identify at early stage. And this incidence is dependent on the germplasm and viral strain, which you are all uh, know it. The typical uh, symptoms of uh, M MLN is started with the chlorotic specks, uh, uh, streaks, mosaics, mottling, and necrosis. Further, the dying of leaves leading to premature of plant death, and further, a failure to tassel and uh, sterility in male plants. And many times it is noted that uh, malformed are no ears. And at last, we can see the rotted ears. And uh, maize uh, lethal necrosis, uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, like uh, it is the noted that in, in, uh, in 1973, it is not a new diseases uh, in uh, Peru, further in the USA, Argentina, Brazil, Thailand, Mexico, Hawaii, China. And it started in Kenya 2011. Further, it is spread in uh, 2012 in uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda. South Sudan and Ethiopia, DR Congo. Later, it has also reported in uh, Ecuador and Taiwan and Spain. Really recently, it is not reported in any other countries. That is a good news for us, uh, for successful maize cultivation. Why this uh, maize lethal necrosis is uh, devastating in Eastern Africa? As you all know uh, that uh, the maize MCMV is the one of the major virus. And MCMV is uh, new to the region. Potentially new strains of uh, sugarcane mosaic virus or maize dwarf uh, mosaic virus. And uh, there is an African environment is very conducive for uh, successful cultivation of maize throughout the year, which hence uh, uh, helps in building up of viral inoculum. And use of contaminated seeds, another major factors uh, where uh, widely uh, and also uh, self grown seeds are voluntary uh, uh, crop. And widespread of uh, susceptible germplasm. More than 95% of the germplasm grown in Africa are susceptible, are highly susceptible for this particular diseases. And so that's why this uh, particular disease is very highly vulnerable for maize lethal necrosis. 
So with all this background, uh, Sumit, uh, along with the support of partners and collaborators, we could contain and prevent the further spread uh, using uh, uh, various integrated uh, components. Yes. You, uh, CIMIT is heavily deployed, involved in uh, breeding and deploying the maize uh, lethal necrosis resistant varieties, uh, which I will explain in a minute. And also we involved various partners in terms of diagnostic and epidemiology, which also I will explain in a minute. And use of MLN free seed production. We have trained so many uh, partners in terms of how to produce uh, MLN free seeds and uh, exchange them. And rigorous monitoring and surveillance that uh, together it's a new project. Uh, we did it very successfully with various oh. collaborator support and also uh, other uh, NPPOs. And also we trained several farmers on agronomic management. Mm -hmm. And also we trained uh, several uh, PhD MSc mm -hmm. students, uh, th that one. We also trained several uh, NARS uh, and uh, research, <laughs> research Institute scientists and development partners for uh, mm -hmm. continuous uh, 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 in, in capacity. As I, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, CIMIT has involved in uh, developing and deploying the resistant varieties. You can see the, the resistant varieties was developed in uh, earlier and second generation hybrid you can see here the, under the disease pressure of commercial hybrids. You can see high disease pressure. Uh, when the disease started, there was no yield. With the use of disease resistant hybrids and uh, multiple uh, choice of uh, integrated pest and disease management, we could be able to, farmers could be able to harvest uh, six to eight tons per hectare in uh, Uganda and all the Eastern Africa. And we have uh, uh, very uh, distinct uh, world-class facility uh, by CIMIT uh, where we could uh, screen more than two lakh genplasm with uh, three lakh uh, uh, rows of maize. The major contribution is coming from uh, CIMIT that is 65% and NAS is almost 15%. Private seed companies are one contributing to 19 to 20%, which is all cost recovery mode. Everybody is uh, uh, contributing the cost and we are not charging for the profit. And we had a very good uh, quality of data and especially the heritability is almost up to 0.99. With all these efforts, we could be able to release and uh, uh, deploy uh, 18 MLN resistant or tolerant hybrids in Eastern Africa. Even in the COVID era also, we could engage with all the evaluations of the hybrids. You can see uh, this particular screening facility is completely located in uh, where there is no maize near to the uh, Naivasha Lake. And this facility has high stringent quarantine measures. And, uh, and also the, the strain of Kenya is very virulent. Uh, an example to quote here that uh, the, uh, the genplasm was identified as a resistant in USA when the screen in Kenya is highly or 100% susceptible here. And that shows how the, the rigorous screening, also the virulent strain. With the, all these efforts, we could be able to distinguish the resistant mm -hmm. hybrids among the, the susceptible hybrids. And not only this one, we could uh, convert uh, more than 50 uh, elite uh, genplasm from uh, susceptible to resistant using MABC program. That is the significant uh, milestones for CIMIT uh, with the partners. So this facility would not have been successful unless we meet uh, various uh, dimensions. One, we had a very successful high quality inoculation protocol. We had a very uh, stringent quarantine measures with uh, uh, various components uh, such as change room or uh, vehicle monitoring or uh, media handling and and handling the single viruses and we also had a uh, automated fertigation systems because this nutrition is management is very quite important because if you don't uh, get a proper nutrition management you may end up with a lot of yellowing which we might get be confused with the uh, diseases so phytosanitary measures and also incinerator anything which get inside uh, will not be taken out Everything, anything inside the site, which is out after the screening, will be burnt uh, and, and it will not be given back. So the protocol has been generated, developed and uh, used uh, for both uh, inbred lines and hybrids. You can see one being the completely clean or no symptoms, uh, and then uh, nine being uh, completely dead or susceptible. And among these uh, several uh, scales, you can see the chlorosis uh, in the... Uh, four, five, six, and started with the necrosis seven, eight, nine. Similar uh, scale was developed for hybrids. So we are using this kind of uh, 
uh, rating scale uh, for evaluating our germplasm for both public and private partners. And this is an interesting point. Uh, we assume it had uh, several uh, lines, elite lines, which is widely used last 50 years. They're all highly susceptible for this particular diseases. Uh, so you can see the fate of all these uh, lines, which is all drought tolerant and several other diseases are resistant. But I will explain in a minute uh, the progress made. And our source of resistance is from uh, Thailand, Keset start uh, uh, 23-6, and other resistance sources are CLRCY internal and CLRCY 39. So as we started our efforts in 2014, the means as average as mean is almost 6.8 or 6.5 among all the germplasms. And breeding effort has continuously improved. The progress is made. Now the average mean is of almost 5.1 and, and, and there is an improvement in the protocol and also efforts has done immensely on the breeding. You can see the resistance is completely green and also giving the yield. So these hybrids, whatever we screen in Naimasha, we also check in other hotspots like in Tanzania, Babati, and also uh, in Ethiopia, Wondogonet, to check uh, the, the level of resistance among the several other associated viruses. So hence, uh, we also check the uh, performance of these hybrids under optimal conditions. We could see the, the uh, uh, very good uh, yield uh, and also disease resistance. Hence, we could uh, forward our efforts in the MLN. So commercial hybrids, what I was referring, there is 77% yield loss, whereas uh, second, uh, first generation <coughs> hybrid was almost 22.23% uh, yield loss, whereas second generation is 3.1% uh, yield loss. That means uh, there is a, a tremendous improvement is uh, happened in, uh, in the breeding. So this is what I was referring, uh, complete susceptible versus uh, resistant. With this, we could uh, release and deploy uh, 18 or uh, 19 uh, hybrids for Eastern Africa and farmers. In Uganda, there is a success story where bazooka is one of the key uh, hybrids. Uh, and every year, they produce more than uh, 2,000 metric tons of seeds. And, and it is also drought tolerant. And with this, they could be able to harvest six to eight tons uh, easily in the Uganda uh, conditions. And similar effort is also being done by Kenya Seed Company. More than 500 acres of certified seed production is done in 2019. And also it is now the, uh, more than 1,000 uh, tons has been targeted for this year. So there is a tremendous uh, uh, progress done by Dr. Manjay Gowda and molecular breeding team uh, in terms of identifying the QTL in the chromosome 6 uh, using the case 23-6. And that uh, uh, favorable allele marker has been used and to deploy, uh, as I was mentioning in uh, previous slides, this CML442 was so susceptible, the same line after conversion, it has become uh, completely resistant. Imagine this is the uh, tremendous efforts like this. There are 53 uh, uh, lines has been converted uh, where it was earlier used in a various program and no farmers can take the benefit of this kind of uh, uh, the elite lines with the MLN resistance. So not just this one, uh, most important on this quarantine is that safe uh, uh, movement and exchange of seeds. So when we produce the seeds in uh, Kenya, uh, and then we check uh, and uh, uh, scout in the field and also test in our lab. Further, in, uh, it will be tested in uh, KFIS, uh, like NPPGR. And then those uh, seeds was, was found uh, free from MLN or MCMV, then they will be shipped to the respective country, especially in this case, uh, Zimbabwe. Once they receive the seeds, they will also test it. After they test it, found the negative, they will take into this quarantine facility and, and they will scout continuously during the crop growth stage. And then uh, in that stage, if they find it free, then only they multiply seeds and distribute in the entire world. This is a four layer quarantine measures which we have done. You can see the Naivasha screening facility, also quarantine facility. Harare is also a quarantine facility, but not screening. So this kind of efforts we have uh, done with CIMIT, uh, with a uh, constant support from various partners in the entire region. So th uh, in the 2020, uh, in the, during the uh, COVID era, we could uh, ship more than 14,000 germplasms uh, to, to various parts of the world. This is kind of efforts we have taken. There is a lot of demand on our germplasms, but we make sure that each and every seed is free of MLN, then only we ship it to other countries. 
So in addition to that, we also engaged in several other projects uh, to understand the, where the uh, MLN or MCME is, uh, is located and what is the influence of uh, uh, this MLN or MCME on the genetic background and developmental stage of infection on MCME seed transmission. How long uh, does MCME persist in the soil? That is also another question. So <clears throat> in addition to that, we have another project which we finished uh, mainly on focusing on the diagnostic surveillance and, uh, and, and, and focusing on the uh, 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 training the phytosanitary communities and sharing the learning, sharing of learning, the MLN diagnostic and surveillance protocols, best management practices for MLN management uh, in Africa. In this uh, uh, project, I have standardized uh, the simple protocol which everybody knows that using the immuno strips, which this strip could be able to uh, diagnose the MCME presence or absence within just uh, five minutes. And we could use the six uh, leaves and, and uh, able to uh, harmonize the protocol. Though the company says one uh, leaf per, per plant, but we could take the six leaf uh, pieces from six different plants. So we could uh, harmonize the protocol uh, where two bands is found, it is uh, considered as a positive. One band is found as a negative, no band is invalid. Uh, we trained this protocol more than uh, 5,000 NPPOs, farmers, and then also uh, private seed companies across eight countries in four years. So that is the key uh, uh, strength of CIMIT where it can help and enable all the partners to conduct the disease survey and uh, participate in surveillance program. And this data is available on MLN web portal. Anybody can see with the GPS code and uh, the location and result, which uh, location, everything is available. So uh, with this uh, kind of uh, surveillance protocols, we started in 2014 and we found uh, Kenya is having a lot of uh, diseases and also further Ethiopia. You can see Ethiopia, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania has a lot of disease pressures. And further, it is also noticed in, uh, uh, in uh, Kenya. And later also we found noticed in Kenya. And uh, you can see every slide, you can see <coughs> Southern Africa, especially the Five football minutes. of Africa Dr. is completely free of MLN. Dr. Suresh, please conclude within five minutes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And uh, completely it is free of uh, <coughs> MLN. Uh, and this is the flagship of this project. We could be able to contain and prevent the spread from Eastern Africa to Southern Africa with all these measures. And, uh, uh, and then I will not take more than five minutes. Uh, so most important, uh, uh, the KFIS, like NBAPG or the National Product, uh, Plant Protection Organization, they always insist and focus on the certified seed production. Now every farmer is using the MLN certified seeds and, uh, and also uh, they follow all the practices uh, supported by uh, CIMIT. And we exchange more than 30,000 uh, training materials for all the partners. And we help the partners to produce disease-free seeds using a 12 points checklist and which is rigorously followed by all the private companies. More than 150 training programs was organized all over Africa in four years. So these are all the training materials which we prepared and uh, distributed in different languages of uh, Africa, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and also Southern Africa. So, uh, uh, so with this, uh, I can say, uh, these are all the, some of the key uh, images where we uh, involved in the training programs. Uh, I can see uh, how training was uh, done on the diagnosis and also collection of samples. And, and also that we could focus on the community of practices to exchange the, uh, the challenges and success among the several partners. And we could uh, uh, help them to harmonize the surveillance protocols and adopt a rapid uh, diagnosis immuni using immuno strips by seed companies and uh, NARS. So uh, not just this one, we could also engage and uh, effectively uh, influence the, uh, the policy makers. So we trained several policy makers in Eastern Africa community and CAFIS uh, to ensure that these uh, practices are properly involved in policy making. So the, all this information, whatever I was, I'm mentioning, it is available in MLN web portal. You can type mln.cimit.org, you can get to see all the information. So we are recently involved in the uh, gene editing project with the Carteva. So we, our the events is almost ready to avail it under disease screening pressures. And, and then uh, whatever the effort is explained here, all these details is completely covered under the uh, article 
and in the virus research, you can use uh, this article to understand more about this progress made in uh, uh, virus research. So with this, uh, uh, just on the part of conclusions, I will say MLN disease in Eastern Africa is completely under control with the constant surveillance and better management uh, quarantine measures using host-free period, producing MLN disease-free seeds, and especially Southern Africa is maintained free of MLN with a safe exchange of uh, uh, MLN-free seeds and emergency preparedness is ready uh, to tackle if there, are, uh, there is an incidence occurred in Southern Africa. Focus on MLN resistance in breeding using uh, various novel tools and technologies and deployment of MLN resistance hybrids in Eastern Africa. A strong collaboration between private partnership is uh, uh, existing uh, with, uh, uh, for producing MLN uh, disease-free seeds and uh, also disease management. So with this, I thank organizers for providing me the uh, opportunity to share this uh, success story. And also I thank uh, the uh, donors, USAID, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations, Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture, CRP Maze, and also uh, various uh, other partners on supporting on the work on the MLN. And uh, Calro is a partner which is uh, very uh, helping in... And also the, our CIMIT team for immensely contributing in this project. So just to... Yeah. Thank you. And uh, let me know if there are any questions or... Uh, yeah. It is open for discussion, please. Okay. Any questions? Dr. Suresh? Yeah. Uh, very nice uh, presentation. Congratulations for the contribution on this particular area. Now you are mentioning about immunostrips, you know? Yeah. Uh, what are the, no, is it uh, that LFA based assays? Uh, it is just a simple uh, uh, the antigen antibody uh, that is uh, uh, produced by Agri or Bioriba. Yeah. Okay. Immune strips. Yeah. Okay. So, what about maize yellow mosaic virus? They recently I saw a paper so that yellow, maize yellow mosaic virus is also present along these two viruses. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. That is an uh, interesting question. And also, there is a polar virus. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this, there are some samples showing reddening of uh, a maize leaf and also associated with this uh, virus. So we still need to explore how much it is distributed in the maize growing areas. But that is another virus is uh, also associated. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you. Just one question. So in continuation of uh, Dr. Vishnachan's question, whether your resistant lines are also resistant to polio virus? Uh, uh, when we screen, we mainly use the uh, combination of uh, MCMV and SCMV one is to four ratio. It is uh, mainly on those two virus combinations because these two combinations is the devastating uh, and deadly uh, diseases. Okay. So if, at all, if we find uh, other resistances, perhaps it will be in the next uh, future generation of uh, yeah, hybrids. Thank you for excellent presentation. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, Dr. Yes, ma'am. Do you have one, one query, small yeah. query? Do you have a cross with any interceptions from, from your material being imported from the Africa to other part of the world with these two viruses? I, I mean, you mean to say the, the variety? Yeah, I mean, the, the, because the see, material, cement material is multiplying over there and sending in different part of the world. Uh, have uh, you got any any reports that this has been spread from there to other part? No, sir. That is the, the key uh, step what we take. Whatever the breeding effort is being done, after we develop the, uh, the lines of homozygous and homo, uh, conditions, uh, and we make the hybrids in Kenya, once the seeds are produced, those seeds are being uh, scouted during the growing period by both uh, KFIS and the CIMIT and tested in our lab, also being tested in KFIS. And further, they will be tested in uh, Harare, uh, both in field and lab. There, there is after, no problem for testing. I have seen several times. No, no I'm saying what I'm saying. After the, the four, four uh, levels of testing, then only we distribute the seeds. Yeah, yeah, but, but even then, you have got any information. That's why I'm, I'm asking simply. Uh, so far, uh, to, uh, to, to be honest with you, so far, uh, almost more than 50,000 germplasms after this program has established. We did not hear a single incidence. It has been, that is the uh, intake. 
of work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have a, I have a question. Can I ask, Dr. Yes. Singh? Okay. Okay. You, you, you yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Suresh, for a very comprehensive, excellent presentation. I just want to know in African continent how the material is moved from one national plant production organization to another national plant production organization. Do they follow strict quarantine measures with phytosanitary certificate and all, or they have something like uh, European Union or something? Like because when yeah, I no, to... uh, thank you, madam. It is very important question, sir. For example, Kenya, uh, KFIS uh, is one of the agency involved in uh, the phytosanitary regulations. They first certify the seeds being produced in uh, any field, either in a private seed company or in uh, government agencies. And they get those seeds into their lab, uh, subjecting to RT-PCR. Once they find it free, then they give issue a phytosanitary certificate. If any country which they import, like for example, Tanzania or Uganda, any other African countries, once they receive the seeds, immediately they receive the seeds, they also subject for the testing. And then they, once they also test, they also grow in a quarantine site. Once they find it free, then only they release a hybrid or give the seeds to the, any other uh, people, which I noticed in my own experience. I think that I can uh, share in this uh, forum. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, so there's a small announcement. We have a 12 o'clock, we have a next session. So uh, by at least by 12, 12, 10, we could be able to manage the timings. It will be good, sir. Okay, okay, Please. thank you. Yeah. Okay, I will manage the... Okay, thank you, Dr. Suresh. Thank you, sir, uh, for giving me here. Presentations. Now you describe uh, one of the local important diseases. Now you have mentioned that 77.7% uh, is lost due to this disease, in, especially in the, your areas. So I think now this is one of the most important diseases you describe in detail. Thank you very much, Dr. Suresh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, one of the um, another lectures of Dr. Dube. Now, we can, we can escape the introduction and all these things. Sir. So okay, okay. Thank you. The time. So <laughs> that now all the pathologists, I think you know about now Dr. Dube is a well-known uh, well-known scientist, especially for the biocontrol quarantine of the plant genetic resources. And nowadays, now he is ADG, especially of the plant protection and biosecurity. So that now he had the several contributions, especially in the field of the plant pathology. So sort of time now I'm going to request uh, behalf of IPS and myself to inviting Dr. Dubey to start his lecture. Please, Dr. Dubey. Thank you. I will try to finish five to six, six, 10 minutes maximum because most of the things uh, is known to uh, thank you, Dr. Singh. Uh, this is the topic which is given to ensuring biosecurity through efficient policy framework and stringent quarantine and plant genetic resources. Of course, now this is the topic of Dr. Celia. Maybe she will see, she is also have to present uh, after me. Uh, elaborately, she will give some light on this. Uh, we know this background, I don't want, we want to escape. We know every everyone, what is the material we are importing from the a, a, a bar, a cross there is always a risk for association of the different kind of the pest and we should have to proceed a policy frameworks to intervene these intercep interceptions and the diagnostics to identify them and simultaneously to measures to mitigate them if they are having contaminated with the seeds. And in the past we have the big list for introduction of different pests we all are knowing uh, this list is increasing day by day. This is a, a highly concerned all of us, the plant production personals, how we can stop this list, what kind of regulation, stringent regulation is required further at our uh, ICR level, our research institutions level, at the government's level. We, we are reviewing time to time and we look forward to have a very stringent quarantine procedures there. Uh, and we know that the, the introduction is the and the, the major, the pathway, the bulk consignment, which is DPQS is dealing and the small samples with that, including the transgenics, NBPGR is dealing. 
and there is all uh, always we have the guidelines to regulate the exchange of plant and planting materials international plant production convention is well placed and india is the signatory of this we have the regional plant production organization again this india is the member of uh, asia pacific plant production organizations we have the lot of intergovernmental um, agreements and conventions and regional regulations to regulate the plant quarantine processing if if you look the legislations which are present in the india they are fragmented of course because the different ministries uh, intervention is required to make the quarantine regulation very stringent and strong in ministry of environment and climate change required we have the environment protection act we have the biological diversity act india wildlife act and similarly forest conservation act and directly we have the plant quarantine Uh, order 2003 for the plant quarantine processing but most of the time we have to interact with these regulations unless we will not interact with these regulations it is very difficult to efficiently implement the plant quarantine regulation in our uh, our country we are looking forward to how we can interact in the holistic way in this among these regulations uh, i am not going to into detail we know the what each and every regulation like environmental protection and some element is there which is required for for the protection and biosecurity of the country similarly they uh, these regulations also some 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 common element is there uh, even in the if you look the biodiversity act uh, of course this is basically for the conservation and sustainability and fair, use and fair and equitable benefit sharing but the the risk arises for the use of lmos is well well addressed through this biodiversity even the alien species is also being have been addressed in, in this diversity this act and is concern of our, our plant production scientists concern and in the ipp regulations the every country should have their nppo and dppqs is india and ppo they the function of nppo everybody is knowing uh, surveillance surveillance phytosanitary certification and then pest free area identification pest risk analysis and exchange of information and dppqs faridabad is working in this regards and some of the power has been delegated to the uh, nbpgr for the research material they are doing this is the structures we already known all all these structures and this is the network prevailing in all over the country and this is the destructive insect pest act still it is very very old act uh, and the government is very seriously thinking to modify this act maybe in the future we have the another act uh, which 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 uh, uh, inferring the plant quarantine order 2003 also lot of others development has been made in the uh, seed regulations which are also directly or indirectly strengthening the hands of the plant production personnel in the doing the quarantine business Uh, if you look the plant quarantine order there, there are 12 schedules and these four schedules are very important almost all the pathologist across the country must know these four schedules because mostly the head of divisions of different plant production institutions they are the dis designating inspecting authority they they should know four five six and eight schedule four is where they have to link prohibited items and then certain authorization is required in fifth schedule and where the where more than 1000 about the 1000 communities mentioned where the special declaration a special condition is required for the freedom pc is required for the exchange of planting material and 57 weeds of the quarantine significance has been listed over there it may be increased further as as the we, we gather the information uh, nationally and domestic quarantine in other area where the lot of efforts is required nine pest is domestic quarantine is there maybe some of them has been extended their boundary uh, just like in the system method in the 2018 earlier it was only tamil nadu the other three states uh, it has been reported by the gazette notification of the india similarly some of them has definitely has to be extended into the from the reported area it has to be relooked and Uh, remod uh, re streamlined uh, uh, the 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 boundary further uh, nbpgr is plant genetic resources is dealing since just recently i came from the nbpgr so focusing on nbpgr is more over there uh, they are issuing the import permit quarantine clearance and phytosanitary certificate issuing they are doing and this pr a little bit the nbpgr is doing pr for the uh, germplasm and the transgenic materials 
uh, which has not been uh, mentioned into the uh, plant quarantine order. This is the procedures. Maybe Dr. Celia will elaborate this, uh, what, what we are doing over there. And this is up to 2016-19, every five years about the well lakh samples every year NBPGR is um, exchanging. Uh, especially importing this is for the import material and export material export is very low but the import is very high and we had intercepted uh, several uh, pests different categories the majority of them are the insect and mite 60 percent you can see and the rest of them is given uh, from last uh, 1976 to 2019, 78 quarantine pests had been intercepted by NBPGR. This is one of the very important contribution of the NBPGR in the national stream. And these are the different category of quarantine pests. Uh, you can see the majority of the insects and then followed by the nematode. You can see the weed is, is getting the more significance nowadays, uh, gradually. And we have estimated uh, losses if they have intercepted. We are we are we have not stop them to in, for introduction into the country 0.1 percent in losses based on the 2018-19 uh, yield this much million of rupees losses they can cause if they have introduced in our country this is very 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 uh, encouraging sometimes we are doing the processing and mpgr scientists are doing the processing for the uh, samples received for the bulk consignment and some with uh, these two examples where uh, it has been uh, uh, rejected due to the infestation of the weeds uh, uh, the ex for the exchange again there are the this is the very very important because the the import always it is saying that exchange is not being facilitated we are facilitated exchange also uh, du during in the next one crop some of the free for the exchange certain if the collaborative project is there it has to be gone and uh, in uh, certain governmental institutions for non commercialized research also has to be gone otherwise in fourth category we have to take the permission from anba for the exchange of germ export of the germplasm and this is the more or less the same way we have to do the quarantine processing and then allow to this is the online pc all over the country online pc this is one of the example from nbpgr uh, although we electronic uh, uh, pc has to be issued this is the international requirement but still we are issuing the uh, online pc this is certain uh, formats uh, example of the pc and uh, phytosanitary certificate examples certain alerts being a, a ADGPP now I have to concentrate on these area where the certain alerts is there uh, and they, they are either they have introduced certain part of the country or they are knocking uh, in the boundary of our country you can see this is the increasing day by day and for that our preparedness is required at national level certain biotypes and pathotypes maybe the known pathogens are not known pathogen is also alarming situation for India for which the preparedness and regulation, both in preparedness and scientific forum, as well as scientific front for their detection, diagnostic and mitigation, as well as the policy framework is also required. Uh, recently, this is from last three years, development is going on. And we, we, we have seen this, this different regulation by different ministry has to be, uh, comes together to for a stringent quarantine processing. So it was proposal there, biosecurity bill, National Agriculture Biosecurity Bill is there. So by which we can combine all the regulations, there should be an initially, initial state is what they say, there should be authority, but the government is thinking there should be a board and council and some things like that. The existing structure can be strengthened uh, uh, to take the um, uh, care of all the uh, uh, quarantine, uh, pests, and not only for the plants, but the animals and human being and uh, other aquatic, uh, especially for the fishes and others also. So we, we need a uh, uh, preventive measures. In the, what basically they have to do the preventive and early detection response and management due to lack of time. I am not discussing over uh, all these points, but recent recent development it has not been uh, given mention over here because the high security. Uh, uh, the Security Council of India has invited, uh, they are planning to make a, a security, uh, plant secure, security for all the areas, not only for the plant and ICR is also invited and then we have given the inputs, maybe in the within one or two years they will uh, uh, formulate a structures which, uh, uh, which will facilitate the 
security of the country, biosecurity and biosafety of the country, uh, just like the raw and something else, where the ICR is a plant science is also a partner uh, in that one. And DBT is also doing certain efforts to make a unit. Uh, they have already the biosafety units and biosecurity they are adding and ADGPP is also a member in this committee. So maybe the national level, it has been sensitized and there has to be a, a forum where all has to be addressed and taken the proper policy decisions for that. Even at the, our own level in ICR system, our um, uh, university system, we need a serious uh, approaches for the development of the diagnostics and characterization of the pathogens and then supportive agent research has to be done a lot of uh, and uh, exchange of the information and um, uh, this, the role of the here, the professional society more important for reporting and giving the directives where we have to do the more concentrated efforts uh, toward making the country safe and biosecure. Uh, the, the contribution in this presentation, I am highly acknowledging the our contribution of the scientists from NBPGR because most of the work I am presenting from the NBPGR. Thank you very much. Uh, and, I am thankful to the society also for providing me a opportunity to make a presentation as a keynote speaker. Thank you very much. It is open for discussion. Not more than one question, please. Anybody else? So there is no any questions. Dr. Dubey, now one of my queries is there. Okay. In a post pandemic world, what will be the major changes in respect to the plant biosecurity? Like just now, uh, regarding the NBPGR, will also evolve this type of the strategy, I think. Yeah, definitely we are following whatever all the COVID's uh, recommendation is there while handling the uh, processing the seed samples and all these things. Even the, during the lockdown period also, we have processed all the seed samples over there. But for uh, taking care of the, if anything miss happened, any, any things like the COVID, if I have introduced in our country, what should be the, our, the preparedness for that? Also, we are seriously thinking. Council is also thinking and government of India is also thinking. Uh, one round meeting has been done. This assignment has been given to the uh, Security Council, uh, Government of India, to formulate the apex body or to make a uh, cooperation with all the existing structures to take care of uh, certain things which should not happen in the future, just like the COVID in the country. And agriculture is plant is also animal is there, human being is there, all sector is there. So ICR has also invited uh, from the behalf of ICR, I am also there is a part, part attended this meeting. Uh, they have the 40 questionnaire. We have given this based on that. They are thinking whether the separate any body is required to take care of the biosafety and biosecurity of the country, including the plant biosecurity or the existing structure has to be participate. If they participate, what immediate action is required? E e e in, the, in the, that regard, work is going on. NDBT is also working in this regards. Uh, council is also a little bit proactive, uh, especially for the import of the planting material during the exam. We are discussing in the very detailed way uh, uh, to take care of the country interest. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Now, thanks for the excellent presentation, Dr. Duve. And uh, now I think now four keynote lectures which are included in this session now completed all these lectures. One of the oral lectures which are included now, no, Doctor. That's that's Doctor Celia has been a, a new program they have sent. Uh, Doctor Celia is there invited lecture. For invited Dr. lecture Celia. from Doctor Celia, ma'am. Ah, so, uh, so I think so we have to request uh, Doctor Celia to make a ten minutes presentation. And then five to seven minutes for the oral presentation also we have to give. Dr. Okay. Celia now. Okay, I Dr. Think Celia, there please. Is, yeah, there is no need for introduction. Dr. Celia is also well known to all of us. Uh, presently, she is the head division of uh, plant quarantine in the NBPGR. And uh, I congratulate in this forum Dr. Celia for having the new assignment over there. So, Dr. Celia, please make a presentation. Yeah, thank you, sir. Can you please see my slide? 
Thank you, Dr. Dubey. And uh, at the outset, I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation. The topic is International and National Regulatory Framework for Transboundary Movement and Quarantine of LMOs. This is an interdisciplinary project. We have entomologists, fungal pathologists, bacteriologists, nematologists, weed scientists. And um, uh, for the benefit of the younger generation, uh, I will talk about the living modified organisms. This is any living organism that possesses a novel combination of genetic material obtained through the use of modern biotechnology, that is recombinant DNA technology. And living organism means biological entity capable of transferring or replicating genetic material. This is synonymous with uh, genetically modified organisms, genetically engineered organisms, and uh, also the LMOs are used in the context of Cartagena Protocol and Biosafety, that is an international regulatory framework for transboundary movement of LMOs. And uh, uh, for example, soya bean seed is a LMO. If you make flour or oil out of that soya bean genetically modified, that is not an LMO, just for the clarification. And the uh, number of crops, very GM crops, the recent ones, at your left side and right side, brinjal, potato, pineapple, sugar bait, sugar cane, safflower, along apple also, along with the soybean, maize, cotton, canola, squash, rice, alfalfa, papaya. And these are grown across the world. If you see, usually people say Europe is not growing, but that is not correct. Europe is growing like uh, Portugal is growing, Spain is growing. And also it is grown in the Americas, including Central America and Latin Americas and um, Pacific, Australia, and many of the Asian countries uh, and African continent also. These GM crops are being grown worldwide. And uh, by, of the, uh, all these 10, 11 crops, biotech soya beans occupy the higher percentage, 48%, and then cotton maize uh, follows. And you all know the contribution of GM crops, like it increases the crop productivity, better environment, conserve the biodiversity, and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And finally, to meet the sustainable development goals of alleviating poverty and hunger. And there are concerns related to the uh, GM crops, both environmental, health related, and social and ethical. And biosafety, I'm talking about from the angle of GMOs or LMOs. Even chemical pesticides, when you use, there are concerns about the biosafety. So it is basically the environmentally safe application of modern biotechnology. And if you look at the regulatory mechanisms across the uh, world, like whether it is a developed countries like USA, Australia, or European Union, Canada, or the developing countries like India, South Africa, Argentina, Vietnam, and uh, uh, South Asian countries, uh, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, uh, everybody has their acts and um, regulations in place. And as far as the international regulation is concerned for the transboundary movement of LMOs, uh, Katahina Protocol and Biosafety is the one under uh, CBD. And this Katahina Protocol and Biosafety was adopted on 29 January 2000. And India is also part of the Katahina Protocol and Biosafety. And uh, uh, it has different elements. The basic the important one is the precautionary principle, which we don't find in sanitary phytosanitary agreement. Sanitary phytosanitary agreement, uh, just because you don't know the economic impact, you can't say that it is not a quarantine pass. But under Katina Protocol on Biosafety, the precautionary principle is uh, followed. If you have no risk assessment, even then the importing country can take a decision and say you don't want to import the material. And there are protocols for, for risk assessment, risk management, and a separate procedure is there for LMOs used for food feed processing. Like I took the example of soya bean oil is a processed one, and then a cotton cake is a feed, and then a cotton seed is a LMO. And then there are mechanisms for liability and redressal, monitoring and reporting. And also there is one good uh, biosafety clearing house mechanism. I will get into the details. So Article 17 talks about unintentional transboundary movements and emergency means uh, including gene flows through natural processes or accidental contamination during transit 
and uh, article 18 talks about intentional transboundary movement in our case we intentionally introduce the germplasm into the country and then article 25 talks about illegal transboundary movements illegal uh, everybody knows like um, if it is not done through the legal procedures uh, so how to deal with it so article 25 talks about it and article 18 is on handling transport packaging and identification of lmos and uh, in this intended use of lmos it can be for food feed processing or intentional introduction into the environment like an you can uh, import bt cotton and introduce into the environment or if it is for contained use like most of the researchers are getting the germplasm for uh, crop improvement programs and also there is a provision for uh, standards and these are key features of the biosafety clearing house this is not a, a brick building it is a, a web portal where uh, all the parties who are uh, party to the katihina protocol and biosafety they need to put their risk assessment dossiers on this biosafety clearing house and uh, in our country ministry of environment forest and climate change is the national focal point and uh, national regulatory uh, framework india has a robust regulatory framework in place and uh, uh, this comes under rules 1989 even before the international protocol came into existence india has its rule in place for the manufacture use import export and storage of genetically engineered organisms under environment protection act 1986 so these are the statutory committees i will not go into details for the paucity of time uh, everybody who is doing research they have to have the institutional biosafety committee and then the review committee on genetic manipulation uh, which is both for import and also the um, field trials up to uh, one acre and then genetic engineering appraisal committee earlier it was approval committee now it is appraisal and it gives the final approval for environmental release and these are the ministries involved and also at state level and district level there is a biotechnology coordination committees for ultimate monitoring and supervision and uh, uh, these are all the acts if anybody wants to have a look at it i can share the slides and uh, also the department of biotechnology and ministry of environment and forest and climate change put together they brought out uh, guidelines for contained use confined field trials food safety assessment environmental safety assessment from time to time like if you look at it from 1990 to 2018 the guidelines are being brought out and every researcher needs to follow that and this is one slide which uh, i want to show you because of the confined field trials are done um, following the fencing or physical barrier or field demarcation and then there is a boat for restricted entry and then after the field trials are done it is destroyed by dumping in the pit or incineration whatever the policy allows and also the health safety assessment and environmental safety assessments are done uh, for toxicity allergenicity possibility of gene flow or weediness potential and also effect on beneficial microorganisms and after all these tests the material is approved for commercial cultivation and, and all of you know that bt cotton is being cultivated in india and to my topic like uh, these are all the crops and trades under development like you can see rice or groundnut and researchers import the transgenic germplasm into india from usa or canada wherever for crop, um, uh, for different trades so there where the role of the uh, nbpgr come into existence and this is a one example of recent introduction of wheat blast uh, in 2016 into bangladesh and india is being prepared and uh, this is a introduction some people say why do you show the slide it is 1943 and it is all over the country but i want i am showing this slide to emphasize that because of one introduction into the country the dbt uh, uh, spends lots of money to give the best virus free and true to type material to farmers and uh, so far uh, 450 million plants of uh, uh, banana potato sugar cane has been supplied to the farmers through the recognized tissue culture production facility and our uh, sister organization iri is the referral laboratory and 
so these are all the uh, things dr dubey has already spoke i want to say only that transgenic germplasm quarantine is done only at new delhi not at hyderabad and this is the gadget notification we have regulated pests of more than uh, 1000 uh, pests are regulated and uh, icr and bpgr is the nodal institute for issuing the import permit and quarantine processing and we have containment facility where high efficiency particulate air filters are there so that no pollen or no pest goes outside this facility and also the gm detection laboratory is a national referral laboratory along with three other laboratories across the country it is an nabn accredited laboratory and you can see like all uh, sops are followed uh, even during the examination and every researcher has to apply to the rcgm through the institutional biosafety committee and then import clearance is issued by the rcgm that is review committee on genetic manipulation dbt and then nbpj verifies the material being imported meets the description given in the imported clearance and then it should then the nbpj director gives the import permit and the, we need to have the phytosanitary certificate from the source country i am just showing this uh, from usda which is the nppo and we do have the guidelines for import and quarantine of transgenic planting material if anybody wants uh, you can either download from the website or if you send us a mail we will send it along and the entire madam, procedure is madam, same please, as can, can yeah. Move, madam yeah yeah so we have uh, imported uh, more than 16000 samples of transgenic germplasm uh, belonging to different crops and post entry quarantine inspection is done and we do the risk analysis and we have the guidelines prepared as a ready recognized and uh, transgenics uh, doesn't mean that they are they come free from pests they uh, you can see the soil and the fungus in this particular slide and then um, there are uh, detection techniques for insects and we have intercepted pests for uh, fungi you can see the downy mildew which is not reported from india bacterial techniques and uh, nematodes and uh, the viruses uh, of course we have uh, used uh, we use um, different techniques but it doesn't mean that we use all the techniques like uh, any two techniques should confirm the presence of virus and uh, these are some of the protocols available for uh, reverse transcription pcr real time pcr and this is uh, like we have intercepted barley strike mosaic virus from um, we uh, did not allow it to enter into india from uh, philippines and also the high plains virus from uh, usa france and wheat streak mosaic virus you can see from many countries across the world we did not allow it to enter and uh, soya bean it has many uh, viruses not reported from india we did not allow it to enter into india and uh, like we have uh, techniques to salvage the germplasm and also all the germplasm is tested for embryogenesis deactivator gene none of the samples were found in fact by terminator gene technology and following all the sops the material is uprooted and disposed and uh, we also pro quarantine the samples meant for export and these are some of the challenges uh, you can uh, read it later and uh, during 2015 to 18 we have trained about 410 officials of both plant quarantine and customs officials across the country at different ports of entry even dr dubey has been involved in this circus his job and then we have uh, demonstrated hands on um, techniques for detection and these are some of the uh, this slide i am just showing that the issues related to quarantine are across the globe are same and um, if we have not intercepted it would have cost uh, millions of dollars it is just an example and we always talk about this slide this is one of my favorite i don't know when it will come into existence we need to have a national plant pest diagnostic network with all the plant quarantine stations and uh, for the information of the house we have the referral laboratories as per the gadget notification for lmo detection across the country at four different places so the plant pathologists also uh, now uh, dr dubey is at the helm of the affairs we need to have the even for the plant pest diagnostic network we need to have similar to this so that and then uh, these are some of the issues i have highlighted like we need to revise the pest list of pq order and the virus names are not as per the international committee on taxonomy of viruses and also the big issue is uh, we do get the uh, request for waiver of additional declarations free from pests 
and also like post-entry quarantine infection inspection i would have loved to talk about it since we have many inspection authorities here but the paucity of time uh, like uh, this needs to be followed very very strictly and also like availability of reference material for pests is a issue because if the pest is not reported from india how are we supposed to have the reference material to develop any diagnostics and uh, lack of local pest database now most of us work on molecular methods and we don't worry about the survey surveillance so uh, the availability of local pest database is very very important of course the customs officials awareness time to time we need to continue the training workshops and uh, availability of funds for inspection authorities i do believe it is a major issue for them all the heads of the divisions of plant pathology across state agriculture universities and the, this is my last slide we need to have the greater awareness of biosafety and biosecurity concept per se and uh, need to ensure that documents are in place like import permit phytosanitary certificate if uh, the material doesn't come with phytosanitary certificate um, we need to be very very careful and also like uh, there are laboratories for detection of lmos and uh, these are all the sites available especially for the students if you want to read anything about quarantine or biosafety Uh, please visit these sites and uh, i would like to thank icr nbpgr department of biotechnology lot of funding they gave give us and they are continued to giving us for this particular quarantine of transgenics and uh, moef and uh, i would like to thank uh, dr viva hoja bcil and uh, united nations environment program and the unepjf project thank you for your attention Okay, doctor. Yes. Ah, uh, doctor. Yes. Now. Yes. I think so. The last presentation, uh, doctor Bala Mur Mur Muragan. Doctor, yes, hey, you are there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so please uh, as early as um, you have to conclude the uh, more significant things you have to tell yes sir thank you so make a presentation yes sir Sir, give me some minutes, sir. My slides are not getting shared, sir. Just any problem? You, do you have any problem? With your, you, why you are opening your Gmail account? First, he should open his PowerPoint you, presentation. You, you, you unshare this. What you are doing? Don't minimize. Unshare this. Okay. Stop okay. sharing, and then after you have to open your. Uh, PowerPoint PPT, presentation. PPT presentation and then share it.
what you are opening here no he might be opening his presentation okay uh, okay let's okay. op open 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 no no why link you are opening presentation you open it's not the presentation yes sir yes sir open your presentation okay this one is there okay then you have to share this yes sir it's already it's already shared already shared put it in uh, presentation mode now it is visible sir yeah you have to be make the yeah now you can start Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to present my topic on first report of Dikia Fengsang Dai causing bacterial sapra disease on dendrobium nobile in India. Dendrobium are largest genera in the Archaeaceae family, which comprises of 800 to 1,500 species distributed in tropical Asia, Australia, and Australasia. These flowers are gained international importance mainly for ornamental and commercial value. Orchid flowers are having A uh, human gut benefit include nourishing the kidney, resisting against cancer, and increasing the body immunity. During 2018 to 19, severe sapra symptoms were observed on dendrobium nobile in Kottagiri, Nilgiri district of Tamil Nadu, which had 70% incidence. The comprehensive uh, symptom was characterized only if, which include water shock lesion, water shock irregular lesion observed on leaf margin, which turned dark green color and spread entire leaf and uh, with a consequent of soft soft tissue that resembles sapra disease when performing the uh, transversal section of infected stem dark brown disintegrated stem you could able to see and when cut end of infected leaf in uh, in a clean water white bacterial slimy can absorb which indicated the bacterial etiology of the disease Three representative ice, uh, samples were collected for isolation. Briefly, bacterial was, was collected from surface disinfected symptomatic leaf and shipped on to NIA media. Plates, uh, plates were incubated at 28 degrees Celsius for 72 hours. Uh, this is the uh, culture of Dikia uh, fungi. Circular to irregular, yellowish to white, non-fluidal, spindle or board-shaped single colonies along with white rice seed center were obtained. These uh, purified single colonies from three representative ice Named as port one, port two, port three, and used for further characterization. Pathogenic uh, pathogenic test was conducted on leaf in, uh, by leaf infiltration method uh, using one month old plants. Bacterial suspension was prepared and adjusted to one body culture. On intracellular inoculation was then using sterile hypodermic needle, which is uh, loaded with the fresh bacterial suspension. Experimental plants maintained in a controlled condition, and the development of sapra disease was recorded. Similar inoculation with sterile water served as control. Results revealed that all three isolates caused a typical soft rot symptom within uh, 12 hours post inoculation. This is the degree of uh, 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 soft rot disease. Uh, we recorded at zero hours post inoculation, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 20, 20 and till 120 hours post inoculation. This as uh, each asterisk uh, uh, code indicated the spreading or advancing uh, zone of the bacteria. Uh, towards uh, healthy tissue uh, with that uh, this first uh, first rate uh, uh, fulfilled the bar diagram representing the progression of sapra disease uh, uh, at the intervals of 24 hours 48 hours 72 uh, hours and uh, 96 hours and 120 hours all three isolates uh, able to cause a similar pattern in a day 17 to 18 uh, mm uh, sapra lesion was observed Further, these three isolates characterized the biochemically, uh, which is included. It is able to uh, grow at 90, 39 degree, degrees Celsius and 3 percent NaCl amount of media, and also uh, produced uh, and also uh, passed for chemical solubility and the catalyst activity. And also, three isolates enable to uh, ferment and and, and uh, form acid, uh, including uh, dextrose, uh, sucrose, trichalose, cellulose, maltose, sorbitol, and uh, dulcetol. For the phenotype, the three isolates phenotypically confirm uh, uh, characterize all three isolates able to uh, produce hypersensitive reactant on uh, certain tobacconies, and this isolate did not uh, produce green fluorescent on things being media, and this isolate did not produce exopolysaccharide on one percentage T six amended CBG media. Further, the isolates uh, performed with the biological phenotypic fingerprinting assay 
Uh, this, uh, this result indicated that this isolate belongs to uh, Dikia dianticola. Uh, and further, the isolate uh, characterized for molecular level. For molecular uh, uh, identification, uh, DNA was isolated and the sickness or RNA gene sequence was performed. Uh, all three isolates uh, uh, obtained 1,000 segment based, uh, based for amplican uh, and resolved in uh, one percent of our cell. And the isolate, uh, three isolate for sickness or RNA gene sequencing, uh, then, uh, then for sequencing and uh, curated and unrotated sequences uh, were submitted to NGBI. And, uh, and received the access number. Based on these uh, results, a phylogenetic tree was constructed, and all three isolates, uh, code one, code two, and code five, uh, closely, uh, closely related to uh, decay of Feng closely associated with decay of Feng Shang, reported from, uh, uh, derived from NCBI database. So, for their host sensitivity and host Continue not for you, not sir. You have to start your presentation. This some sound was coming, that's why I told them to unmute. Please unmute, unmute, unmute. Bala Murugan. Dr. Bala Murugan, please unmute. Now it's like a sir. Carry on, carry on. These three eyes led further inoculated onto uh, potato carrot onion using drop inoculation method. Approximately 20 microliter of buckle suspension was drop inoculated on fresh cutlasses of potato and uh, incubated at 28 degrees Celsius for three days. The rotting symptom was observed. All three isolates caused a typical rotting symptom within 12 hours post inoculation, and the tissue maceration was also uh, observed, thus uh, confirmed, the, confirmed their pathogenic ability on other fleshy uh, vegetable hosts. Uh, this uh, symptom was recorded at 0 hours, 12 hours, and 24 hours till 60 hours post inoculation. The, the degree of uh, uh, infection rate also we, we can able to see in potato. And uh, carrot, the similar result was also obtained in carrot and also in onion. Three, uh, three uh, uh, vegetables are able to cause uh, infection by inoculation with the decay function functional isolate. So further, uh, to, to know the pathogenic ability of these three isolates, in plant study was also conducted and inoculated onto uh, all over a plant using uh, leaf inoculation method. The uh, results uh, indicated that the, uh, these three isolates could be able to cause uh, typical uh, soft run symptoms uh, which is observed in uh, 24 hours post inoculation and uh, due to uh, due to this infection caused rid of systemic infection and uh, uh, this whole plant become wilted further this further these uh, three isolates also inoculated onto chrysanthemum and the banana ceiling using stem soda stem and the soil inoculation method this result uh, revealed that these three isolates were found to be non pathogenic to uh, chrysanthemum and the banana ceiling which was recorded till 90 days post inoculation. Uh, so far, uh, there are uh, 13 uh, Dikia uh, genus was reported from all over the world. Among the 13 uh, uh, genus and species, uh, totally 10 uh, Dikia species were reported to be plant pathogenic species isolated from uh, these infected uh, hosts and uh, from, uh, reported from different countries. Uh, whereas, uh, three are uh, other three, other three uh, species, the Dicchio aquatica, Dicchio lactatricus, and the Dicchio andicola, were found to be non pathogenic species, which were uh, isolated from uh, river uh, water and lake water. The summary was uh, genus of Dicchio listed in top 10 important plant pathogen bacteria worldwide. Top 10 causing bacterial pathogen on Dendrobium nervulae was first time isolated from Tamil Nadu, India, which characterized both biochemically phenotypically and the molecular uh, identity and confirmed as decay of Feng Shang using sickness or RNA gene sequencing. Further, these uh, decay of Feng Shang isolates found not only pathogenic dendrobium in uh, orchid, but also caused severe soft drop symptom on other fleshy vegetables, include potato, carrot, onion, and medicinal plant aloe vera. However, these three isolates uh, found to be non-pathogenic to chrysanthemum and uh, banana ceiling. The bacterial pathogen appeared to have gained entry into our country through imported orchid planting units and thus highlights the 4-1 role of disease in India.
complete understanding of disease etiology of the disease etiology and the pathogen diversity would be useful to devise suitable disease management practices for containment of the disease spread in the near future i would thank i would uh, like to thank uh, our team dr a kumar division of plant pathology uh, icr new delhi and the sakshivel from uh, indian institute of oil seeds telangana and uh, asha jyoti icr jansi and uh, pleasure prasad from same division and uh, dr m kartikeyan from tamil nadu agri university point two thank you thank you thank you dr uh, for nice presentation and very informative very small piece of work but very informative but this is my one of my suggestion always when i was working in mpgr i realized the importance of reporting some new pest which is not reported from india and again because immediately we come to the conclusion that this is somehow it is import come from the orchid imported from you if unless you have not established any pathway of introduction we should not say like this maybe it is already available in our country but we have not reported it maybe just like even that's why i have the very big con conflict with the tr4 pupils and myself even it is there tr4 no, no doubt is that but from where it has come the hypothetical we cannot say it came from the through the nepal and some things like that unless we have not to so in in our paper a lot of problem we are facing while working in mpgr i realize uh, recently the quarantine weed 57 we made immediately australia and canadian government make a representation out of 57 30 weed is already in the india why you are making them in quarantine we we took our mulchand and head and quarantine while working over there i took 3 months along with dr mulchand to find out all they have given 100 references we look each and individual references contact the persons from them or they have simply they have somewhere the name has written it is reported in india no diagram no systematic positions one no flora diagram no herbarium deposition so all these things has to take care of you have been requested to deposit your bacterium in any national culture collection get a assessment number mm -hmm. and any of publication don't mention that it it might be come from the orchids from the in uh, abroad unless you have not proved any you are reporting first time in india but don't you don't know the pathway from whether it is come from any 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 part of the world or it is already existing in, in india so that has to be taken care of Yes, okay sir. thank you very much for um, uh, i think we we don't have the time he is the uh, already in iri so if any discussion is there then through the mail we can do the discussion thank you very much for the participation mm -hmm. uh, all of you and uh, uh, one things i would like to mention here uh, nbl certification in chat some program discussion is going on definitely uh, we don't have any diagnostic lab accredited in entire country so to make the our claim we should have a very networking of diagnostics lab first any who will the leader if anyone is anyone is not accredited who is the leader so the, the maybe uh, i request to iri and some other maybe. labs where the good facilities there and vpgr is one of them also they have to try to make accredit your nbl accreditation because mostly in european country when we are talking for the eu compliance the only five seed testing lab in our country is accredited and all these five out of these five three is from private sector so unless we don't have the accredited lab this is another problem even the world is thinking for glp accredited and we don't have any nbl accredited labs so although we have the certain labs very good internationally at par but the only certification is required some documentation is required so i request to dr barnawal in his no no actually may i just wanted to add uh, there is one lab here in life technology they have nabl accreditation for virus testing in okay. fact uh, and and in dvt program for uh, tissue culture certification uh, dvt has accredited four labs yeah, yeah i know that that uh, i no no so uh, now the policy guideline should be issued whether it should be nabl accredited only or dvt as a government body can also accredit because they have a very uh, i mean uh, uh, defined system of accreditation in dvt because they have project monitoring and evaluation committee and they have formulated guidelines for 
these accredited virus testing labs. So whether but, that will be acceptable to the world bodies or not, that also one has to see. No, <laughs> but see, testing NABL accredited is only accepted. Being okay. accepted, and for the just like for the chemicals, I am saying recently we have the discussion with industry people for pesticide and all these things. Now GLP accredited lab is required. Yeah. They are not even NBL uh, NBL accredited. accredited. They are not accepting. So mm -hmm. definitely, at least we should have a NBL accredited lab. Mm -hmm. uh, some crop based issues like banana somewhere, the citrus and IRI NBP. I think. Uh, uh, Silver so Rajan can have, have, have his uh, lab uh, NADL accredited. accredited. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, to, sorry to we, are, we are getting it done. Uh, huh? We are already in the process of getting NABL accreditation. Ah, that would be great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that would be great. And others, those who are in the pipeline, they can take the help with him. How, what, what, what procedural requirement is there accordingly? They have to process and get accredited because IRI has a good lab. In NBPGR also, we are doing almost all the diagnostic for the different pests. Uh, so the only the standard has to be meet and then uh, we can get at least... The... From ICR, because you are now at the helm of affairs in plant protection, you can yeah, also issue guidelines to different institute to go for NABL accreditation of their yeah, definitely, testing Yeah, definitely. Labs. We will discuss yeah. at a higher level and accordingly we have to be... Uh, otherwise, if in shoot level, if you are processing, nobody is going to stop. Uh, no, 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 no. In shoot level, uh, unless there is a compulsion, uh, very few like an RCB can do, uh, but most of the institutes will not do <laughs> unless there is a direction. <laughs> no, Sir, least, most oh, of the ICR institutes are ISO certified. That will also help because annual what basically it sees is whether your records are in place or not. And, uh, yeah, institutes so, and also so, SOP so for many diagnostics. Things, so many uh, things there, madam. Even how you are discarding your gel, yes, how yes. you are putting where yeah, you are yeah. putting. So many things there. So many things. Uh, sorry, yes. sorry for the interruption, sir. We are already half an hour uh, delayed yeah. for next session. Sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. This is very interesting. Later on, we will organize a Zoom we'll, meeting yeah, yes, 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 for plant yes, production yes. issues. Sure, in sir, the sure. future, uh, so yes, yes. we have to find out the what are the points has to be discussed and who are the pupils. Then we can invite and discuss at the council level. But the recommendation out. from this session can go. Ah, this, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely report this. So there is a need of uh, 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 lab accredited lab and this for guidelines. Diagnostic in, network. Yeah, yes. Diagnostic that network. That is more important, madam. The, yeah. the network Thank is you very much to all of you for uh, you. participating and thanks to the organizers for sparing the more time. Uh, okay, sir. Very much. Sir, and thank, Dr. thank Dr. you. Dr. Thank, Dr. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, okay. sharing with me. Okay. And yeah. report here also thanks to the both the reporters very much and all the participants. Eh? Uh, I, I am highly obliged from my own side and from the organizer side to they have actively participated. Thank you very much to all of you. So thank you very much, uh, chairpersons and reporters and all the participants for your valuable time and uh, a lot of uh, in-depth discussion happened. So, uh, sir, if permits, we will go for next session. Uh, we will we'll move next session. The next session is uh, climate change impact on pests and diseases. Uh, to conduct this session, I would like to request uh, Dr. Chirandan Chattapathya, sir, and uh, Dr. S.K. Gupta, sir. Uh, hope they are present here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, and then yeah. the, the, yeah. the reporters, the reporters, reporters Dr. Chanda, are Dr. Kushwara. Chanda Kushwa and, and myself, uh, myself, myself, uh, yeah, myself, sir. Okay. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, the Indian Phytopathological Society for kindly, uh, you know, giving me the opportunity to share this important session. Along with me, we have the well-known Dr. Satish Kumar Gupta ji from uh, Solon. Um, he is from the university, a very, very senior person. Uh, I think, welcome Dr. Gupta. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We have been, in fact, today morning, we have been uh, talking and waiting together. To listen at the outset, you know, I like to ask uh, Indian Phytopathological Society, the organizers. So we are starting uh, about uh, uh, you know 70 minutes late. 
and scheduled uh, wise we are supposed to end at 1330 so uh, how long can we extend please you know i do not only with your permission sir around I, I, uh, yeah yeah we can so what, we can complete by uh, 145 or 2 sir like that we can complete. Two o'clock is okay because yeah, okay. See, we need to do some justice to the speaker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two o'clock is okay. Yeah, uh, we have three very learned speakers, and thereafter there are six presentations after yes, that, starting from uh, Dr. Nalathambi, uh, if I am not wrong, uh, Dr. Nalathambi, mm -hmm. and then um, we start with the uh, Dr. Vilokit from. Uh, Sedex France, and then Dr. Karen. She is waiting. It's past three a.m. And Dr. Lashia will look at. It is uh, past eight a.m. There. Dr. Sushil is a very senior person, always evergreen. Doc, welcome, Dr. Sushil. Yeah, uh, Dr. And Dr. Nalathambi, Dr. Girish Chen, Dr. Malikarjun, Dr. Mishra, Dr. Vinod Kumar, and then Dr. Chanda Kushwa. So if we go to up to two o'clock, we need to apportion the time. Yeah, uh, to good morning. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. So yeah, so if no, we do that, uh, 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 we'll, uh, we'll, we will we will split one. the time uh, and we will Bayani. organize it. So uh, let's say we allow, we, I think uh, learned speakers uh, who are starting, Lechia, Dr. Lechia, Dr. Karen, and uh, Dr. Sushil, will it be okay 15 minutes each for yourselves? Is it okay? I think that should be fine. That will be Which fine, I believe, yeah. yeah. 15 minutes each for you, so we go up to 1.30. And then for the six uh, oral presentations, we have five minutes each. Each is it okay? Is it okay? I think I think you need to adjust to that. I think well, some I of the time. oral presentations are pre-recorded with time, sir. So that has to be also accommodated. No? Uh, they are pre-recorded now yes, because. <laughs> Uh, so, how then can we uh, adjust it within the available time? Uh, participant participant so, like me, I have received another mail just now that uh, one more my presentation, which was supposed to be in this session, now they have shifted to another session at the same time. Okay. No. Let's let's first listen to the three learned speakers. Okay, sir. Uh, who are the keynote uh, speakers? And I like to first, you know, all three are very, you know, well known across the globe. And uh, Lechia, if we look at, she is, you know, interacting with the uh, different conferences in the Indian Phytopathological Society uh, for quite some time now. And uh, so is Dr. Karen. Uh, uh, she is with the, you know, from the Plant Pathology Department in the Food Systems Institute at the Emerging Pathogens Institute in the University of Florida, and she is her specialization is epidemiology and the decision support system. I see in the machine learning. I was looking into her, you know, uh, recent publications last year in the bio uh, 14. Um, uh, that was interesting. So we will first get into the presentation by Dr. Alicia. We look at along with Dr. Sergei Savari. So over to you, Dr. Vilokit. Uh, you can please start and go ahead. OK. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah. you are audible. Good. And can you see the presentation? Oh, that's yeah. fine. OK, great. I'll try to put it on a big screen. Yeah. So good afternoon, uh, India, and greetings from Toulouse, France. I'm very glad to be with you, although virtually, for this uh, for this conference, and I wish to thank the committee of organization of the conference for inviting me. So, uh, the, I will talk to you today about modeling yield losses caused by wheat trusts. Um, 
First, a few words about recent uh, re-emergences of free trust all around the, the globe. Uh, in the 2000s, there were re-emergences of yellow rust in um, yellow circles in several parts of the world, in, in the Midwest of the US, in Africa, in the Indo-Gangetic Plains, as well as in Australia. Uh, we all know about the re-emergence of uh, black rust in black circle, both in uh, Africa and in the Middle East and also some emergencies of flea first, uh, for example, in Europe. More recently, we could see that these uh, re-emergencies uh, have, become, uh, have become stronger in some parts of the world. Uh, black, black stem epidemics have spread in other parts of Africa, and now uh, is, has epi strong epidemics have now occurred in Europe, in Southern Europe, as well as in Scandinavia. So the black, black stem, uh, uh, worst is now uh, threatening uh, the production of wheat in, in Europe. Uh, as a whole, if I'm using a recent analysis which was make, made globally on um, crop losses from uh, diseases and looking at wheat, we see that wheat rust in general uh, are very important diseases. Uh, and so leaf rust ranks first in terms of global impact uh, according to crop losses. Stripe rust is also a very important disease and stem rust is becoming important and, and is the most important disease in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'd like to say a few words about both the epidemiological and the population genetic features of rust. First, uh, we know that spores of rust can be transported uh, to very large distances, and this uh, as a consequence of a high gene flow uh, from areas which can be uh, far away of uh, hundreds of kilometers. Second, uh, epidemics of wheat rust are in general polycyclic, and for some of them, for stem rust, for example, uh, we know that there is also um, sexual reproduction involved um, between the, the epidemics on Barbary. And third, uh, for most of the areas covered by wheat, um, the, the, there is the occurrence of a, a major resistance genes, which are deployed in uh, very large areas. And so um, this has, as a consequence, a very efficient directional selection. And so when we look at these different epidemiological and plant uh, population genetics and pathogen population features, uh, all this points to a very high evolutionary risk of the pathogen population, uh, according to the framework which was established by uh, McDonald. And in other words, it means that usually uh, pathogen population of first can adapt very well and very quick to changes in the environment. A few words about the impact of wheat rust on the physiology uh, and on the, the resulting yield of a wheat crop. The first damage mechanism, that is to say, physiological, the first effect on the physiology of a wheat crop is a reduction in the green leaf area index, uh, simply because at the sites of pustules, photosynthesis does not occur anymore. A second very important damage mechanism is the diversion of assimilates, which are produced by photosynthesis and which are diverted towards the pathogen, for, mainly for spore production. And so when modeling the damage mechanisms of wheat rust, um, we need first to model the agrophysiological processes of a healthy and injured crop. Then when modeling yield losses, we need to include damage mechanisms for wheat rust, the two damage mechanisms I've just mentioned. Then I will speak of additional damage mechanisms we need to account for in the case of stem rust. So let me first show you uh, very briefly the main processes which we need to represent when modeling uh, crop growth without disease. First, the first process to account for is photosynthesis, which is represented here by the rate of growth, which will allow to increase 
the, the, the pool of assimilates, which is this rectangle here. And so this rate of growth, which is photosynthesis basically, is a function of the LAI, the leaf area index of radiation, as well as, as of radiation use efficiency. Then this pool of assimilates uh, will be partitioned towards the different organs of wheat into leaf biomass, stem biomass, ear biomass, and wood biomass. And then here you see the feedback from the leaf biomass towards LAI and then photosynthesis. We need to account also for an important physiological process, which is uh, the physiological senescence of leaves, which is occurring after flowering and which is here represented by an outflow of leaf biomass. We need also to account for the translocation from stem biomass towards ear biomass of the starch, which has been as accumulated during the vegetative stage and which is translocated towards the ears after flowering. So now that we've got this crop growth model uh, built without any disease, we can include the damage mechanisms for wheat rust. So the first damage mechanism, if you recall, is about a decrease in green LAI. This is represented in a model by affecting here the LAI. And this is affected in, here in the case of yellow rust and brown rust. By using this simple equation where the green LAI is a function of LAI, which is reduced on the one hand by the severity of yellow rust and on the other, other hand by the severity of brown rust. When looking at the second damage mechanism, which is a diversion of assimilates from the pool of assimilates, this is represented in this model by this rate here, this outflow from the wood pool of assimilates, which is a rate of diversion of assimilates and which is associated again with the running severity of yellow rust and brown rust. So this is to show you simulated outputs of the model first in the absence of disease. So we have here over time, the simulated dynamics of the biomass of wood in red here, which is increasing until flowering and then remains stable. Here in green, we've got the curve of the simulated LAI, increasing until flowering and then decreasing because of the physiological senescence. In pink, we have the dry biomass of stems, again increasing until flowering and then decreasing after flowering because of translocation towards the, ear, the ears. Then here we've got the increase of the ear biomass, regular, and then at crop maturity, this final value here represents the yield, which is here about 900 grams per square meter, that is to say nine tons per hectare. This is um, an example of simulated effect of brown rust. So when we include into the model the damage mechanisms from diseases and we, when we use as a driver the dynamics of brown rust uh, severity, here we, you can see again in blue the dynamics of the LAI without disease. And in red, this would be the dynamic of the LAI with disease. So we can see that brown rust epidemics are affecting the green LAI. And in the same way, brown rust epidemics are affecting the ear biomass. And here, if you take the difference between the blue curve without disease and the red curve with disease, this would represent the yield loss. So here we've got a yield loss, which would be of about 100 grams per square meter, that is to say one ton per hectare. So this is just an overview, and I will pass on this of the um, the kind of outputs we can get where we simulate both. We can simulate and estimate both yield losses from individual and combined diseases. So uh, when considering stem rust, there is one effect that we need to account for, which is not needed to account for for yellow rust and brown rust, which is the effect of the presence of pustules of stem rust on the stem, which are um, diverting quite a lot of assimilates from the pool of assimilates. And so this can be uh, represented also in this model. 
now I will show you some outputs of a, a model, so the wheat pest model, which is the agrophysiological model for wheat, in which we have recently included damage mechanism for stem worst. Because as I was telling you, stem worst is now becoming a threat in Europe. So uh, we think it's important to work on, on, the, on, on stem worst and its impact on yield losses. And so when we have included the different damage mechanisms from stem worst, then we have uh, compared, observed, and simulated outputs using um, data from the literature. And this uh, graph here is showing us that the observed and simulated values are fairly close, which uh, let us which, which uh, uh, correspond to a fairly good representation of the model of the effect of uh, stem worst. Uh, when using this model, we can simulate directly uh, the different physiological processes involved um, in crop growth and in the impact of stem worst. So first here, this would be the dynamic of the rate of growth over time. And we can see that the daily variation actually corresponds to the daily variation in radiation. At the end, this rate of growth decreases because of the leaf senescence, and this is maturity. Here, this is a dynamic um, in terms of number of days after flowering of the ear biomass, which in increases up to four tons per hectare, which would be the yield without any disease at the end of the crop cycle. When we add stem worst epidemic here, this would be the time course of severity of stem worst. We can see on the black curve that this impacts quite strongly the rate of growth here as compared to here the rate of growth without disease and this also impacts uh, the accumulation of the ear biomass over time and the difference here between the final biomass of ear without disease and the final biomass of ear with disease is the yield loss here in this case it would be about one ton per hectare what we can do further do is also simulate uh, the diversion of assimilates, assimilates towards um, the spores of the pathogen. This would represent the rate of diversion of assimilates, and this would represent the accumulated uh, biomass of assimilates diverted, diverted towards the fungus. So here in this example, we can see that by the end of the season, 0.5 tons per hectare uh, of biomass uh, which was produced from photosynthesis has been diverted uh, towards the, the fungus. This is a very, very high uh, amount. I repeat, 0.5 uh, tons per hectare. And so uh, I would like to, to, to say a few things about perspectives and about uh, uh, bringing back this work uh, within a, a more global uh, uh, pictures. And speaking about uh, yield loss from wheat rust under climate change and the effect of drought. Uh, as we all know, uh, increased drought is currently observed in several wheat growing areas of the world. And uh, we know that drought is expected to further increase as climate change is unfolding. Uh, we can feel this very uh, much in, uh, for example, in southern part of, of Europe. And so if we link drought uh, with the effect of rust, uh, we can do that uh, use, uh, looking at physiological processes which are at play. So when we are dealing with infection from rust, uh, there is a formation of uredosos, which will cause a rupture of the cuticle at the place of, of this uh, emergence of the source. And so this breach in the cuticle will cause an outflow of water and so an increase in transpiration of the tissue at the site of the pustule. This will in turn cause an imbalance in water plant stages, and this will impact the, the plant physiology. And all these processes are very important and are especially true in the case of stem rust, uh, where epidemics are very often occurring uh, at the end of the crop cycle during the reproductive stage when droughts um, can, can happen more often. Uh, Dr. Lecia, if you could please wind up. 
it's time. Yeah, I'm nearly done. Just a, two quick slides, thanks. And so this interaction between drought stress and rest can be included into this model I've presented to you because it will reduce the photosynthesis on the one hand, and it will also increase the physiological lift senescence. So actually, we are currently working on including this interaction into the modeling work and, uh, and starting experiments uh, on which to do that. So as a conclusion, I would like to wrap up with a few important uh, take-home messages. First, and again, uh, yield loss analysis is a keystone to improve disease management. Without yield loss analysis, um, disease management cannot be seriously addressed, I would say. Second, yield loss modeling with simulation models uh, can be a powerful tool to assess strategies of disease management under several scenarios. Third, as I've told you, interactions between rest and drought and with physiology and yield uh, would be very uh, timely to consider because of uh, the unfolding climate change. And this, I think, would have a strong impact on plant breeding in order to develop uh, genotypes which would be at the same time resistant to rest and also tolerant to drought. And with that, I'll, I'll thank you and take any question, if ever there would be time. I'll be glad to, to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Leishia. And uh, Dr. Gupta, as you, as you can appreciate, uh, we presently don't have time. It was a very interesting presentation, yeah. uh, you know, taking the holistic issues into account. And um, uh, both the biotic and the biotic stress and a different way to assess um, the yield loss, also accounting for how much the fungus is eating, the pathogen is eating. So nice, thank you. I think Dr. Gupta will be kind enough to introduce our next learner speaker, <laughs> Karen Garrett. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stratopadhyay. Uh, next speaker uh, is uh, uh, Karen Garrett, and uh, uh, she uh, is the plant uh, is from Plant Pathology Department, Food Systems and Emerging Pathogen Institute of University of Florida. Her work uh, addresses uh, epidemiology, system analysis, and analysis for detection support, including machine learning approaches. So these uh, different uh, approaches she will be discussing about uh, these in uh, in her uh, lecture. So I invite her uh, to deliver her talk. Uh, Karen, please. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Uh, good morning. Great, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you are audible. Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to speak today. Thanks to the organizers and thanks to, to Dr. Letitia willow for setting the stage and um, priming us all to think about the importance of climate change in, for disease losses. So today I'll talk just a little bit about general overview of climate change adaptation strategies and I'll introduce some concepts about networks which I will use in my presentation and then I'll emphasize some impact network analysis, a tool that I've been working on to evaluate regional adaptation strategies. So if we think about uh, an overall view of um, how we can adapt agricultural systems. So if we look at it from the grower standpoint, uh, if they use early warning systems, they'll be interested in how they can adjust those to new weather slash climate scenarios to update their decision-making strategies, and also then the decision about varieties. And so that's part of what crop breeders, researchers, and other scientists who are uh, supporting agricultural producers can provide them to adapt to new climate change scenarios. So to improve decision support systems, and then also this general question of what diseases to prioritize where. Some diseases will become worse, other 
diseases may become less of a pro problem in some areas. So to support decisions about that, with a, enough of a lead time to uh, have new crop varieties available when where needed. And then similarly for policymakers and donors, that question of what are the key disease problems for investment in the future? And then also the possibility for supporting livelihoods of using financial tools like insurance. It's an interesting frontier for, um, for disease risk in addition to problems like drought. So here is a really, uh, uh, influential paper that I think has an important perspective for us to think about that as we're adapting agriculture to climate change, the science too has to adapt. So we need multidisciplinary solutions and we need to strengthen the interface with decision makers for scientists as well. Another interesting uh, aspect of the challenges that we have for adaptation to climate change uh, comes up in this, in this article that's from a global survey. So the idea of what keeps people from, uh, what keeps growers from uh, adopting integrated pest management strategies. And sometimes it's as simple as uh, outreach weaknesses, right? That growers may not even be aware of what um, options there are available to them. So, so, so that's part of the motivation for the tool that I'll talk about here. And so if you're not familiar with formal concepts of network models, here's a, a mini introduction. So networks are uh, conceptualized as having nodes represented here as circles that are connected together by links. And we can use that to represent a lot of different types of systems. Those links show something about the interaction between the pair of nodes and they may change over time, particularly in our context of climate change. So this kind of structure can be used to describe a lot of different components um, of systems that determine how much disease there, are, there is in cropping systems. So the nodes in one type of representation might be locations and spatial networks. And in fact, that's what I'll uh, emphasize today in my discussion, uh, ge uh, geographic networks, where the links are indicating something about the risk of movement of a pathogen from one location to another. The nodes can also represent people or institutions and how they influence each other. And of course, there are lots of different possibilities for networks uh, at smaller scales as well, looking at genes, molecules, and then of course, uh, microbiome networks, another interest of mine that I won't get a chance to get into today. And so then the links in the context of a geographic network would be something like the probability of movement between geographic locations. And if it's a network of people, the links might represent commun communication or influence. And again, under climate change, we can think about how these structures are, are likely to change over time along with climate. And, and just for a little background, I'll uh, refer to a figure from this review article about network analysis. So if we think about what network analysis can do for us with common challenges in plant pathology, we commonly have limited resources to deal with important pathogens. And so, um, we can use network analysis to identify the, for example, the geographic locations where it's most important to manage an epidemic with limited resources. We're usually dealing with complex systems and network analysis provides new tools to operationalize concepts we're interested in like sustainability and resilience. We also need to address often economic inequality where some growers may not have access to um, all the resources that would be desirable. And so using network analysis can, and linked with socioeconomic networks can help address those kinds of um, situations to reach low income farmers. Then there are also new opportunities that network analysis can help us deal with, uh, new sorts of global data layers that are available. And then at a finer scale, uh, new sorts of microbiome data that we can get information about. And then also it's exciting to leverage progress across disciplines since lots of different disciplines are addressing networks from physics to uh, sociology. So, yeah. so one tool that I'll be talking about here today then is impact network analysis, uh, a model that um, I and colleagues have been working on for a while and uh, that has an associated R package for implementing these kinds of analyses. So 
the, the idea here is to provide decision support for regional management interventions. Um, so decision-making at a regional level. And the idea of this framework is that there's, there are management technologies available for adoption that, for example, could support adaptation to climate change. And one component of the system is a socioeconomic network. So here's a network of people or institutions that are influencing each other, maybe exchanging money. And then there's a linked network, the biophysical network, which where the nodes might be farms or counties or even countries at a larger scale. And the idea that what's happening in the socioeconomic network is influencing the biophysical network. Like if a, if a node in the socioeconomic network represents a farmer, then the node in the biophysical network would be the farm where that grower is making decisions about how to manage the uh, production. And then the movement of the pathogen in the biophysical network is influenced by that landscape of all the decisions that growers have made. And then the combination of these components of the system gives the regional outcome um, in terms of farmer yields, profits, or other sorts of traits like system resilience. So as one example of, of this sort of application, uh, so seed systems are sort of a natural for thinking about networks since there's um, easy to define network of movement of planting material. So in this study, we were looking at uh, a seed system for in Ecuador. And here's an example of what the smallholder farms look like in this region. And, and here's an example of what the, uh, this relatively small seed system network looks like. And we were using one of the tools from this impact network analysis um, toolkit to look at the different roles of people in this network. So, so in this network, the nodes are people or in some cases institutions. And then the links indicates movement of planting materials. And then the coloring of those nodes indicates how important that location would be for monitoring disease spread through a seed system like this. So, so you can see that the locations vary like at the center of this star-like network where, where there's an important seed source, that's a very important location for uh, effective monitor, monitoring of potential disease spread. And then the other nodes in the network uh, have different levels of importance uh, for monitoring within this particular network. Here's another study by Kelsey Anderson and colleagues uh, where we were looking at a combination of a seed system network and also a landscape network. So uh, a landscape of, of um, in this case, uh, small cities and potential movement between them uh, based on geographic uh, distance and the probability of movement across different distances by vector example. So combining both epidemics that can spread through seed systems and that can spread by vectors between uh, fields. So, so often it's hard to get detailed information about likely movement through landscapes. So, so one approach that we've been working on to grapple with that is cropland connectivity. So if you have maps of the crop density, you can look at that in terms of the cropland connectivity in terms of how connected the landscape is at different points for potential movement of pathogens and pests that are crop species specific. And so for example, you can find locations that are important as hubs for an epidemic network where there are lots of links and, and likewise locations that are important as potential bridges like that help to connect other part, like different parts of the network that might otherwise uh, not be connected to each other. So this is one way to generate information about epidemic networks and landscapes. So, so this tool, um, just some references for this tool. Uh, if, if people are interested in following it up further, there's a R package available in GitHub and now a user guide and a preprint about it, hopefully will be out in a peer review journal soon. And this is a, a focus for me, so I'm happy to talk to other people, but if they have new systems where application of a tool like this for studying regional management would be useful. So here is an example of um, some types of questions that a tool like this can be used to address that are specific to global change. Like the, the first two types of questions listed here are for press stressors. So those are stressors that are um, increasing steadily 
Um, uh, so for example, this idea of, um, or, well, or, or steady stresses. So for example, if we have a case of uh, conduciveness to disease that's just steadily increasing under climate change, then how can we adapt to that in a regional system? We can also think of pulse stresses, for example, in the context of climate change, uh, if there are extreme weather events more frequently, those could be pulse stresses um, that, to which systems have to adapt um, to recover. Karen, so we for are, example, Karen, we are just uh, uh, having less time, so please try to finish within two, three minutes. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. And so here's, here's an example of, of looking at, um, so if here on the left side, the probability of adoption. So if we increase that in a particular system, the specific system that we're looking at here, then we can look at the proportion of nodes that have a pathogen established through that region. And so the mean probability of adoption is something that we might be able to leverage in a system like perhaps with subsidies for management adoption and so on. But so this illustrates how there could be benefits from that, but they might not be as complete as we would hope depending on other factors of the system. And then to the right here is an example of an adaptation function. So the idea that if we have got this, um, if we've got initial proportion uh, nodes in this epidemic network where the pathogen is present, like if there's a, an extreme weather event such that there's a big flush of the pathogen present, then we can look at what sort of um, adoption rate would be necessary to compensate for that new threat to the system because of uh, climate change. So, so then of course, one of the best um, ways to deal with uh, disease threats is through effective crop breeding with resistance. And so it's interesting also to think about these networks and how effectively they currently work. And I'll also mention this link here at the bottom, um, a, a new project that we've been working on uh, at the toolsforseedsystems.org webpage, a set of tools, including impact network analysis for um, understanding and improving seed systems. Thinking and then even larger, uh, we can think about this global surveillance system proposal uh, that would be an important component of a global response to climate change and its increased threats for plant disease. So thanks for your attention and thanks for the opportunity to present here. Here's my contact information um, if you'd like to have some further discussion of these topics. So thank you very much. Sir, unmute yourself, please. Uh, I think we don't have any uh, time. Uh, due to paucity of time, we are not able to take any question. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. And now I request uh, Dr. Chadopadhyay uh, to introduce another uh, speaker, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gupta. Uh, it was a very nice talk from Dr. Karen. You know, uh, she is a very senior person in the annual review of phytopathology also with the American phytopathology. And uh, the talk was very interesting, mm -hmm. uh, merging different systems, you know, the seed systems with the quarantine and uh, looking at the yield loss. A good connect between the two speakers that we heard. And now we land with the uh, third speaker who is very well known in the fraternity of the Indian Phytopathological Society, Dr. Sushilendra Desai, a very, very senior person who earlier worked in the uh, Directorate of Groundnut Research at Junagadh and uh, later moved into Krida at Hyderabad. And uh, he has worked on the aflatoxins as also on the uh, trichoderma uh, and other, uh, you know, climate change issues are very, big climate change enthusiast, uh, winner of several awards at, at his earlier times. And so Dr. Desai, over to you for your lecture. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shins and Chattopadhyay for those kind words of introduction. Uh, I would also, uh, I will share my presentation.
screen. One minute. Some issues. Where is that? Uh, uh, is my screen visible? No. Sir, your screen is visible. Yeah. You can go home page. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, thank you very much. In fact, uh, uh, I would like to first of all thank organizers for giving me this opportunity to share our, our experiences as well as some of the published literature on microbe mediated adaptation strategies to minimize climate change impacts on crops. In fact, um, I would also say that uh, both uh, Latricia and Karen have laid out foundation for my talk in a way because they have covered some of the aspects what I'm going to talk about that's biotic and abiotic stresses as well. So uh, this is one of the important slides I would like to say for, uh, because we have a lot of foreign uh, participants also in the seminar. India is divided into 127 agroecological zones. That means the wide range of diversity in crops and cropping systems as well as the farming systems. So is diversity in biotic and abiotic stresses faced by the crops and cropping systems. That means we have biotic stresses like weeds, insect pests, pathogens, and nematodes. And the abiotic stresses, most of the times it is soil moisture deficit stress, as well as during these uh, last three, four decades, we are facing problems like high intense rainfall events, and then floods, soil salinity, ail storms, et cetera. So in this backdrop, the outline will be that uh, I'll be speaking on biotic and abiotic stress interactions, biotic and abiotic stress resistance interplay, microbe mediated amelioration strategies, current gaps and way forward. We uh, in fact uh, mapped uh, the extreme weather events what we faced between 2000 and 2018. If you can see the picture, every year in some part of the country or the other, we have been facing one or the other extreme weather events be it drought in some part, at the same time floods in another part, like Orissa, if Orissa is facing drought, North Bihar is facing floods, North Bihar is facing floods and South Bihar is facing drought. And within the season, we have more than one extreme weather event. That is a drought in the early part of the crop followed by flood in the later part. So the biotic and abiotic stress interactions are very important because we as plant pathologists, we are looking at the pathogens and their impact on the crop. But crop is looking holistically on its biophysical environment and natural resources. So the combination of different stress factors could be either additive or interactive, and the effects could be positive or negative. It all depends on the timing, nature, and severity of each of these stresses. For instance, if we look at some of the negative stresses, the trade-off of evolutionary shift of earlier flowering in Brassica rapa has also imported its additional susceptibility to alternaria brassicae. And in India, in southern part of India, we have a big groundnut belt called Anantapuram, where normally the drought is common parameter. But in 2009, during September and October and November, all the three months, we had high intensity rainfalls for more than uh, 70 days, which led to outbreak of leaf spots and rust, which otherwise normally would be very mild. A few more negative impacts. We all know the high mean temperatures over last six years has correlated with the susceptibility of wheat to spot blotch of spot spot blotch disease. Similarly, if you see uh, the stock rots and charcoal rot in case of sorghum or maize, drought stress crop is more infected. If you see the left bottom corner, the chickpea plants when they are subjected to drought, pathogen, and combined stress, what could be the impact on the crop? And we heard a talk in the previous session about the aflatoxins. We all know aflatoxins are directly correlated with the drought. But there are some positive effects as well. Increased uh, salt-induced osmotic stress is also imparting resistance to powdery mildew in barley. The, Virus infected tobacco, wheat, and rice plants, they show drought symptoms at a later stage, probably because of the uh, accumulation of osmoprotectants. And the second part of my speak is about the biotic abiotic stress resistance interplay. This is one of the important aspects, but at the same time, 
looked in isolation, whenever we see the resistance breeding programs, the biotic stress resistance breeding programs are exclusive from the abiotic stress resistance programs, which is otherwise, as we have seen in the early part of the lecture, all these biotic and abiotic stresses occur simultaneously during the crop season. For instance, heat shock factor A1B, it not only imparts resistance to water use efficiency, drought in case of uh, canola, but at the same time also for the downy mildew and bacterial blight. And some of the transcription factors I have listed here, they also have a combined resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses. And the other part is that there are some negative impacts also. For instance, if you are looking at the blight resistance, right bottom corner, the blight resistance genes are very sensitive to temperatures. That means a two degrees rise in the temperature will break down the resistance. So we have to be careful about it. And we have seen the drug factors, MAP kinases, osmotin genes, they have all common functions. So this interplay is also going to play a very important role when we are talking about the adaptation strategies. Now coming to the microbe mediated uh, abiotic stress amelioration strategies. This is a conceptual diagram, which we have put it up, taking into consideration all the published literature so far available as to how microbes are imminent in their interaction with the crops. They can do biofertilization, they can modify the soil structures, they can impart drought and salinity stress, they can also impart heat and light stress, apart from promoting the plant growth. So some of the examples that most of the commonly known microorganisms so far worked upon are Pseudomonas, Azotobacter, Azospirillum, Rhizobium, Pintoria, Enterobacter, Rhizobium, Bacolderia, Glomus, Trichoderma, etc. We have some examples here. Azotobacter plus Pseudomonas plus P fertilizer not only imparts drought and excess moisture tolerance, but also increases, improves the leaf nitrogen and plant P absorption. Similarly, inoculating the soil sunflower with uh, pseudomonas Im improves the soil structure and thereby imparts drought tolerance in the crops. We have developed some of the consortia creda, which have been tested at uh, multi locations for their ability to impart drought tolerance and the consortium consists of pseudomonas, pentoia and penibacillus. And they have been given, they have been giving very good results so far. Now coming to the biotic stress amelioration part, we all know the microbes, they do multifunctions. They do biocontrol, they do induction of uh, resistance, and they also do the growth promotion. And one good part with the microbes is that because of their small genome size, they have been very well molecularly characterized. And we have also the microbiota in terms of epiphytes, endophytes, and rhizobiota. And these are the microbiomes what Karen was talking about a few minutes back. Now coming to some of the examples, the Pseudomonas putida elicits, uh, elicits the jasminic acid priming in maize. Similarly, Trichoderma map kinase uh, imparts uh, ISR in case of cucumber and peptidiobiols of Pseudomonas coningae. They program the cell death in fungal pathogens by apoptotic deaths and elicitors of Trichoderma are very well known to activate plant defense systems. But then to do all these things, what we have to do is that, as I said, with 127 agroecologies, we have a diversity across the country for the microbial, microbials as well. So we have to do a systematic characterization and cataloging of these strains, test for all their plant growth promoting trains, biocontrollability, nutrient mobilization, and their ability to promote the growth, and also their ability to occupy the rhizosphere successfully. Apart from that, we have to also characterize them for their ability to withstand abiotic stresses like salinity, salt concentrations, or even the drought stress. We also have to look for their hydrolytic activities, hydrolytic enzymes activities, because most of these biocontrol agents or microbes are known to produce a battery of hydrolytic enzymes. In this case, it is, I'm showing chitinolytic activity, because this is one of the important parameters once these chitinolytic enzymes act upon the chitosans, they produce chito-oligosaccharides, which are known to have antimicrobial properties as well as induction of resistance, depending on their size. And then, as I said, we have to characterize them also. 
for their abiotic stress tolerance. I'm happy to share with you that we have now some of these pseudomonas and trichoderma strains which are climate ready. That means they can withstand temperatures like 48 degrees centigrade, 1.6 molar sodium chloride con concentrations. And uh, in case of uh, trichoderma, we have 1.2 megapascal osmotic stress tolerance and also 48 degrees centigrade, 1.8 molar sodium chloride tolerance, which is very high level as compared to the plants. We have to also, we have also characterized their uh, genes which are important in this stress tolerance, that is molecular basis of this abiotic stress tolerance, which is also very important so that we can work out the stability of the strains in due course of training. This is one comprehensive diagram which shows detection, trans signal transduction and defense response published by Anderson et al. I like this diagram because where all you can intervene in what way this diagram shows right from pathogen detection to signal transduction on the right side and to the defense responses, different activities which are triggered by the systems like microbe associated molecular patterns or the damage associated molecular patterns or even NAMPs, nematode associated molecular patterns. For example, one I'm uh, citing here, correlatin insensitive seance and also the uh, aluminum uh, malate uh, translation beta glucuronidases rootstocks. Both of them are essential if they have to recruit bacillus subtilis in their rhizosphere. This bacillus subtilis is the one which imparts plant growth promotion as well as the biocontrol against the tomato pathogens. So is damage associated uh, molecular pathogens where the growth defense trade-off has to be given due address. Apart from that, we should also standardize the multiplication formulation and delivery strategies because which is very important unless we have uh, the cheap method of uh, multiplication and delivery and a quality delivery mechanism as Karen was mentioning about, the stakeholders, they will not be able to derive the due credits from such products. And also the shelf life, which is very important. We have seen that our liquid formulations have got very good shelf life, both as well as individual formulations and the consortia. And that's how we could able to provide the farmers a good long shelf life providing uh, micro for, microbial formulations. And these are our, some of the bioinoculants. We have integrated bioresource center at ICR Creda, which provides quality bio inputs as well as the training. The basic purpose of this uh, uh, infrastructure is to create awareness about these bioinoculants. And we have the capacity to produce about 4.5 metric tons of any product in the month. The most important part of this uh, component is the awareness building and custom training programs starting from half a day to six months, depending on the needs of the clients. The current gaps, the extreme weather events are the impending concern. The interplay of biotic and abiotic stresses vis-a-vis -vis host systems are complex, but necessitate in-depth analysis. A little understanding about the plant microbiome as on today, as uh, both uh, Natasha and uh, Karen were mentioning. We don't know the core microbiomes in the plant systems. We don't know the key to keystone species so far available. But unless and until we understand these things, we will not be able to take this science logically to the farmers. And a few efforts on multiple stress tolerance for holistic farm profitability enhancement. The way forward is that systematic genotyping and phenotyping of the microbial resources, understand plant microbe interactions, establish keystone species of the core root and leaf microbiomes, integrated interdisciplinary networks what uh, Karen was mentioning about for method, but I am putting it in the, from the perspective of uh, methodologies, robust databases and knowledge sharing, impact assessment and management of ecosystem services. This is one of the important parameters, which I would say Indian plant pathologists are still not focusing on this because unless we quantify the ecosystem services, what we are providing through the, the plant protection sciences, the science will not be absorbed in a holistic way. And finally, conjunctive harnessing of the qualitative and quantitative resistance durability. We have now tilling platforms, which can give us a good opportunity to understand these uh, conjunctive harnesses systems. So thank you very much. I thank 
the director ICR Crida as well as ICR for giving me this opportunity. But I profusely thank all my colleagues and my research scholars who have contributed data to this findings. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Desai. Uh, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Gupta, you will kindly agree, along with all other participants numbering about 40 in this session, that, uh, you know, the three speakers, they have put together the story so holistically, so nicely, and uh, a good uh, summing up by Dr. Desai in the end, uh, to the story. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Desai, for a real, very good work and fantastic presentation. Um, we thank we you really, very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we move on uh, to the next speaker, which is the oral presentation. And uh, as usual, I have to request helplessly, Dr. Nalathambi, if you could be very brief, only highlighting a very important aspect on virulence screening of wheat powdery mildew pathogen isolates from different agroclimatic regions of India. Dr. Nalathambi, please. Yeah, somewhere some sound coming. I think uh, somebody could possibly mute to avoid some street sound coming. No voice is coming, only no sounds are coming. Yeah, Dr. Nalathambi. You are not audible, in fact. Your voice is, you are not audible. You, you are, we are able to see you on the screen, the slides. I think now the sound should come. Yeah, the man with the black right. Sir, some technical issue with the uh, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. So, presentation. We'll move so, to the next one. Yeah, and the yeah. next and the next person, I think Dr. Mallikarjun has moved to another uh, session. Uh, I just, we, I just. Okay, okay sir. Then we can. Uh, so we can move to Dr. Krishnakant uh, Mishra from VPK Salmoda on the uh, major, you know, pest uh, status in the northwestern Himalayas under climate change. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Mishra, please, are you there? I don't think so, sir. Okay, if that is so, um, we'll wait for Dr. Uh, Nalathambi to come back. In the meantime, we will take up Dr. Vinod Kumar uh, from uh, the NRC on Lichi, Mazafarpur, on the studies on epidemiology of leaf, panicle, and fruit blights of Lichi caused by Hello, alternating. Sir. Excuse me. Hello, sir. Sir, I'm at will. Yeah, Hello, yes, sir. please. Sir, Grishan from uh, Siu Impal, I want to present my presentation, sir. 
yeah yeah we will we will uh... okay you are there okay yes. okay yes. you can okay. upload okay <laughs> are you ready dr chan yeah, sir yes sir yes sir i am ready sir you are ready sir i would will yes sir yes sir i am ready sir okay kindly share your Hello, screen sir. kindly share your slides yes sir yes sir sir good afternoon sir yeah Hello. go for slide mode slide mode i am ready slide mode yes yes slide mode yeah okay okay good afternoon sir i i want to present my presentation on the prevalence of fruits decay on khasi yeah. mandate in siang region of arunachal pradesh uh, dr girish chan sir, kindly go to the slide mode sir. kindly go to the slide mode slide this one it is so yeah mandate is a very important crop uh, of uh, our country sir uh, about uh, 42 percent of uh, total area covered by the mandarin and uh, major growing states uh, are maharashtra tamil nadu madhya pradesh west bengal odisha rajasthan arunachal pradesh and mizoram also dr girish chand widely known as sikkim dr, dr girish chand you, you are not on the on the on the slide mode slide Sir, I am slide mode, sir. No, no, no. You are not on the slide mode. Yeah. Yes. This slide mode, yeah. sir. Not yet. Okay. Orange color vary within yellow to vivid orange, and the wall is smooth with ten uh, to twenty seeds in per fruits. The quality of the juice is evident and found in deep orange color. The post harvest losses are often more harsh in. developing countries due to the lack of storage and transport transportation facilities fruit infection by fungi bacteria may appear during the growth period harvesting handling transportation and post harvest stock pile and marketing conditions and after procuring by the consumers the relatively short shelf life period provoked by the pathogen is one of the most important limiting factor that impact the economic value of the mandarin fruits the khasi mandarin is a very important fruit uh, i want to here work on this mandarin next 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 these are the different factors for affecting the khasi mandarin production in siang region of arunachal pradesh uh, mandarin fruit from an uh, and key adorcher disease and insect pest of mandarin quality production of the mandarin fruits transport and storage facilities of the mandarin and marketing channel also big problem these are the objectives of our work sir girish dr girish mandarin sir in cm yeah, region your slide slide your slide, slide is not moving at least you go next slide you content is at least you go for slide so if not at least go next next slide which slide you are presenting that should be visible next yeah. identification of fruit decay pathogens and microbial activities of khasi mandarin fruits and fruit uh, production and dr Basis girish of the khasi mandarin dr girish dr girish sir sir i i think uh, uh, i'll request you to uh, please go to the significant findings and complete the presentation because your okay, slides okay, are not visible kindly show the significant findings and complete the presentation this okay The, the conclusion of our findings fruits harvesting time is probably an important factor in the appearance of the disease since warm and humid environments promote the appearing of the mandarin fruits decay is threat in the siang region of arunachal pradesh since the search for crop cultivation disease etiology transportation storage and management are most required to fruit decay diseases 
this could greatly reduce the economic impact of the mandarin growers by the decay pathogens it has also been proposed that the pathogen involved in the through decay diseases the latter scenario is supported by the fact that proper handling transportation storage and use of safer fungicide to be the decreases the decay of the pathogens next next sir these are the challenges for the mandarin growing in the arunachal pradesh like uh, uncared orchard of the man mandarin lack of uh, healthy planting materials suitable iron modules for mandarin slow extension process poor transportation facility and also poor market management and lack of lack of uh, storage facility these are the challenges for the mandarin growing in the arunachal pradesh next this is the sir future thrust strategy for development of the integrated disease management module to the fruit decay of khasi mandarin in siang region of arunachal pradesh and uh, second things by carrying out on farm testing and front line demonstration to demonstration for the most effective low cost eco friendly fruit decay of khasi mandarin management strategy is to be generated thank Thanks, you sir sir thank you dr kishan uh, dr nalathambi Uh, could you solve the problem dr nalathambi please unmute please unmute yeah uh, yeah now it's fine fantastic <laughs> please go ahead yeah could you see us sir hello sir share your slides you already shared no sir it's not visible on net on net yeah is it visible is it okay sir ah yes sir yes sir yeah zoom bar mein chalana oh thank you thank you for the organizers i am extremely sorry there is some technical difficulties in the connectivity so uh, the topic of this uh, the presentation is on the virulence screening of the wheat powder mildew pathogen using uh, the different uh, isolates from the uh, various agro climatic regions of the country in fact this piece of work was supported by the uh, our collaborative institutes like indian institute wheat and barley karnal and uh, the ira regional station shimla and as we all know that the powder mildew pathogens are very challenging for the artificial culturing being a biotroph uh, we face lot of difficulties in culturing the pathogen on the uh, artificial medium in fact we tried a different uh, synthetic media but we failed and ultimately we have moved to the uh, the uh, our uh, the seedling culture and we know the the pathogen this uh, blumeria graminis which is infecting on the wheat and the as well as the barley blumeria graminis horde evolved uh, 6.3 million years ago along with the host plants and therefore the lot of uh, the uh, pathotypes or races are expected and in india there is no uh, uh, systematic uh, investigation on this particular pathogen but the diseases are coming in the different area and therefore we took up this uh, piece of work and uh, since the uh, blumeria graminis ttc can infect both wild and uh, domestic uh, wheat species that is particularly the triticum species so a lot of the races have been reported in the host side about uh, 60 70 70 uh, the resistant genes that is r genes powder mildew genes pm genes have been documented but unfortunately there is no race or uh, the pathotype profiling in uh, the particular pathogen particularly in case of india and as we know the asexual spores the conidia so called conidia are capable of traveling up to transmitting up to 650 kilometers and the powder mildew infection is uh, limited due to the uh, geographic and climatic factors uh, perhaps due to the uh, uh, transmission and hence in india also the incidence is uh, specific in different agro climatic regions and uh, we are maintaining about uh, 300 isolates from the different uh, agro climatic regions in india but for this study we have taken about uh, 85 isolates which have uh, molecularly characterized and uh, three agro climatic regions we collect
one that is Shimla. So we developed our, our the constituted our own differentials because obviously or practically there is no differentials to study the race profile or pathotype profile of the pathogen. And we imported about uh, 36 uh, isogenic lines from the CIMIT and uh, having the different uh, the R genes or and their combinations. So we conducted sequence of field as well as the uh, glasses experiments. And finally, we could uh, uh, shortlist the differentials. And by using these differentials, we could demarcate the virulence profile of the pathogen. And uh, what we, we used to do is that we used to plant the three sets in the uh, three different uh, the set of boxes. And we used to plant or uh, sow the seedlings what, uh, the, of the, these differentials. And we used all the uh, ATP isolates different, uh, different uh, category to artificially inoculate it. So after 10 days of the post inoculation, we assess their severity. And in fact, these are the different isolates from the different uh, agroclimate regions of the country, about 85 we used. And this is the method uh, we developed uh, uh, under the controlled uh, polio conditions. And uh, the DBT was kind enough to fund this uh, project. Uh, they, we constructed a separate uh, polio with uh, control condition, particularly the light and the humidity. And both these uh, two factors are uh, very important to have the plenty of sporulation of this uh, powder humidity fungi. Otherwise, uh, as a pathologist, all we understand that the culturing itself is a very tedious uh, job, but we could uh, uh, culture this and we could uh, multiply in the culture, uh, the artificial condition. And this is the set of uh, the method we are using to uh, pinpoint or profile the races analysis. And here uh, you can see the one set of the, um, uh, the host differentials that is PM, the, it has the uh, R genes that is PM1, 2, 3B, 3C like that. And the other side, the PM isolates about 85 we used. And uh, here we tested two uh, followed to the scoring scale that is zero to four and zero to seven. And we were comfortable about the zero to seven scale and we individual scoring we have done after 10 days of post inoculation. And this is the another set you go, you can have the, uh, the origin combination as well as the, the, for example, PM2 and PM6 and PM2, PM2 and PM9. Like that we have the uh, different combination. You can see the differential uh, reactions and interestingly, we could see the, a lot of uh, the diversity among the uh, different collection or the different pathotype, uh, the isolates of the powder mill from different parts of the country. For example, you can see the Southern Hill zone, the gene efficacy, for example, gene efficacy is about 68%, but the intermediate susceptibility reaction is very low. But the same pattern we compared with the Northwestern play zone isolates, you can see the gene efficacy and gene uh, the inefficacy is quite different. And similarly, in case of the Northern Hill Zone isolates, these were quite at part with each other. So it is three, uh, the group of uh, isolates from different uh, programmed regions, one is extreme south and one extreme north. And we could see that lot of uh, diversity among the infectivity and the severity. And therefore, we speculate uh, the lot of uh, <coughs> the races. Particularly, you can see the differential reactions on the ceilings. And within 15 days, we could uh, um, uh, analyze this uh, uh, variability. And the, the significant or salient, uh, the outcome of the piece of work is that the differentials what we developed or what we constituted were very successful to demarcate the virulence efficacy of the PM genes and the powder multi population. And the powder multi population expressed diversity in symptoms severity under the controlled condition. Here, the controlled condition is very important. Otherwise, you will not get any infection on the leaf, even if it is susceptible. And therefore, we are maintaining this control, control conditions throughout the year. And the, um, based on this virulence efficacy, uh, particularly the decanary value after the artificial inoculation, we could uh, uh, shortlist or we could identify the isolates about 85 express the incompatible reactions. That means it has the, the avirulence genes or the avirulence factors from these isolates. And uh, some of the isolates express the virulence efficacy up to 40 to 50%. And now, about 50% of the isolates could overcome the virulence factors, which are present in the uh, pathogen as well as in the host in the other side of the host. So the avalanche factors and the virulence genes from the host side is a very uh, good combination to identify the compatible and incompatible reactions. So all these come also the uh, probability incompatible lines is are in term ineffective with the infection process of the PGT isolates. So the nutshell, uh, we, we are speculating that the uh, North Indian or not the extreme North Indian isolates are quite different or the, it is a different race than the South is concerned. Uh, of course, in the in between the Northwestern plain zone, 
the population is quite different. And therefore, and we are in the good progress to identify or the, the designate the races because we have to develop a set of uh, the different scale or different uh, nomenclature to raise the powder multi pathogen. It is not like other uh, leaf rust or stem rust pathogen. For the first time, uh, we are uh, uh, trying our level best to uh, designate the races from India. And uh, hopefully very shortly, we will be able to identify the uh, pinpoint the races. And all these isolates, interestingly, are maintaining in our controlled conditions. And we are in good progress to uh, have the genetic analysis. The another part of the work is going on. We are making, uh, in fact, India is the first country or the largest uh, the, uh, genetic data we submitted in the NCB database. This is for the information I want to share. Get that about 725 uh, the uh, DNA samples have been deposited in the NCB database for the first time. It is the maximum number available in the uh, database. And based on that, we are able to uh, now working on the haplotypes and other the genetic part of the pathogen. On the other side, the, the virulent uh, the pathotype or the isolates, we have moved to the whole genome sequencing. It is the off way we are uh, in the progress. So with this, uh, let me thank the organizers. Uh, I, I could share the very, very piece of uh, work from the uh, work we are going on at Wellington. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alathambi. A very good piece of work. Uh, the importance, I would you know, say, powdery mildew happens to be the climate change pathogen. So only one thing I'll like to you know, uh, ask you just a quick question that uh, uh, in the Europe, you have the erysiphe, whereas yes, here you have the blumeria. Yes, sir. Um, and you already have the powdery mildew now, which wasn't there long time back in wheat in India. So how do you speculate uh, as a pathologist now the powdery mildew moving into rice? Rice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a speculative question. You can keep thinking on that. So we move yes, on sir, to, the, to the next speaker. And uh, which is, uh, I think, Dr. Uh, Krishnakant Mishra, are you there? I think he's not there. Okay, Dr. Krishnakant Mishra is not there. Then can we move to Dr. Vinod Kumar? Lichi? Dr. Vinod Kumar, are you there? Sir, I think uh, Dr. Malik, Malik Arjun is there. Yes, sir, I am here. You can put my presentation, sir, pre-recorded, which I have already signed. Okay, okay. Uh, you are going to speak on chickpea rust? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay, wonderful. And then uh, Dr. Chanda Kushwa will be completing the story from Bhagalpur. Dr. Dr. Kushwa, are you ready also? I see her. Yes, sir. Up. Yes, sir. I am ready. Yes, I am ready. Okay. okay. I'll, okay. I'll play Dr. Mallikarjun uh, uh, the sound encoded, recorded uh, PPT. Sir. Okay. Respected Chairman, Sir, Co-Chairman, Sir, and all the participants of the National Conference on Plant Health, Food Security Challenges and Opportunities being organized by Indian Phytopathology Society, New Delhi. This is Malik Arjun Kengnar, Scientist Plant Pathology from ACRP on Chickpea and ACRP on Pigeon Pea from Zonal Agriculture Association, Kalburgi, presenting my observations and findings on the emerging threat of chickpea rust caused by aromances necessary due to climate. So we all know that chickpea is a source of vegetarian protein across the country and even across the globally and is next to pigeon pea but self-sufficiency in its production is yet to be achieved in India because still we are importing from so many other countries. Pest and disease are collaterally limiting chickpea production and currently we know that the chickpea will dry root rot have been very serious and limiting production and subsequently chickpea rust though it was known earlier but has been becoming very severe in its uh, influencing the crop yield reduction since for the last four to eight years in northern Karnataka and other parts of the country. You can see the chickpea rust at the initial stage and the production of the fruits in the pictures taken during the survey. So at the ASRP chickpea research station, the information on outbreak of rust was documented ever since the disease started appearing in the jurisdiction areas. For the past 
five years, the lesson to check the rest has been observed in Baldari, Kopar, Raichur, Belgam, Dharwad, Gadag, Haveri districts. And during 2021, the disease uh, it was first time recorded in Bijapur district or also known as Vijaypur district, which never had such incidents earlier recorded. So the disease during 2015-16, um, which was just sparsely in, in Bellari at 8.45%, and in Belgaum, 14.11%, and in Darwin, 9.27%, has increased over the years. It has also spread uh, very seriously. You can see this is the chickpea rust collected, uh, I mean, recorded in Bellari district. The disease has been above more than 40 to 45 in plots visited and uh, surveyed. So this is another plot of chickpea which is infested by the rust. You can see almost uh, more than 70% of the foliage is covered by chickpea rust symptoms. And these are the farmers who had been seriously affected and uh, they were entire field was affected up to 70 to 70. And you can see the at initial stage, the spores covering, I mean, eurospores covering on the foliage during the greener. Later, the entire uh, severity has re resulted in withering of the leaves with very few pores, and the crop was severely up. And uh, these are the chickpea rust recorded in Belgam, Dharwad, and Gadag district, whereby there was a, a little variation was there in on the incidence, but however, all the varieties were found in the state. Chickpea rust. So this is a rust recorded at Vijaypur district. In fact, you can see more than 60 to 65 or even 70 percent of the entire foliage was uh, covered by the chickpea spores. So this was the incidence of chickpea rust in northern Karnataka. The highest incidence uh, this year has been recorded in 87.32 uh, percent in uh, Bellari district and uh, followed by next highest was in Kopal of uh, 71.85 percent and uh, subsequently in Raichur it is 67. You can see that during 15-16 the disease was only in three districts so that is uh, in Bellari, Belgam and Dharwad. So these are all figures in terms of percentage and very incidentally this year it, the disease has been recorded in Vijaypur district at the 68.43 percentage. So if you look at the chickpea rust recorded at Raichur district this year, it has reached very high and uh, in majority of the chickpea cultivated uh, plots in Raichur, the disease incidence has been very seriously. So this was in from Haveri and Kopal district, these chickpea rust. And incidentally, the CBRT can be gazed from far away just nearby the plots. So the uh, wherever the severe infestation is there, the entire foliage turns into the dark brown or uh, black in color. Something it appears that the crop has uh, uh, burned because of some fire and uh, charcoal-like appearance you can see in the encircled picture. So this was taken in uh, bed. So during the 1718, it was noticed in all the districts, including Haveri. So the disease pressure was low except Bellari and Belgam during 1819 due to severe drought. However, the exponentially it has increased during 1920 and 2021. So incidence was recorded in all the cultivated varieties like JG11, Jackie, GBM2, BGD103, and Nigeri. And even during 1920-21, in recently released cultivars such as NBG47, NBG49, and even uh, Super and Nigeri one were all severely infested. So this in season in Vijayapur district also the severity was more than 50% and uh, at present no cultivars was uh, resistant to chickpea rust. So this is the uh, spatial and temporal variation of chickpea rust in northern Karnataka. We can see that Bijapur is the first time recorded and Bellari and Belgam were recording this disease incidents earlier. So the disease incidence uh, from the initial from Belgam and uh, I mean Bellari, later on it has spread to the Dharwad, Haveri, Gadag and Kopal district. These districts are having disease incidence. So the area here marked in Karnataka map with the circle yellow shadow, this is the area which is severely witnessing the rust in chickpea. Over the past two, three years, the disease has been increasing and even Severity level has been also increasing uh, in the last uh, two to three years, and that has been very much documented. So the incidence of chickpea for all the cultivated varieties, as I already told, all of them have shown susceptible reactions. So no disease, no, I mean, uh, chickpea variety was current situation, the night temperature has been declining. However, the, season, the entire district average uh, uh, weather I mean, district average meteorological data is there. So that needs to be very individual locations. So whether the temperature decline or increase is affecting the chickpea rust outbreak. But over and over, 
when we go to the I mean, when we go through the uh, weather data of the Raichur during 1920 uh, 2021 what it appears is the uh, severe decline in night temperature followed by increasing night temperature is uh, favoring the disease outbreak of uh, chickpea rust so it indicates that the uh, compared to the earlier weather conditions uh, the night temperature fluctuation has been wider in present years for the last 2 to 3 years this indicates that the disease has reached up to 87% in 2021 and the climate change has been influencing these uh, rust epidemics which are recorded so in all the study locations warmer temp day temperature and declining temperature night temperatures and increasing subsequently uh, during the growing season are recorded contributing to rapid multiplication and spread of the udospores however the night temperature is increasing since past 5 years and uh, the local epidemiological studies they need to be conducted so the delayed zone crop suffering very much severely so both in irrigated and conditions the disease outbreak is there so in conclusion what i would like to say is that the study the epidemiological cycle in each district is very much required and identification of the cultivars and suitable management strategies and manipulating date of sowing if we can control the disease outbreak are very much required thank you thank you very much uh, thank you dr malikarjun um, quickly we move on to dr kushwa uh, you can please share your screen and start off so that we can save some time for discussion dr gupta <laughs> so i think i am audible as well as visible to all of the participants all of absolutely. the members over there yeah absolutely fine please go ahead uh, myself for dr chanda kushwa from uh, bihari culture university sabor and uh, i am here to present uh, or speak on the this topic that analyzing influence of temperature on virulence and incidence of blight on mustard caused by alternira brassicola i am really thankful to the presenters before uh, who have spoken before as they have spoken about the interaction between biotic and herbicide stress so i will be taking uh, taking up that part and presenting our findings over here so uh, going please unmute please unmute yourself we lost connection yeah i think dr kushwa your connection seem to be unstable dr kushwa last connection yeah dr kushwa are you there sir uh, no oh. she is not there she is not there uh, yeah so um uh, if if uh, dr gupta if you can agree now you know i think we can have uh, doctor doctor uh yeah dr prakash yes sir please so i think we can have a few questions posed to our learned speakers uh if they are there i think dr karan you are there dr evilocket yes karan dr karan is there sir yeah dr yeah so if uh, you know anybody has an important question to dr kushwa uh, dr karan
Dr. Any question to Dr. Karan? Any question to Dr. Desai? Either all the key, three keynote uh, lectures are uh, <laughs> overbounced or <laughs> too clear. No, 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 no. In fact, they were really fantastic uh, mm -hmm. talks I could find. Um, and they actually very nicely analyzed the, uh, in the systems approach, uh, the different factors that are influencing uh, the, you know, the outcome of the host pathogen interactions and the management aspects as well. Um, any question to Dr. Nalla Thambi? That, that was a very interesting and important talk. Any question? Yes, to yeah, any question to Dr. Nalla Thambi? Yes, sir, I'm available. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if not, uh, any question to Dr. Mallikarjun, because another very, very good talk, Dr. Mallikarjun, I must Thank say. You, sir. Yeah, it was a real, you know, you have grasped the, you know, key part of the chickpea rust vis-a-vis uh, -vis the climate change. Yes, so sir. nice to see that. So nice to see Thank that. Thank you, sir. In fact, it has been bothering uh, both agriculture department and uh, scientists also. This year, farmers have filed complaint for compensation. <laughs> uh, we, we, we could give the scientific reason with uh, weather parameters that this is not due to seeds or any other factor. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. Uh, this is the, that we could uh, able. To I have this. a question to Dr. Kennegal. Yes, yeah, sir, yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Kennegal, um, yes, uh, when I see your uh, survey data from Ballari and all this, uh, it looks to be still in pockets. Uh, sir, earlier uh, you were rightly said, sir. Uh, so, no, 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 my point is that no, my point is that uh, these pockets, uh, it has been building up over time in these pockets. Then why? And in fact, one more thing, sir. This year, apart from Bijapur, it is reported in Chitradurga also, but I could not personally verify it. But I have received photos from the farmers where in KVK group I have received photos. Uh, it has observed in Chitradurga. Now the thing is, uh, for the Earlier, five years before, first time this disease was noticed only in Belgium, Belgium district, which is nearby the Harvard. Yeah. And uh, sporadic incidences, they used to report it in uh, our annual technical meet. But this kind of outbreak has started over the last four years only, sir. And what we could see from the weather data, the night temperature is declining very low during the month of December. And suddenly it is rising. And this is the trend what I could observe on the uh, I mean, uh, average uh, weather data of the months. But in detail, we need to deep, uh, I mean, thorough investigation. We have to find out at weekly interval data how it is changing. And obviously, like for any other rust and powdery mildew, uh, weather is going to influence uh, in development of the and also epidemic uh, buildup. And that the in-depth study we have planned this next season, sir, with uh, two, three locations already finalized. We are expecting some partner from Harvard also, because you know already this university has now bifurcated. Yeah. yeah, good. Uh, I'll just uh, interrupt the um, discussion. Very good discussion, though. Dr. Desai has put a very important question. I so think we point, have... We have point, just can I make a small... Yes, sir, please, one please, please, Dr. please, Kenal, please. Probably, I think you should focus not even weekly temperatures, focus on the diurnal yes. variations. Diurnal variations, okay. because you still have only uridial stage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't exactly. have the TDL stage yet. So yes, I think if you focus on diurnal variations with the humidity, the dew factor and all those things, probably you get better results. Thank you. So, certainly, sir. We'll focus on that parameter also. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your So advice. nice. Thank you. And we, I think, have Dr. Chanda Kushwa back in case sir, you are uh, there. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Dr. Vinod, uh, he has joined back. He, is, he was facing the net issue, internet issue like that. He has okay. joined back. Yeah, Dr. Vinod, your presentation on Lichi. If you can share your screen and go ahead. You unmute, sir. Unmute, unmute you. Ah. Unmute, please. Dr. Vinod, please unmute. Please unmute. Yeah, you are, I think, there. Yeah. yeah.
अपना प्रेजेंटेशन शेयर कर लीजिए विनोद या आई एम ट्राइंग टू शेयर प्रेजेंटेशन Vinod and I were colleagues in Groundnut. Yeah, 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 yeah. And both on aflatoxins. Doctor Vinod, any problem? Yeah, you are there. Right. Good. Please go ahead. That's it. so kindly complete in uh, hardly you know 5 minutes please please keep sir, your time sir i have to Dr. Vinod, I think uh, Dr. Prakash. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think we have to. Uh, we have uh, disturbed internet uh, services. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, affecting our uh, presentations and our uh, learned speakers, they have really faced the problem very bad. Uh, both Dr. Kushwa and Dr. Vinod. I'm sorry. Uh, I have to. Dr. Gupta ji, your kind comments, please. At this point, uh, thank you, Dr. Chidopadhyay. It was a very nice uh, session, and uh, the presentation, particularly keynote ses- uh, presentation, they were marvelous, and uh, they uh, really uh, tell us about the uh, impact of uh, climate change and how to mitigate uh, this. Uh, uh losses caused uh, due to this uh, problem as uh, this solan condition is concerned uh, we are just uh, facing the, some problem due to this uh, nematode uh, problem root node nematode is uh, emerging a major problem now due to this climate change when uh, i joined my msc in 1979 at that time there was no nematode very rare a few samples we used to get but now most of the fields in solan around they are infected with the nematode similarly is the situation with the bacterial wilt that is uh, in uh, tomato that is also appearing in a very severe form this shows that uh, there are some influence of uh, this uh, uh, climate change because what i am observing here is that since 2003 that rainfall is erratic and uh, in within a very short time that rainfall uh, take place uh, and uh, that is uh, very plenty of rainfall take place within a short time otherwise earlier it was distributed over a longer period and that was absorbed uh, into the soil and that maintains the temperature and these diseases uh, they were not that much serious so similarly in other uh, cases also just like uh, uh, dr desai uh, uh, said that uh, uh this uh, uh diurnal uh, that uh, uh, system in case of uh, that uh, uh, chickpea rust uh, that would uh, help uh, in management of this disease properly because uh, uh, the when the spores are released we have to just check it and uh, the climate particularly uh, as here in solan we are uh, just experiencing this problem in uh, euromyces uh, uh, species in uh, bean french bean and there it is uh, causing lot of uh, disease in pencil type of bean so here we studied it and uh, here we saw that uh, the spores are released uh, at different times so uh, that uh, if we control that uh, time uh, uh, that uh, 
uh, at that uh, period, if we apply some fungicide before that appearance of that or release of the spores, we can control the. And mostly, we found the EBI fungicides as well as the strobilin fungicide. They are effective for this. So I think uh, this session was very good, and uh, I am thankful to Dr. Chetopadhyay as well as uh, the society for giving the uh, this opportunity uh, to co-share this uh, co-share this session with uh, Dr. Chetopadhyay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gupta ji and uh, Dr. Prakash. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, we thank the society. And I like to really heart, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, heartily thank all the three keynote speakers and uh, the oral presenters, uh, Dr. Nalathambi, Dr. Malikarjun, and also uh, we regret uh, the, you know, the problems faced by Dr. Vinod and Dr. Chanda Kushwa. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Karen, Dr. Vilokate, and Dr. Desai, as I have already mentioned, they have holistically put forth whatever, you know, is the, actually the problem, and we need to look at things in a holistic manner, uh, particularly keeping in view the systems approach. And uh, all the three uh, speakers put together, they have brought out a nice story before us. So. Uh, along with uh, all the around 35, 40 participants in this particular session, I like to wholeheartedly thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to chair this session along with Dr. Gupta and all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, I like to close the session, Dr. Prakash. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, on behalf of uh, Indian Pathological Society, uh, I would like to thank uh, the chairpersons, Dr. Chiranjan sir and Satish Gupta sir and the reporters and the keynote uh, speakers and followed by the oral, oral presenters and all the participants for uh, successfully conducting this uh, session, very important session. So I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to one and all. Thank you very much. Thank I you. also would like to thank the IPS you because you gave us an opportunity to meet uh, people like Karen and uh, Leticia, the Treske Gupta, all these people. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank and, you, sir. and special thanks to Dr. Karen for keeping uh, through the night. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, sir. I'll, I'll yeah. close this session, sir. Thank you okay. very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.
Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now. Uh... No, but I am on the actually. I'm I'm having to join from my phone. So, can I go again there and join from the lab? Yeah. yeah. Are you uh, please try? Doctor Gogoi, can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar, Agarwal, sir. Oh, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. <laughs> sir, yeah. Again, I am back to the square one. It yeah, again please asking try. me to. <clears throat> it is again asking me to wait. The meeting host will let you in. <laughs> laptop. Some challenge. Sir, Gogoi, sir, my three o'clock meeting. Yes, yes, 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 meeting. Yes, Again, it is showing yeah. the meeting host will let you in soon. Just a minute. Just they, they are somebody sharing. Share. Huh. Do you see? Uh, okay, connecting. It may take a few minutes. Okay. I think I seem to be getting it. Okay. Kapoor sahab, you are already connected. Kapoor sahab. Yeah, yeah, coming there, sir. Just one second. If somebody has accepted me now. Yeah, yeah, I can see you from, uh, you know, quite few minutes, actually. You are seeing me on my phone. I'm ah, trying achha. to connect from my... Uh... Laptop, laptop. Yeah, well, somebody yeah, is Dr. trying... Obra, eh? Dr. Obra is trying to say here. So... I see. That's why our screen is yeah. disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, now, ah, it's, now, now it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Yeah. Actually, we are waiting for the uh, chair, um, uh, chair persons, uh, Dr. S. K. Malhotra and Dr. M. K. Naik. Yeah, M. K. Naik, 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 sir, now, sir. Doctor Malotra Sab, Namaskar. Yeah. Unmute. Ah, mute me tha. Unmute kiya. Namaskar. Sir, Namaskar. Good, good. Good to see you. Aapko dekh ke sab khush ho jate hain. My God, I think. Same, same. I reciprocate for you. I uh, reciprocate to you all. No, no. Uh, I mean it. <laughs> this is your love and affection. Doctor Sir, your face is beautiful. It looks good to everyone. I was watching here. Now, see, Agarwal Sir is here. Now, Kapoor Sir was also watching. I was listening to his voice. So, I was watching. The Star Wars are here. All of them. All of them. हम लोग तो सीखने आए हैं सर और वेलकम डॉक्टर लक्ष्मी लक्ष्मी डॉक्टर रवि डॉक्टर हरीश जी डॉक्टर अनिर्बन सो मेनी स्टालवर्स सर देयर वाइस चांसलर साहब भी हैं डॉक्टर नायक बैठे हैं इज ऑलरेडी देयर उनका पिक्चर नॉर्थ मतलब वो है ओके डॉक्टर अच्छा डॉक्टर नायक साहब भी हैं डॉक्टर � Dr. Anirban, Dr. But our scientists, I'm seeing a lot of them, and they are all there. And it's a Dr. Mr. Ashitab Sen is there. Right, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Raju Kapoor, Mr. R.D. Kapoor, and I think many of the industries, they are there. Dr. Baranwal, our own scientist fraternity is definitely there. So, I'm not taking their name. So, uh, I will request Dr. Robin Gogoi, Secretary of the Society, to initiate uh, this session. So we are proceeding to start this session. So we are almost led by 10 minutes anyway. So we'll try to uh, manage the time. 
So, good afternoon, everyone. Here, I'm very happy to see from the platform of Indian Phytopathological Society, along with our uh, this uh, president, Dr. P.K. Chakravarti. So, generally, what happened, we feel always one-sided uh, from the in industry people. We are uh, being scientists, but we don't like to live aloof. We don't like to keep ourselves uh, this away from you people. So uh, as part of the suggestion of our, this uh, Dr. P.K. Chakravarti, President Indian Patriotic Society. So the, this session has been convened very, very specially. So I welcome all of you. So without taking any uh, uh, time further. So before that, uh, just I want to brief. So in this session, first there will be uh, four speech, uh, five speech. Uh, first one will be from the uh, from R.G. Agarwal, Dhanuka, next Kasab Desmukh uh, from Bayers, then Ravi Hagre from UPL, Lakshmi Narayan Paharaju, uh, Paharaju from Eggbio, and then Dr. Pratibha Sharma, Emeritus Scientist. So, and also uh, after the uh, this uh, talk, so there will be a long panel discussion. The panel is also long list is there. So I have sent the list to all of you. I think you have gone through by now. So before handing over the platform. So just I would like to introduce the two chairpersons of this session. One is none other than Dr. S. K. Malhotra, very renowned, very dynamic, always smiling. I also see many times and many occasions. Uh, S. K. Malhotra, he is Agriculture and Horticulture Commissioner, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Sir, I welcome you. And uh, next one is our IRI alumni, Dr. Manjunath Krishnappa Nayak. He is presently Vice Chancellor, University of Agriculture and Horticulture, Horticultural Science, Siva Moga. Mm. So that I want to brief about the biodata of Dr. S.K. Malhotra. So he's having vast experience over 30 years as scientist and also techno administrator in National Agriculture Research System. And currently providing leadership in agriculture policy planning, program development, monitoring and execution of national R&D mission activities. Hey. Represented, he has represented hey. India uh, in 15 different yeah, international yeah. programs. Yeah. And so recent contributions are development yeah. of yeah. Codex Committee on Fresh Fruits yeah. and Vegetables, yeah. then FAO Codex Standards for Okra and Potato. So sir, I once again welcome you to take the chair. And next. I, mean, I, I will add uh, further when, when you allow me uh, yeah. to, to add more ad uh, with, uh, attributes to, to his uh, credentials, because I had been working uh, with him in uh, and so at that time. So now, now you go ahead, you go ahead. Next, uh, sir, Dr. M.K. Nayak, sir, I'm very happy to see you. If not physical, at least yeah, yeah. you are able to see. So I am welcoming to IRI. Yeah, I'm, I'm, able, I'm able to listen to you. Yeah. I'm able to listen to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. No nice. problem. Uh, Dr. Go ahead, M. go ahead. Nayak, Dr. M. K. Nayak has made significant contributions in identification of fluorescent strains of pseudomonas then processing this uh, antibiotic genes. And he has demonstrated the potential of PZPR strains as critical inputs on over 18,000 hectares in farmer's field. And so he has identified structural and functional genes for biosynthesis of aflatoxin. Another important thing is that he has released rice varieties KPR1, which is moderately resistant to blast and tolerant to stem borer. And he has contributed for the development of one novel ICT-based expert system for real-time diagnosis, which has been adopted in more than one lakh hectare in 24 different crops in the state of Karnataka. Sir, I want to welcome you. And since you are an IRA alumni, I think you will be feeling homecoming here virtually. So Absolutely, now, welcome. Yeah. Now I would yeah, like to you. hand over the platform to uh, the Dr. Malhotra and Dr. M. K. Nayak. Sir. Okay. Right. Thank you. Well, well. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Gogoi. I'm really very happy to be here uh, with you all on this occasion of National 
ई कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन प्लांट हेल्थ एंड फूड सिक्योरिटी चैलेंजेस एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज यस इट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन विच यू हैव अलॉटेड टू मी वेयर यू हैव गिवन मी चांस टू चेयर दिस आई रिमेंबर वेन यस्टरडे इवनिंग डॉक्टर पी के चक्रवर्ती uh he called me and uh, he asked me to uh, agree to for, for chairing this session and then i was also happy to know that dr naik will also be there with us uh, he is honorable vice chancellor of uh, our agriculture university so uh, uh, it's a really a good occasion where uh, i'll get a chance to uh, discuss with the industry and uh, take their views because now this is a high time uh, when uh, government of india is also now thinking on many aspects to bring improvement and further uh, ensuring the food security as well as food safety in the country and everybody knows that dr chakravarti his contributions are also immense as a, as a president of uh, this uh, indian phytopathological society uh, uh, he has a uh, he has provided leadership in uh, giving a very good shape uh, to this society as well as i should say uh, taking forward Uh, the agenda of uh, uh, of uh, uh, plant pathology in the country to ensure uh, many uh, aspects related to this uh, 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 plant protection uh, uh, measures which which we are adopting so there are several uh, national issues where uh, time and again we have discussed and last year we celebrated the year 2020 we celebrated as international year for plant health and and during that uh, year uh, we also attended several celebrations and several international and national seminars we got uh, a kind of feel that now what kind of scenario is emerging worldwide and further what kind of changes are needed and where uh, our country india needs to further pitch in so there there are several areas but anyway i could see that uh, today's um, uh, uh, panel discussion that has its a focus on issues and concerns regarding use and registration of agrochemicals and uh, bio pesticides in india right. i know that we have a brilliant uh, i should say industry which is available with us and their input is always useful for us because we have a regulatory system in the country uh, that insecticide act and uh, 1968 uh, and and last year last to last year we completed about 50 years and then it was felt that we have already completed 50 yeah. years but when this act was brought oh, yeah. at that time our requirements were all together yeah. different and now we have uh, just uh, half a decade we have completed and our requirements are different and we need to further fine tune our program and our system so that we can ensure the food security as well as uh, nutritional security and safe food which should be made available to, to our uh, countrymen uh well friends without taking much time uh, 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 i'll 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 just take permission from the co chair uh, honorable vice chancellor dr naik also to me if you like to speak for one or two minutes before uh, means just uh, i'm setting the tone or i i give give this uh, uh, platform to Na. the co chairman and then further inviting uh, our panelists uh, for this purpose so uh, dr naik would you like yes. to say something or would yes. you like to give your views later on Yeah, yeah, no problem. Are you able to listen? Yes. Yeah, I think um, it's a wonderful session, especially stakeholders meet on plant protection issues. I'm also very glad that um, Dr. Malhotra is chairing, and also there are a very good number of uh, panelists. I could see in the list uh, from Crop Life and uh, Adama and uh, FMC. from pi industries amco gsp bs so many yeah some kind of some kind of interruption is there i think we could not hear you dr naik captains of internal listed hello dr robin asked others to are you able to listen mute or host may mute yeah now it's okay now it's audible hello yeah we request to all other all other participants to kindly mute your microphone otherwise echo sound will come and uh, we will not be in a position to uh, uh, means listen others kindly right. microphone 
and i am also muting the microphone hello yeah dr naik please continue we can yeah, hear yeah. dr naik yeah yeah i'll go ahead i think um, in the post uh, covid pandemic uh, there are plenty of issues under crop protection probably we know that um, as usual in agriculture although we faced a lot of problem of disruption of uh, supply chain of inputs particularly plant protection products whether it is a plant protection chemicals or biocontrol agents plant growth promoting rhizobacteria even uh, training and certification of sprayer operators those were also problems and implementation of plant health regulation that was also equally tough during the covid era and uh, availability of pest controllers was also a problem definitely i think um, this particular session will throw a light upon all these issues particular regarding registration of uh, pesticide molecules as well as bio agents and there is a need for crop specific advisory particularly in respect of having a digital management of data and on derived plant, plant health monitoring programs electronic identification and plant disease outbreak similarly regulation framework and their environmental impact i think uh, we, we, in the era of uh, covid it has become virtually to go for e clinics or what we call as uh, you know diagnosis at the using uh, smartphones they are the main contributing factors to support the by directional flow of information both for the farming community as well as the resource person okay well thank you so much dr naik now what I'll, yeah now now uh, 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 we are having a long list of the protecting cropping we will look uh, words and then we can conclude at the end okay well thank you so much dr naik sir thank you so yeah. much thank you so much yeah. good yes. remarks setting the tone now so tone has been set let me give a start to yeah. this panel discussion i could see a long list of uh, panelists which are available with us i'll just request one by one yeah to... sir sir, sir, sir. May, may i sir may i may i may i interrupt dr malhotra actually uh, uh, some of the speakers who uh, who had been invited let, let us finish those uh, those uh, yeah. talks uh, small talks but then there will be restricted to 10 minutes each i think dr gogoi yes, and yes. Uh, and then uh, yeah. there are four, four four or five talks which are there in the list you have seen so we will finish them and let them go four are only there well, well, well. Uh, so dr uh, dr chakravarti sahab my request is to you my request sir. to you for further for passing on uh, some kind of uh, a message to our uh, i mean speakers that they should stick to the five minutes i could see that 17 well, to 20 well, people well, are there well. so it will save our time and no, let no. us be focused let us be focused and uh, to the point many will be repetitive those points should be avoided repetition should be not definitely sir sir that definitely. panel panel will be separately uh, dealt initially okay. we have only 10 minutes talk for each of the four speakers that is okay. specific topic so and fine first, fine fine the fine. panel discussion as you suggested we will not go more than 5 minutes and uh, the matter should not be repeated uh, yeah. so those things. so okay sir so we well, more yes the please okay. yes yes we may continue please uh, dr chakravarti now kindly okay uh, uh, because you have received some requests from the speakers accordingly you may invite the speakers um, request because they want to leave early yeah thank you so much sir uh, for allowing and uh, in fact um dr malhotra has been um uh, introduced but nobody uh, needs his uh, um uh, that kind of introduction that to that extent because because he is already known and uh, i know dr malhotra specially because i know him as a colleague when he was a ad horticulture and he is now presently agriculture and horticulture commission uh, commissioner now for uh, last 5 years he has been doing and he, because of his extremely good work government of india has considered to uh, for him to act as a horticulture commissioner also he has uh, uh, his contribution of horticulture science has developed 16 high yielding varieties i think he has been, he has developed several high yielding 
इंटरनेशनल वर्ल्ड and i think dr malhotra with your interventions and so many proactive stands we are now this year we have reached 297 second estimate shows 297 million tons of food grains and another about 320 million um, tons of horticultural crops and you have also worked on national um, food security mission on oil seed and oil palm mission for integrated development of horticulture national b mission national saffron mission and published more than 250 research papers so this is books chapters including his uh, uh, his outstanding awards and uh, 24 international programs he has led and very safely an international year of i i knew that he um, he has also uh, i think initiated united to uh, declare uh, one of the years as, uh, as international year of the millets as, uh, as a chairman of cibrc he has been providing uh, extreme good leadership in pesticide re re uh, regulation in the country for last four years taking very active uh, stand and very effective uh, kind of decisions similarly dr nayak we all scientific uh, fraternity we know even dr baba malhotra is a scientist he he has been a um, proponent sir we have made a balance of the two means bio pesticide he is the bio stimulant man and you have most recently Uh, published that um, uh, accepted that gadget notification which has come on 23rd september uh, 23rd of february of this year and uh, um, dr uh, mk naik has adequately been told and we all know in the scientific fraternity giving a very good leadership as a vice chancellor and uh, he is a man of bio stimulant so he will have some other questions also so with that uh, small um, introduction um, let let us go and begin with the uh with the first uh, session of this uh, of this session um i will uh, request dr agarwal always a proactive man and he is a kind of uh, uh, means uh, he does not think of his own uh, he he thinks for the entire plant protection fraternity and also for the farmers and uh, he is the group chairman of dhanuka agri tech limited for, uh, so he is in gurgaon and uh, we have requested him uh, to talk on transfer of new pesticide technology so this is and since he had a limited time so he we would request that you restrict sir to 10 minutes uh, so that we can take a pragmatic view and rational understanding of the thing agarwal dr agarwal please good afternoon sir thank you very much dr chakravarti sir thank you section dr malhotra dr nayak dr chakravarti dr gogai galaxy of scientists ladies and gentlemen i am thankful to dr chakravarti to organize this interaction between industry and scientist internationally every university is associated with some industry but in our country unfortunately distance was maintained by industry and university yeah. our scientists has done lot of work lot of research but unfortunately that research could not be transferred the consumers or to the farmers so you scientists has done so much labor you have done so much research but if that technology reaching to farmers then your efforts are to be honest are not properly utilized before i start my talk i like to remind young people may not be remembering in 1942 the bengal famine yeah. millions of millions people died 
due to leaf disease on paddy as there was no solution at all there are other famine in the world also but i don't want to refer all i'll restrict to india so new technology can play wonders in our overall plant protection and the this pathological society which has kept this program i congratulate and i came to know that there dr chaturvedi has worked day and night and releasing a book also uh. so new technology is very very important dr malhotra was talking about pmb 2020 which is presented to rajya sabha but it was drafted before covid and after covid everything has changed i am thankful to dr malhotra that we were having three days meeting for reforms in our registration system and i am thankful to all the ministry of agriculture officials they spared three days we sat three days in the outside ministry in india habitat center and discussed a number of issues were accepted by them on the spot and a new concept of 3d was introduced discuss decide and deliver i think it was the first time in ministry of agriculture time bound program of registration system in our country hardly 290 pesticides are registered we have deprived our farmers from new are clear here now us and china is having around 1000 products registered with them and why so many less products are registered number one is our registration system our act say 93 registration should be granted within one year but it takes and maximum can be extended by 6 months but there are files which are not cleared even 5 7 years how new technology will now namo nodal chinta new technology will come and foreign investment will come if we make laws eco friendly international friendly we are talking ease of doing business and it's a matter of pride for our country that our country is number in internationally has improved from 161 to 64 but in agriculture still there are lot of problems which even dr naik was talking about availability of the agri inputs and agri inputs or biostimulants are available but the question is of quality i think dr naik is from karnataka yes karnataka government commissioner and director collected 250 samples of biostimulants and all of them were found laced with chemical pesticides and even one pesticide i netin param which is not uh. our country registered that is also reported which i shared with dr malhotra okay our country farmers are facing a problem of quality inputs maybe pesticide fertilizer or seeds or any input and there is a parallel industry of spurious duplicate and uh. ill business and how much millions crores and crores thousand crore rupees is each state government and central government is losing as revenue and our farmers are not getting the quality pesticides drones technology why as internationally pesticide spray is done by drones why in our country so far this policy is not approved that we also use the latest technology so my topic is new technology so i will come about the same in apples we have this scab problem and in fungicide the major problem is some of the fungicide develop resistance very fast more i am a commercial guy but you scientist people will be knowing much more than me so we have introduced a new fungicide with japanese technology konica it's a bactericide come fungicides 
and gives very good control. Leaf and neck blood. Bacterial leaf spot of grapes and bacterial blight of pomegranate. Through in house trials, conic has also been found effective for the control of coca bone disease on sugar cane, which has come on recently introduced two thirty eight by Dr. Bakshi Sharma of Coimbatore. So, new technology can do wonders. Another example I like to give for a weed site sample. There was a weed known as Cypress Rotundens. In Hindi we call it Motha, and there was no control. And farmers will talking it's a head of Ravan. Whatever you cut, it multiplies. So we have introduced this again sample from Japan, as we are working with six Japanese companies and bringing new technology to India. it controls the cypress rotundens from its nuts and rhizomes and that way in sugar cane and maize farmer yield and income has increased by 15 20% because of the fertilizer and the moisture which was taken by wheat that was available to that is the region of increase in the yield so small small technology seed treatment we launched in 2000 beta vax for seed treatment and in 2007 with government of india we launched a seed treatment 100% seed treatment campaign throughout the country and in groundnut and many crops see with a very small amount of chemical 2 g per kilo seed wonders wonders i was seeing in the pen Speakers list: Rajukta Sola Nai disease. It is we have introduced a chemical validamycin from Japan in the name of Heat Mark, which is a very good for this Rajukta Sola Nai. Even in groundnut vita vax treatment also controls Rajukta Sola Nai. Last year we introduced two new fungicides, first time in the country. Kerari, Amisalburam, again from Nissan Chemical, and for grapes. In grapes, we know how many sprays are done and how fast resistance is developed for the control of downy mildew of grape and late blight of potato and tomato. Another new fungicide was launched, Nisodium. A new fungicide introduced in technical collaboration with Nippon Soda. company limited of japan which control powdery mildew in grapes chili and black ground so question is why i am talking new technology my point my topic is new technology my time is also showing over apart from this lusha a new technology again with you which is for is earlier i said conica wrong leaf for scab but it is lusher which is for scab for alternaria blotek and premature leaf fall in apple we have a bactericide casugamycin so we have range of products around 90 products we have and as dr melotra was introducing i am a retired person 7 to 2 years old but is still my interest how we can our help our farmers our gdp from agriculture is one third while our agriculture land is more, more our rainfall is more than china only two things number one technology is not reaching to our farmers and quality agri inputs are not reaching if two things are made available to our farmers and of course market government has passed three laws so you see if three times our agriculture gdp improves where our overall economy will be thank you very much thank you all the participants and especially dr chakravarti and chair of the session dr malhotra and dr thank you, thank you so much thank you so much dr agrawal mr agrawal sahab i know you are always uh, keen to uh, throw light on the issues related to
production and I always uh, you are keen to have uh, welfare of the farmers you always think about this you have mentioned several points related to apple sugarcane then pesticides particularly for uh, cypress rotundus as well as seed treatment also you mentioned and you gave a clear message that yes you know now now this is the time where science and technology uh, is really needed and we need to come with new technology thank you so much for your good points so now the next uh, uh, panelist can, can, can i have a point dr mehrotra oh welcome you dr krishna <laughs> sir i'm really happy to see you after a long time my my colleague my old colleague we we uh, we work together yes and yes, yes. <laughs> I, you you can forget i cannot <laughs> i have never <laughs> anyway anyway okay, please, so please i have me. i have couple of points there are uh, uh, two, two three points uh, which is uh, relevant uh, that uh, agrawal sahab has uh, rightly said that, that there is parallel um, uh, companies which are having uh, spurious uh, um, um, pesticide and for that uh, actually the, the lot of uh, uh, problem is there and uh, to, uh, yesterday i went to cish and thrips problem was there and nothing was effective against that so the people are thinking that this is a big, a big problem and perhaps this mango belt entire bank will, uh, belt will be um, affected badly by this uh, spurious fungicide or insecticides so what is your how how to tackle it it is uh, you are in the uh, uh, policy yeah, you should uh, take care of this uh, and uh, i i have uh, this request to Uh, agrawal ji also that he should suggest something which is, which can actually restrict all these uh, things dr sir can you repeat repeat what is the disease in mango which area nahi thrips problem thrips problem is uh, not the disease acha dekhi main main aapka main aapki baat ka main reply deta hu main agrawal ji ke liye bahut acha product hai dr sir hamare paas largo guaranteed control jis area mein chahenge wo demonstration lagayenge aap aap ke paas project ka baat nahi hai ya cheez ye hai main baat karta hu main batata hu aapki aapki baat ka agrawal sahab ki taraf se main reply deta hu dekhiye ye jo jo aap bata rahe ho ek to baat aa jati hai spurious pesticide ki okay this is one point one point another is due to due due to such circumstances sometimes what happens resurgence also happens in the past also you might have seen the case of white fly jessets then mm. thrips now you are also speaking about so some mm. kind of development of the resistance also there are several factors with, which are involved for uh, resurgence and uh, then resistance issue so yesterday i organized this registration committee was organized and i have constituted one committee that we need to have a kind of protocol for the case to case basis and on the basis of that protocol we need to further decide that how this issue could be resolved so already uh, this committee has been constituted under the chairmanship of adg dr dubey so so they will come out with a kind of recommendations so this is one point but we need to scientifically analyze that why such such kind of situations are coming up so we need to accordingly take up the uh, take up those issue i think in the further discussions also we will we will discuss this matter and uh, we will take up uh, we will take the comments uh, 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 and 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 further we will give chance to uh, uh, other uh, other speakers also but anyway you you have posed the question at a very right time uh, mm. really we need to think upon this so i request to the research sector also my colleagues uh, many of our colleagues are sitting here they need to further analyze the situation our crop based research institutions are available they need to analyze the situation and they need to guide guide us that how we can resolve such problems of resurgence as well as resistance spurious is a issue again it is a policy matter where we have discussed with the industry and again, again we are going to discuss with the states also ultimately uh, the registration committee gives the uh, registration and further license is given by the states so this issue primarily uh, uh, lies between the states and the central government and we need to resolve through some policy uh, decisions definitely will do that some qr code labeling etc etc these are the things which are now being discussed and further some kind of advisories because advisories are very important dr chakravarti he is available with us i know uh, during very this very uh, yeah so so 
Dr. Chakravarti is also here. Just I want to say that uh, nowadays what is happening that uh, the testing of fungicide is taking back seat because of molecular characterization and fancy technologies. These <laughs> yeah. researches are now taken in a back seat and we don't have the correct Dr. answers sometimes for the replacement of fungicides. Dr. Mishra, we, we, we have uh, answers to those questions uh, under the chairmanship of Dr. Malhotra and we, we may have this, you may give these questions, so we'll listen so that the, the session should not be delayed. I yes, have sir, one, sir, quick, right. one, definitely it's a very important concern. Yeah. One, yes. uh, Dr. A quick point, sir. We, one point I want to say, the, to stop injudicious use of pesticides by labeling uh, the labels with the FRAC group or IRAC group so that farmers do not repeat that because the same mode of action uh, is is governed by a number say one two three four so there are uh, there, there is a company which makes uh, the same uh, chemical uh, but the name trade name is different so we should not repeat the same chemical by identifying the FRAC number on the label so so that there should not be repeated use of the same pesticide second we have means to, that is, you will be able to very well tell, Dr. Malota sir, we, we do not have many of the, uh, the effective molecules for sucking pests. But then there has to be stewardship, proper stewardship for using those molecules because they, after all, they have been registered by you. Having scrutinized all, the, they, they, have, they were effective when they were used. So sometimes mm -hmm. we don't use. And the second point is, the means to check those spurious pesticides, we have to be in the pesticide management will. We have to be very serious about checking and penalizing those who are using spurious. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Sir, and then, then, then the next, you have already given me um, this, this um, uh, responsibility. Let me uh, ask the second person because we have to finish this session within one, year, one hour, one hour. And very important um, uh, topics are there. Dr. Keshav Deshmukh. Um, he is uh, from Bayer Crop Science Limited. And in fact, uh, let me tell you, sir, within our public system, our research system, we have not formed so far a smart formulation of biopesticide. We have requested him to bring in it or give a topic because I know while as ADG, they came forward to import some formulations which initially Government of India denied. Uh, and uh, But then... He showed why we should not deny that that kind of formulation, how it is smart. Because it does not clash with MEA's interest. It does not clash with the uh, country's biodiversity interest or resistance issues. So I will request Dr. Keshav Deshmukh uh, to give his uh, talk on innovations for better farming. Okay, well, well, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope Dr. Keshav uh, will be in a position to uh, give his clear message in the in the five minutes time and then we will leave another five minutes for further discussion if anybody wants to have some questions. Okay, please, Dr. Keshav, please. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please. I will just uh, share my screen. You just uh, one moment. I'm just sharing. Dr. Keshav, are you, are you connected? Yeah, I am connected. Achha, you are screening, uh, sharing screen. Yeah. So, my screen yeah. is visible? Yes, yes. Very well. Yeah. Come to slide form. Sorry, yeah. doctor. Okay. So, good. once again, good afternoon to everyone. On the one screen, you know, and today, this is Kishu from a buyer and working as an agronomic solution manager and disease management part for uh, IBSL in Bangladesh. And, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Keshav, I think your uh, distorted noise is coming. Kindly, kindly check your system and see that uh, what has happened. And, and my voice is not clear. Yeah, not clear. Can, can uh, turn off our video screen uh, and uh, so and mute uh, ourselves. Then I think uh, they will get a broader band.
Dr. Keshav, uh, can you hear? Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So now, now am I audible here? Yes, sir. Yes, you are audible. Then I will start uh, with the global trends in agri agriculture. So, you have seen that uh, the population growth is increasing day by day. So, earlier population was 7 billion and now it has gone up to 2050. The population will go up to 10 billion. Then if you see the changing consumption pattern. Uh, the pattern has changed and uh, now it is the high protein because of the western style diet in Asia. So Next high protein problem. will be there. then third one is hunger. One or one in eight goes hungry today. Then the insufficient storage. Sometimes we find food is lost due to limits in storage options. Example the warehouses, old storage facilities and other infrastructure. So up to 40% of fruits and vegetable loss is there in India. Then hectares of farm land per capita at the same time area uh, arable land worldwide is limited and per capita area is uh, shrinking then if you come to the weather fluctuation we know that in the current year and the last year it was not good for the farmers in many regions farmer face the challenges of increasing weather volatility so it has affected the harvest and the yield. And if you see the global food production to meet the growing demand, we must find ways to sustainably increase agriculture productivity. So Dr. For, Keshav, Dr. This, Keshav, I, I know you are having a wide experience in the area, but we'll be very happy if you can tell us the issue, issues because we are more keen to learn from you what kind of issues are uh, issues are emerging and how we can resolve them and uh, uh, based on your experience uh, mm. yeah we uh, doctor there are uh, there are upcoming slides where i will uh, show you the uh, issues what we are seeing but uh, from buyer what is our purpose is that uh, health for all and hunger for none that is our main purpose science for a better life if you want, I can speed it up and I can show you what is the uh, strategy of uh, crop science. What is our mission? Our mission is for the innovation, digital farming and sustainability. Uh, we have set the high standard challenges and surpassed consistently from for buyer. 150 years from the crop protection, we are performing a science for a better life. And we have completed near over 100 years in the buyer seed growth. Coming to the point, what innovation requirement for the sustainability and significant investment is that buyer is a research company and uh, for research to de for the development of the product and from the development to the regulatory approvals and commercial commercialization, it takes a long, near about 10 years. So in the research, we go do studies of the chemistry, biology, then biochemistry and other disciplines. So it takes near about two to three years for the research. And after the product is formed, then we go for the development activities like the field trials and user safety, then environmental safety, then the formulations and the process development. So again, it takes near, near about four to five years. So all put together for the development of the product, it takes a huge time and buyer not only on the fungi side but in all the insects and herbicide i spend a lot and you can just imagine the regulatory approvals when it takes two to three years and then the product is being launched in the market but sometimes it too happens because of the product safety guidelines there may be a problem in the regulatory approvals due to the uh, product. So the product has to be deployed from the market and the company has invested a lot on this. This is a small, uh, you can say, a tradition of buyer that how many 
products are there you can see here the herbicides up to 220 20 11 and uh, 20 20 one you can see the herbicides the insecticide and the fungicides so all put together there are n number of products 57 new agents what the bio has evolved uh, and the new innovations to the global and the Indian market. If you talk about the fungicide portfolio, uh, we know that uh, we have products in hand, Elliot, Andragol, Polycure, Infinito, the upcoming Luna Experience, Melody, Latio, Profiler, and Sectin. So now in Teddy, Andragol, Natio is a very big gun, then Follicle, which is Tiponazole. Whereas in horticulture crops, Elliot is a very good brand, uh, uh, followed by Profiler and Sectin for the uh, disease control in grapes and uh, vegetables like cucumber weeds, and all that. Dr. And, uh, Keshav, Dr. Yeah. Keshav, everybody hmm. knows about your products. Come to the main point. Because we are more keen to learn from you the issues. Dr. Keshav, I, I requested for smart formulation, bio formulation, which you have. Your, your, your products are fabulous. Everybody knows. But you, you tell us what are the issues because this the theme area of today's discussion is, uh, if, if you remember, it's, a, it's a related to issues and concerns regarding use and registration of agrochemicals. And so, sir, that, sir, I will correct Dr. Manotra. That is a panel uh, discussion, the, but we have requested him for giving an overview of his biosmart formula, okay. bio formulation. Okay. Bio formulation. Well, so, well, well. So, so if Dr. Kesh, uh, Keshav, if you can directly come on to that formulation where you have formulated express gene product into the culture, uh, which is a cell-free culture filtrate, which is what I wanted from Dr. Manoj, Mr. Manoj Lingeri, which I discussed. If you have that one, that will be very good. Because otherwise, chemical pesticides, we know Bayer has a very good strength in that, and they have, you have been serving a cause. So if you have biostimulant, uh, that um, biopesticides, smart bioformulation, something to speak about, please. Yeah, yeah, this is the one which we wanted. Uh, yeah. So, as you have seen that we have the chemical compounds very strong and uh, if you talk about the pyrenoid bio compounds, so we have one of the products which is Bacillus subtilis. So, this is a serenade and the suspension concentrate uh, containing 1015 gram per liter. So, this is the Bacillus strain and uh, serenade is very uh, popular brand in the global and the other countries in and in Europe. What we are finding the hurdle in launching this product in India. So due to the regulatory hurdles, we are unable to import or register this formulation in India. What we are willing from buyer to partner with ICR to address any specific concern to its efficacy or safety. And if Possible if you facilitate us to import a register of this molecule uh, formulation, a new innovation in India. So we need a support from you from ICR to import or do further studies in India. So this is only one uh, concern about the biofungicide. Bio And uh, we have a good collaboration with all the uh, institute, uh, as we rightly said that uh, NRCG, we are having a tie up with uh, some of the chemistries for the baseline studies, then NRCP for pomegranate, there are some food products like CICR, Nagpur, and then some projects with CPRI. We have done a good interaction with the colleagues in CPRI. It's good that we got uh, from the AICRP on nematode. So Dr. Sharma was pointing out regarding the nematode. So we have launched very good uh, molecule, LM, and uh, it's nice that there was a good support from the uh, 
then uh, yes, it be that we got a fast type digestion of villain. That was a very very big problem of the farmers in India. If you talk about the digital technology, so in the precision agriculture, uh, we have IoT devices. Uh, majorly, where we can have a uh, weather drip uh, station, then uh, digital sticky trap, then digital pyramid trap, then the smart sprayers, which is uh, good that uh, monitoring the spray volume, water volume, how much it is being delivered, then area covered, then the speed of operators, how the speed is there, it can be calibrated, then the quality. Of the spray application, then uh, the smart spray the best, uh, annotation models. There are if you take a image and uh, just click a photo, then we, we we can count it with the help of the software. And in the application technology, we have unmanned aerial uh, UAV and. Uh, uh, the new UGV with the robots where we will unman aerial vehicle. So there, which are have the food system solution. And ultra low volume technology benefits. So as we were discussing on the fungicide, go for an aerial application of the fungicide. So it is very easy. Go it uh, aerial so that will be a uh, part of the human safety first and the second reduction of the water the reduction so the water volume required is minimum 200 liters per hectare where the aerial application you can go with zero to yes mr kesha your your noise is not clear we could not make out what you are speaking so, so, so kindly, kindly, kindly check the system. I think some problem is there. Okay. Well, well. Okay then. Thank anyway, you. anyway, we got the Thank message you. from you. Let us, let us have, let us have some questions if anybody has in his mind. So please, quick questions to him. Yeah. Sir, I, 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 I have one point. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, if you kindly allow me, Doctor Keshav, you can close, uh, close your. Uh, this uh, share, screen share, um, so that uh, uh, we are on the forefront. Um, uh, Dr. Malhotra, what I would like to say, Dr. Keshav has said that uh, government did not allow them to bring in the, in the formulation. I thought, there, because looking into the smartness of your formulation, we already have uh, imported DIPAL Government of India earlier have registered DIPAL, which is a viral preparation, and many other viral products which are being imported. Now, why uh, you, this this product also can be brought like that, now giving that those kind of uh, examples. Similar, uh, similarly, you should have an uh, you should not have any issue if cell-free formulation is brought into the country, or government of India should not have any problem if uh, cell-free uh, culture formulation is brought in the country and for that i remember i had suggested to promote make in india as per government policy uh, if the product is uh, used in 40 countries um, but not in india then we will not have any problem if you establish a formulation in the country if you bring the stain because already our nba im and other institutes said that the bacillus species which you are using is is harmless to the uh, to the environment and is already ex ex existing in the country. But the stain may be a, an, a very unique one, which is giving a very good biological control. So we did not, if you bring that kind of stain, we don't have any objection. But while the formulations were being uh, invited, we had some objections. So when you are going to in, import bulk formulation instead of that, why don't you make a um, film kind of thing here? Uh, like formulation can be done in the in the country. So that is what we had said. We did not have much objection on to uh, Dr. Malhotra. I, I would like to say that yeah, correct, IPR, correct. IPR comments, oh. we did not make much of the, uh, the fuss on that when we saw that it was a 
it was a smart formulation well well, well. yeah yeah thank you so much i remember uh, uh, dr chakravarti when uh, when we conducted several meetings during discussions right. of our meetings two points emerged out in the past if you remember one was if we have to import any of the uh, microbial from outside the country we need to follow the law of national biodiversity authority you remember i think this this was the decision because we need to abide the abide by the country law so that is one point another is we don't have any objection if if they get some kind of clearance from my nbd uh, we will be very happy to consider sir, sir i'll just uh, interrupt you uh, for importing we do not have much need requirement from nba for export it is required for importing we need that it should not be a gm that kind of it should not be gm yeah that is the required the declaration should be there some kind yeah. of uh, right. i mean and affidavit they should NBA bring in and nva yeah. does not stop it from importing any organism if well, our is public institution does not have any you are organism. right you are right you are right so now the second product relates to self if you are mentioning self reformulation you know that it comes in the category of biostimulant and And, and already some kind of committee has been constituted, and uh, such ca- such cases will be considered. We have given six months time because already uh, industry is making business. Several products are now being traded in the country. So let them do the business. We don't have any objection. But now, now since a decision has been taken in the country, we need to further generate the data, and they need to submit the dossier. And uh, here, Central Biostimulant Committee will consider such cases. so a, a time frame has already been decided but now i am i have already given a time so we are going to discuss and uh, we we are going to organize a committee meeting of the central biostimulant committee which we, we will be organized and we will set our agenda we will set our further action that how we need to further move ahead in in uh, uh, doing all such kind of things so i i could see uh, mr raju kapoor is raising the hand Sir. so we can Thank just ask sir. him for his quick question yes uh, for the quick question sir, one, 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 uh, dr raju just a minute uh, for uh, dr malhotra's point sir i would like to say that you yourself have said that if somebody uses a self free culture filtrate and if that is used for sidel property means for killing a pest then it will not be a biostimulant then it will be biopesticide but so that's what yes. I, I, oh, oh, sorry sorry i could not make out yes if it if it is possessing insecticidal properties then they will have to undergo insecticide act so right. they covered in the insecticides yes, yes, yes so and anyway i was not i was not aware yeah you are right you are right yes so no. my my, my limited point it. here is uh, there's a vast there is a uh, vast wealth of smart formulations Madam available Madam as a, as Madam a company, uh, uh, mr bridge obra if you can just uh, mute your thank you Uh, so uh, there are vast uh, range of uh, such smart uh, bio formulations available so uh, thank you so much for clarifying that you have no objections to them registering so we will be uh, so that does that mean that we can submit because right now cib is not accepting those uh, applications at all so if if uh, it is clarified that they can be submitted we would be more than happy to submit all such applications well yeah i did your point i'll just 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 I'll, i'll i'll just seek another clarification definitely if some some good microbials are there let us see that what our guideline says so let me further confirm it though dr chakravarti has made it clear that when we have to uh, uh, export then we need to look into but if we have to import uh, then our guideline permits let let me confirm it though otherwise our our, our guidelines if they are permitting i'll be very happy to consider such cases yes so they they actually uh, uh, nba it has got nothing to do with nba because this is no local resource getting exported out or or being researched so that's one okay. number two is uh, that we are we are only getting it in here uh, the second stage which dr chakravarti said industry would be more than willing to look at a possible uh, reformulation in the country but you know initially you have to get the product in the country get it registered test it out find the potential and then go in for a, a manufacture here dr raju so could, this is always allowed by cibrc for 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 test and trial no, it sir. is allowed no sir no sir so uh, why we have been doing sir uh, dr malhotra will be knowing he is the chairman and he has he has allowed 
I, I don't think uh, for testing you, you need to have any problem. Well, uh, I, no, I, I I'm talking about registering. Since, I will do a regulatory trials here in the country for, for getting a registration. Now, uh, that's one. Number two is I would like to, once register, I would like to introduce the product in the country. That's a rational demand. That's a rational demand. So far, yeah. you write that it's not for commercial use, it's for testing and trial. Then definitely, uh, Dr. Uh, Chairman Shab will not have any objection, I believe. Uh, should, should but I'm talking any... of phase two, Dr. Shab. I'm talking of phase two, which is okay. after I get okay. the data generation done. And so thank you so much, uh, Malhotra Shab, for, uh, for, for promising to look into this and uh, uh, get it clarified from the, uh, from the system. Uh, we would be more than happy to bring in large number of new formulations and they would be very unique formulations for the country and they would actually go on to support the IPM. And to qualify for biostimulant, they should be, uh, if it is for pest management, then it has to do that kind, of, that, that kind of management by increasing or inducing inherent tolerance of a plant, physiological process. Some, some, some microbes, they increase the physiological tolerance of the plant to withstand the onslaught of those kind of pests and pathogens. So they will be uh, considered as a biostimulant. But if it kills that, Agreed. Agreed. So then it will be biopesticide. Agreed, agreed, sir. Absolutely okay. agreed. Yeah. Okay, sir. And, then... Uh, uh, well, then. so uh, Raju, uh, Raju Kapoor, sir, your, your point, I think it's well taken. Uh, we will see that how we can help you. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank we'll you so much. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Sir. So, so, thank you very much for your support. And then, uh, have a discussion. Uh, Kesha, your, your network is poor. Your voice is not coming clear. Yes, sorry. Okay, then we will come back to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, sir, can uh, put it, you can put it in the chat if you, if you can't speak. Okay, okay. With your permission of the chairs, uh, sir, I would invite third um, uh, speaker of the day, Dr. Lakshmi Narayan Praharaju. Uh, he is an entrepreneur and uh, uh, he is a very good uh, friend of mine. And uh, he is a biopesticide maker. We don't call it biopesticide, but it's a, a microbial herbicide. He has recently uh, specialized and he, he got, I think, patent in 21 countries. And uh, I think... Um, six, uh, he, he filed that and he has a BIRAC program with the DBT also and he is the first one in the country to commercialize um, in a, uh, to come to a commercial scale, for, for, um, scale to produce micro herbicides which kills um, uh, very three very important uh, herbs uh, water, water hyacinth and uh, then congress grass and, and uh, another um, which he himself will sell so with a great with a request, I, I requested him to give a presentation. He cancelled his international meeting today, and uh, we are very grateful, sir, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Narayan. And sir, uh, it is up to you, sir. It is off to you, sir. Now, Dr. Manotra, sir, and Dr. Naik. Sir. Yes, Dr. Lakshmi, please. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, to save time, I wouldn't go for uh, facilitation of everybody. Uh, I would like to share my screen for a presentation, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Very much. Very much audible. Please. <clears throat> sir, I, there was a little confusion. I mean, I thought maybe it, it need to be on the impact of the COVID-19 and Indian agriculture. Maybe a few uh, slides, maybe I'll roll it fast. Then we will understand it more easier, sir. Maybe this will help on the next session where we are going to be discussing on the panel also. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we, we are a company called AG Biosystems. We are established about 25 years back. We have ISO 9001, 2015, and also a GMP certification. We are recognized uh, R&D by DSIR, and we are uh, working on basically our living is from uh, sales of pheromones and which we put it back into uh, research and rather 66% of our uh, uh, sale revenue we are putting back into research. Sir. This is how we have reached to um, bioherbicides or mycoherbicides, what we have uh, done with uh, uh, cell-free uh, culture filtrates. 
where again, I mean, in the last discussion also, we are looking, uh, the Indian uh, regulatory says only bacterial or fungal antagonists as a guideline. I mean, they have not mentioned about these smart formulations and working smartly with the microbes because we have to think beyond microbes when we are looking at and thanks to uh, Malhotra search uh, initiatives and, uh, and February 22nd uh, gadget notice on this, we have something of CFCF now as a valid uh, terminology and maybe there is some set of uh, guidelines which I feel can be adapted for uh, sidal properties for registering these molecules into uh, 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 CIB also, sir. This is my humble request so that we can harmonize the whole uh, system. So we can move from there, sir. So we currently work on bioregional R&D with pheromones and microbial elutes, microbial as well as elutes for insect pest control, fungal disease control, and also for herbal uh, herbicidal activities, sir. So the COVID impact uh, was very minimal uh, in case of agriculture. Rather, I'd say it was a little better uh, uh, to the agriculture because uh, we had good rainfall, all reservoirs were full, surplus food grain production was seen, increased agriculture growth rate, only sector in India to show uh, economic uh, uh, growth in economic contribution. And uh, migrant laborers helped in increased cultivation of the rural areas. Industrial and uh, vehicular pollution down, better biodiversity. And in times of uh, pandemic, immunity played a major uh, role in saving our population and prevention on top priority it has been taken up and increased need of residue free food was needed uh, because uh, we need uh, for immunity building up and other things, we, we needed uh, this very much. More biopesticide needed to augment toxic chemical pesticides more proactive role for non-target area contamination for chemical herbicides in particular because 99% of the uh, applied uh, herbicide, chemical herbicide or the biological herbicide probably will reach to the non-target area. Only less than 1% will be absorbed by the target uh, 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 weeds. Need for bioregional products for pest and disease and weed control increase many folds. We have a better environment for better immunity with sustainable agriculture. Uh, the supply issues uh, we have seen like Chinese intermediates and technical sources have stopped. Indian agrochemical industry responded very well to the situation and met the supply demands. India being one of the major supplier of agrochemical, we did not face much trouble except for some kind of a transportation and other things. Sir. For bioregional supplies, there was no issue and product flow was smooth because we are operating not more than about 5 to 6 percent or at the most 8 percent in certain states sir, compared to the chemical uh, pesticides uh, and plant protection inputs. Sir. Many state government subsidy business was affected mm -hmm. since the government spent was focused on COVID-related activities. To that extent, IPM programs yeah. were not grounded in most of the states. Sir. Mm -hmm. so, uh, coming to sustainability of agriculture, my previous speaker was speaking that the population by 2050 is going to be 9 billion, I mean 10 billion, 9 billion range. So the, to meet this, uh, we need about 70% more food by 2050 using less land, less water, less fertilizer and fewer pesticides. And uh, here we need to see, uh, for making one slice of bread, it requires about 11 gallons and one bag of chips is about 50 gallons and one hamburger takes about 630 gallons. One stick is about 1,850 gallons. Now it is time that we need to see not only the carbon credits, we have to see the water footprint, what we are using on this uh, 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 in India. And if somebody is exporting a cup of coffee and he gets about $3 in return, probably is not accounting for the uh, water input which has been taken in uh, from this country. So this is very, very important uh, how to harness this. We, we need to be more clear that uh, there are so many weeds which are taking away uh, the water, like especially water hyacinth takes away, say something like about uh, 3.5 lakh liters in one acre of mat. So if you can control this 
evapor transport uh, transpiration losses rather we have this 350000 liters in uh, one acre per day can be saved for using this for irrigation or any other uh, benefits of agriculturally important and food and uh, uh, drinking water sources now i i wouldn't uh, make much of this microbials microbial semiochemicals and natural uh, biochemical products are the basic uh, things into bioreational industry or biocontrol industry this is where we we are talking about uh, products of uh, botanical and other natural sources with substances of biochemical nature this particular biochemical nature issue is very uh, uh, it is not defined very well into the indian uh, regulatory system sir when uh, this is what i mean the first step is the cfcf uh, formulations what we can think so the biopesticide market and global landscape if you see by 2025 from the current level of about 5 billion we would be reaching say, something like about 11 billion which is uh, uh, more than uh, uh, doubling the uh, sales sir so this is going to be a very good market and to address the issues uh, uh, to grow uh, we we see we we need to have uh, involve all stakeholders research policy makers regulatory implementing agencies industry should come together and deliver effective products to uh, end use of farmers according <clears throat> coordination is uh, required with gst for optimizing cash structures sir. this is very important what is happening is the new innovations whatever is coming in we are at a chance that if it is not prescribed in any schedules in the gst it is going to the general category sir so for example if i am talking about a pheromone one will see the trap and say it is plastic the other person will see the lure where we are using that as a, sub, as a substrate for uh, expression of uh, uh, pheromone that is in rubber then they say it is rubber then inside that we are using a um, biochemical they say it is chemical so this way you know like i mean there is no clarity i think the research and the policy makers have to make this kind of a thing as since all, all these products of uh, biological origin and uh, bioreational origin are going as a uh, to the end use of farmer for from far, as a farm input so it has to be considered as one common area to say this is a farm uh, input and it should be at a concessional rate of uh, taxation maybe this kind of a proposal can go sir that would be good and one more important thing is under Buda, nagoya and budapest protocol and under nba and uh, uh, for depo uh, depository angle for microbials we have signed with uh, cop countries uh, globally and uh, our exports like make in india from biological origin especially will be can be harmonized with a interdepartmental uh, <clears throat> facilitation sir in other countries also so that the regulatory can be a, a uniform so that we can move from whatever we manufacture here we are also signatories to this uh, nagoya and budapest protocols so the same kind of a products with the registry uh, regulatory file of india can also see and export to 60 70 other countries this would be a initiative the government has to take in a positive way and start moving in that direction sir and your good officers can also uh, recommend this kind of a uh, things dr malhotra as well as uh, dr chakravarti sir uh, i know you people can lead this kind of a role models into this uh, area sir the bio product uh, bio rational products ki given a fast track registration with the simplified requirements sir make room for viable royalty charges sir when we are seeing sir, royalties are charged at 20% plus also sir that is becoming very expensive to take the technology from institutions sir. please look into that make it more uh, business sense to promote technology sir so these are the pheromone range what i will just go through fast this is the pheromone range what we supply to india as well as to uh, many other countries european countries also sir. and we are also onto the stored grain pests also sir for stored pests also we have the pheromones there are different layers and we are doing a research on uh, uh, nano fibers uh, pheromone nano fibers sir this is going to reduce the uh, uh, pheromone content uh, for mating disruption 
to a very great level sir so then maybe it can be as low as say, something like about a 10 grams active into one uh, acre per season sir if that kind of a thing is achieved i don't think there is any toxicology data generation and other things can uh, is needed it is as good as a uh, monitoring and mass trapping pheromones which are exempt already similar level we can also think sir maybe you can exempt for such technologies where the usage is much lower in uh, pheromone uh, active sir so this is the nano uh, fiber pheromone sir we are working with ncl now and it's giving a good result sir and at very very low level of uh, expression sir so these are our uh, biological weed control we have uh, um, developed uh, three micro herbicides sir for uh, water hyacinth parthenium and lantana camera sir we have uh, put this uh, into trials in india uh, already sir and uh, we are uh, it is working very well as good as uh, any chemical uh, pesticide kind of weed side kind of a result sir basically why it is happening is see, we have gone beyond the micro uh, living micro we are working on the eludes so what is happening is they are very stable and uh, they don't need a micro environment to be very uh, conducive for the microbes to grow and other things so it is very good uh, facilitation sir in uh, formulation and uh, development technology what we did this is an, within 2 hours you can see uh, the results are very prominent on the leaf curling and other things sir and this is on the third day fourth day you can see the differentiation i mean totally dried up and at the back green one is the control plot sir for water hyacinth so in about 10 to 14 days they become totally dry like this then we ultimately take it for the manuring the final manure is fine uh, very fine manure sir for this also we got an award and swachh bharat to how to utilize this for manure and other things sir so after uh, developing uh, this kind of a products uh, one has to be really protecting the technology in totality sir that way we have done very well for protecting this we have done the patenting we have uh, deposit deposited the strain uh, under uh, budapest protocol then uh, we have done the molecular identifications and whole genome is constructed extraction of bioactives has been done and chemical profiling of the actives by lcms and hplc is done now uh, we have also registered with the biodiversity board uh, and toxicology studies uh, are done in glp sir a basic tox data is already generated nmr study is under process sir maybe in a week or 10 days we will be getting the nmr studies also to identify uh, the compounds clearly sir so the, our patent status we have a total number of patents applied is about 24 in 14 countries and we have on hand we have patent certificate in 11 patent certificates and patents accepted and awaiting certificate is about 12 and patent in uh, progress in thailand is only one patent which is pending sir all others are accepted rather it is the first uh, uh, company in india and biologicals to have uh, so many patents uh, uh, patents sir so these are our us patent this is australia and this is uh, japan and other patents we have not uh, wanted to list i mean just uh, three important major countries we have listed sir thank you very much sir open for any discussion sir well thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr lakshmi really we are happy to hear from you that yes several novel products you have introduced and uh, those products are really needed to be registered and further uh, those are required to be taken forward and we also want that indian farmers they should also take benefit out of it uh, your uh, hormones nano fibers are really fabulous and uh, my then again uh, that myco herbicides really these are these are praise worthy these are the novel products we need to really promote these bio, uh, biological control measures wow, and very happy to fast track these bio bio rational products really will be happy if we thank you sir Uh, some some pr proposal comes uh, before us we will be very happy and already some kind of i should say a priority uh, I, i should say pri pri priority registration is there for bio products already we do it within within a 6 to 8 months if we receive uh, such kind of proposals we do we are doing that thank you so much for good presentation thank you sir well 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 thank you, so, thank you sir ha any, uh, anybody well. sir anybody has any other question 
Sir, if not, then uh, uh, let me allow to uh, uh, initiate. Yeah, we can we can invite the next one. Yes. <laughs> sir, uh, I know you are a proactive person here sitting, and definitely such kind of innovative technology should get a uh, upper hand and um, get a fast track. E even I feel we have the in a pesticide management bill or in in a, in our comments to uh, the the promotion of bio pesticide, we said that. Such kind of things where other countries do not have concern, like pheromones and all, like cell-free culture filtrate bioformulations of a myco herbicide, which India has not made. So why not uh, they they can be eased out, or, or so that so that weed is the greatest problem today. We all fight is also because of the weed, and 40 percent of cost of cultivation is because of the weed weed problem. So uh, thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. If you, Dr. Chakravarti, if you remember when we visited uh, uh, Ethiopia, uh, this is about to discuss that fall army worm issue and other things. We attended that meeting. Then we came to know that many of our Indian companies, they are making several pheromones and they are uh, exporting to other African countries and others. Really, it was a uh, it was a great point to know that, yes, our country also has strength now. For uh, formulation, our industry, they are they are making pheromones, and then uh, our make, our country means getting disruptor. Uh, Lakshmi himself is making uh, and selling. I think forty lakh doses of pheromones to FAO uh, yeah. when FAO, when Fall Army one before we started introducing. Lakshmi yeah. and another company called AGTC, I believe. Uh, so they they have supplied. So they are, but we are not allowing them to register. So this is a little. No, no, we have no, we have never we have uh, we have very recently considered their products pheromones. We have registered. I think okay. Okay. only okay. deficiency was lying on their part. We have very recently cleared them. Okay, Lakshmi, you had the point. Quick. Yes, sir. I mean, I I wanted to say that only, sir. The FAO tender we participated through our uh, European partners, uh, Copert Biologicals, and uh, our product from India went to all African countries for distribution in more than uh, 40 countries, sir. For, right. for, for, uh, for I knew that. I know. I, uh, I know. I, in fact, I, I, I'm, I think this, uh, ATGC is the only company who is doing. So my, my name... Yes, sir. That is also our group company. Yes, sir. yes. It is a country pride for us. No problem. Yes. Yeah. Sir. We appreciate uh, So, sir, next we request uh, Dr. Patiwa Sharma. Dr. Patiwa Sharma is an ICR emeritus scientist. After she was head of the department and uh, previously she was also secretary of IPS and now uh, she is uh, working in Jobner, Rajasthan University. Uh, sir, she is our own person and uh, so we will request her to finish in five minutes because so that we can take up the next session which is for um, the other uh, everybody and madam uh, is a very eminent researcher and biocontrol uh, person and she has her own formulation which has been recently registered by you. And uh, uh, given clear clear sheet when I was ADG, it was initiated, and now uh, you have finally uh, cleared it. So that's a good uh, thing, sir. Sir, you can invite Madam uh, Pratibha Sharma. Yeah, Dr. Pratibha Sharma, I think you have already introduced, so we can invite her for the presentation. Kindly stick to the time because we will be very happy to uh, learn your success stories that what kind of work has been done, what kind of uh, microbials. Uh, isolates you have available with you and further we need to see that how those products could be taken forward. Yeah, please, Dr. Pratibha. Dr. Pratibha is there? Madam, are you there? I think uh, she was in another session also in biocontrol session. I don't know whether she is there or not. Uh, any of uh, the organizers, Dr. Srinivas? Uh, if she's not available, then I think we can uh, we can start the panel discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, without wasting the time. Yes, sir, let us utilize the time now. Sir, I am Harish Mehta. I just like to take two minutes, sir. Okay, sir. Let me. I am Mataya Mehta, sir. Bataiye. Sir, uh, thank you very much for giving me a chance. I represent Crop Care Federation of India which is an apex chamber of 50 Indian companies. I know. The perception that has been created in the last several years, and I'll tell you how and why, about spurious pesticides, it is my duty to clarify right here and now. For the last three years, we have been filing RTIs in almost 25 states of Indian agriculture. We have got written replies from all the state directorates. We have 
had analysis reports from large and small companies. I'm giving authentic data, which has been available with me. And we find that out of 54,932 samples, which have been drawn by these states, verified and certified by the state laboratories, we find that only 1527 samples, that is 2.78%, is supposedly not meeting specifications or failing. Thereby saying that almost 97.2% samples are meeting specifications and are passing. Now, let me clarify here that CCFI has 50 members Mr. and their response. Mr. Mehta, Mr. Mehta yeah. just, just I'm telling. Are you giving your independent views as a panelist? No, 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 sir. I'm giving it on behalf of CCFI. I'm talking so, on behalf but, of CCFI. But we have not, we have not, uh, because they did yeah. not. We have a sketched program. So we are going so as I, I, our then let me just Definitely let me... we will listen to you. Whenever your issue will come, definitely we will no, listen to you. No, the issue is basically about spurious pesticides. And therefore, I'll just take one sentence to clarify, sir. No, one thing. Just, just, just I'm telling you. Uh, Dr. Chakravarti may, may, may clarify. Give, give the clarify. Uh, Dr. Uh, Harish Mehta? Yes, I'm Harish Mehta, not Dr. Uh, so, uh, so, are you... Uh, I, I, I could not follow Dr. Malhotra. Did you ask me to further go ahead? Or? Sir, I was, want, I was wanting from you two minutes to clarify on spurious pesticides, which concerns the agrochemical industry, the Indian industry. Sir, let us, let us hear, because... Uh, uh, or we, we yeah. have... We Please have, continue uh, I'll not take more than three minutes, sir. I'll yeah. just give you a summary here and details okay. that will send you by okay. post. Well. Sir, Crop Care Federation of India does not promote any brand. It does not promote any company. We are an independent body of about 50 Indian companies who have been exporting almost 90% 90 90 of Indian pesticides are being exported by these companies. We have been working on RTIs with all the state governments. Authentic data has been collected. Out of 55,000 samples drawn from big and large companies by all the state governments, only 2.78% samples are not meeting specifications or failing, stating thereby that 97.2% samples are passing and are not supposedly spurious. Spurious is no term in the act itself. Further, on 15th of September 2020, Mr. Tomer in Parliament has mentioned that for the last five years, out of 3.38 samples drawn, only 1.17% was supposed to be not meeting specifications. And therefore, to say at every forum, I would not... Hello? Indeed, uh, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Can, sir. can you hear me? I'll just... Take, sir, I'll background just take... Sir, can you hear me? No, no, not to you. Sir, sir, Hello? Devapa, sir. Mr. Devapa, 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 sir, can you meet... Uh, Sir, sir, ah. Devapa, sir. Bank na lau niyan niyal te dana. Manager. Yes, small the entire. Bank na kate yana gidi antandra. Sir, sir, Raul. Devapa. Ada aur aur sir, a withdra mada kuda ga. Doctor Devapa. Closing yalla ida na trasta. As an administrator, you can also mute him, sir. Mute. So, sir, my contention was that what has been said here and what has been not been authenticated. Is something which is totally damaging to the agro industry. I would be able to send you an entire dossier to, to Dr. Malhotra and Dr. Chakravarti. And I've also sent this to already the Joint Secretary and Secretary in Chemicals, saying that what has been said here and what is said repeatedly is absolutely false and incorrect. Therefore, to malign the Indian industry is undesirable. We export almost 90% of agrochemicals from India to almost 130 countries. And today, what we are finding it, who are promoting this? Basically, NGOs and those who are keen on only importing. Importing ready-made formulations, the increase has been from 9,000 crores to 13,000 crores. And we find almost 60% are basically formulations which are being brought to this country from China or Japan or anywhere else. So my condition is I would be sending you a note on this, but to clarify before, before the scientific fraternity, what has been said here and what has been shared and what has been said repeatedly is totally false. Two big institutions, one is IRI, the, the uh, director IRI, Dr. A.K. Singh and Dr. Anupama have confirmed that there has been distortion of their facts in writing to me. And every time to say that uh, losses are from 9 to 80% because of poor quality of pesticides is very, very incorrect. They have denied this in writing. Secondly, Ministry of Consumer Affairs, the Joint Secretary, Mr. Vineet Mathur, has also said in writing that the FIKI report has totally distorted their findings. It was only a report on awareness, whereas they have said 58% of pesticides are spurious. Sir, my condition is, let us not be misguided by this by forum or by these statements, because I would be able to back it up. I'll give thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you so yes, much, sir. Mr. Mehta. I appreciate you, I appreciate your statement. Otherwise, I, sir, yes, sir. I'm I'm grateful to you, sir. Thank you very you much, said, sir. Well, and I'll well, send you. Well. I'll send. Thank you, sir. Grateful so, to so you. So you have clarified very important point.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, clarifying uh, the, this, this one to the scientific community. Our uh, our colleagues are here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, that sir. Relieves, that relieves us, sir. In fact, because yes, sir. Uh, but but Fiki report, we uh, we don't believe that fifty eight percent. We for we think twenty five to thirty percent. Somewhere I noted, but I I, I no, I sir. What has what has been said, and I I would not like to quote the name of the person. The they have said that the Fiki report has been misquoted. My, uh, to the extent that 58% are only people are aware about spurious agro inputs. There's no mention about pesticides. And okay. that has been used by, by the uh, okay. chairman of FIKI subcommittee to distort the facts. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for you, the sir. I'll send you full notes out of all the sir on this. Yeah, sir, uh, yeah uh, Mr. Mehta, please share with me also. I, I'll do, sir. Totally to you, sir. Both okay, of you. Yeah, please, please. Right. Well, sir, uh, now, uh, sir, uh, you can conclude uh, this or maybe conclude at the end. So we will go for the next session, sir, uh, which is a stakeholders meet, which is because uh, we have hardly one and a half hour, one, one hour and some uh, few minutes uh, for the next session. So we'll start that uh, stakeholders meeting uh, on plant protection and the issues and concerns regarding use of pesticides and biopesticides. Uh, sir, uh, uh, again, uh, I am very grateful that, to policymakers like you, to Dr. Uh, Nayak, for uh, agreeing to chair the session. This is a very important session and it is an interest for the first time for the academician. I am grateful to ICR and sponsoring uh, agencies and other, other uh, the entire, this is the first time we had a stakeholders meeting uh, involving industry, academics and policy, policy, uh, yeah. policy makers. We are all there together, sir, um, and I'm, I'm uh, highly uh, means uh, grateful to you that at the dead of night when I call you at called you at nine nine thirty you readily agreed because this was a session you know nobody else can address rather than you so you have um, accepted at the last moment that is a very good sir um, I will quote a few things before FAO and CABI estimates twenty to forty percent of losses because of the of the food and it is imperative. You be here only, no? Uh, the India India also suffers the losses to the same range. And again, OECD and FAO Agriculture Outlook reports that without plant protection measures, 50% of our crops are going to be decimated. And European he Parliament in 2019 reported that policy pesticides cannot be overlooked for using in management, but efforts may be expect, uh, explored to reduce the use of our amount, either new molecules which are safe to environment or the, the use of chemicals should be reduced like countries like China and US use 13 up to 13 kg. Whereas, but that kind of provision is not there in our country. We are already using the lowest amount of pesticide. We are, I think, 130 among 161 countries using point, less than 0.3. This is the report which is World of Intermeter has recorded. And we have uh, recently published a book, sir, this, in this session. And uh, sir, this is the book, uh, which will come to you also. Um, uh, this this book has been published, and it is it is uh, signed by the foreword has been written by Honorable B.G. Um, and uh, Secretary Dare, who inaugurated the session. So this is for on on safe use and handling of pesticides. This is what our uh, industries they are involved in. They are also involved in. Government is also involved in, and I am grateful that um, the, the sponsorship from the industries have also helped. Besides ICR, NABARD, uh, this, this, uh, their sponsorship has helped to bring out this book. In, we will translate in all languages. So, uh, sir, we have now uh, the, the uh, so we let us start with the stakeholders meet. And, uh, okay. okay. And, sir, well, before, so, thank you so much. Up. Thank you so much, uh, sir, Dr. Sir, what, First of all, accept. Dr. Manoshwar, my the final discussion. Pratibha Sharma, madam, I join, sir. Before you take over the stage, sir, um, I, I, uh, I, I know that the issues which, which, are, uh, which are there, there are several issues uh, like rationalization of regulatory data, PMB, what should be the next stage or step, then uh, addressing invasive resistant pest where you have worked a lot and you have done uh, so many remarkable uh, fast tracking of registration, nematicide, pestilla, Pesilomyces, crop grouping, MRL grouping, and all this has been done by you in a very short span. Science-based decision making while allowing banning of pesticides and certain issues like address of challenging or challenges due to inferior quality products. 
which Dr. Harish Mehta has already said that it is not to that extent as we are, and capacity building for regulatory and quality. These are few of the lurking issues which are, which needs to be. And I would sir recommend uh, doc, because I am not a good right person. So let let that session be moderated by one of our our um, um, is, uh, representatives of any of the associations. Uh, maybe Dr. Raju Kapoor can take because I have heard I have seen him moderating many of such sessions or anybody else who can and then highlight such points. And sir, now the stage is up to you. But so that he okay. can. Well, well. Then, then Thank you so much. Can... Thank you so much for setting the stage. And uh, you have identified the right person to moderate the session. <laughs> First of all, you accept my congratulations for uh, bringing out a very good publication, safe use uh, of handling of the pesticides. Uh, so, <laughs> congratulations to you for uh, for such a uh, wonderful, I would say, testament which you so have this, brought here. This is first time uh, free hands drawn cartoons have been made, and it is done by a scientist. And this this is published under the ages of Indian Phytopathological Society. The entire depiction, and it also clears certain myths about about cancer issues about the usage of pesticide about the, about the non existence of regulatory norms and mrl accidents all those things these are already there in that so okay. and thank you so much well well so now 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 before we we invite our uh, panelists so first of all i would like to uh, convey sir, sir, my, one, sir, yeah, before, convey going my... the, before going to the i think madam has joined sir pratima dr yes, pratima sir, Shumar, madam I joined for the we'll hear madam after this, this panel panel anyway. okay uh, let let us include her in a, in a panel now so so she will speak in the panel as a panelist yeah. right? oh, panel okay sir okay. okay well well so uh, uh, so first of all uh, i welcome uh, coach uh, dr uh, Are we panel uh, vice chancellor also he is available with us vice chancellor from university of agriculture in horticulture sciences pamoga he is available with us and uh, as we have identified now uh, mr raju kapoor from the industry he is one of the very brilliant uh, i should say uh, uh, person from the industry uh, i know him and uh, I, I have seen him speaking at the various fronts so uh, 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 raju kapoor ji i think you will, you will moderate now so let us let us now invite uh, one by one as per the schedule right sir okay thank you so much sir. so well 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 so uh, uh, we welcome you for the for this session you thank so thank you so very much sir thank you so well, much well. Uh, let me let me first of all thank you and uh, dr chakravarti and uh, the indian phytopathology society for uh, inviting the stakeholders to this uh, meeting i think it's very important that the scientific community the industry and the regulators sit together because that's where you generate maximum solutions. Uh, challenges have been highlighted by many speakers earlier, uh, but there are certain uh, uh, the key key some of the key challenges essentially uh, stem for uh, uh, from uh, you know the R and D uh, because the scientists are available. I can talk about it. See, essentially, we need to invest more on the R and D, so that's very important. I'm just setting the stage for, for this whole discussion, sir. Sorry for taking one minute. I, I, I think it's very important to have the R&D in the country. However, till the time we ramp up, see, because it is identified that each uh, one for one molecule to come from uh, discovery phase uh, to the farmer, it takes about $286 million. And it takes about 10 to 11 years to bring one product uh, to the market. So it's a, it's a long drawn and very expensive process. However, I think it's very important that what we get here, so it, it must be stewarded very well. So that's what uh, I really appreciate Dr. Chakravarti for the book that you came out with. It's very important that the stewardship of the products is given the due respect and is, is, is actually should be made mandatory, but uh, you know at least as a, as a social responsibility, as a responsibility of the industry, it must be taken forward. Having said that now, let's, uh, let us let me just open this out. I think uh, uh, Dr. Chakrabarti set out some of the important points uh, in the beginning itself. One of the things which we are, uh, as a country, uh, facing that with the uh, multiple challenges and disruptions coming and with a lot of invasives, et cetera, coming in, uh, we are finding that the present portfolio of products available for the country is not sufficient to adequately meet the challenges that are going to be put today and from moving forward. So I think uh, one of the 
point that you identified, Dr. Chakravarti, is uh, about facilitating introduction of newer molecules. I have been a party to that discussion uh, along with Dr. Malhotra and, uh, and the 3D team, uh, wherein uh, I think a lot of us have joined hands together well, to well, well. fast track that. So maybe uh, we can start with that subject. Correct, correct. Oh. Well, well, you are right. You are right, uh, Mr. Raju Kapoor. I think uh, let us let us uh, uh, give give the let us set the time and let us decide that how much time we are giving to going to give to the each and every speaker. So as per the list provided, uh, Asit Hussain is at the top now, so yeah. we invite him, but I'm, I'm requesting now because we are left with a very little time and we want to hear everybody. And I could see a long list of 17 uh, experts and persons who are available with us. So uh, uh, minutes we will give to each and every uh, uh, expert, uh, to the panelists, uh, 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 I should say guests who are available with us. Okay, so sir. I think two, minute, two minutes will be enough. And uh, my request will be to everybody that kindly uh, kindly uh, give the crux and, and the points which you would like to mention here as a panelist. You are, you are, because since you are the expert of your area, you will be in a position to uh, uh, justify that one. Thank you, sir. Thank Wait, you, sir. Message within sir. two minutes time, please. Sir, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have a request that if he flags uh, some of the important issues which are of concern to all the, uh, the associations and then uh, let all the, the panelists speak, whosoever wants to speak on that issue, and then, then he should be allowed. Otherwise, it need not be. Many of them are not going to speak, I, I, I believe, because their association... Okay, okay. so uh, I think your point is that they should come up with some common points, though they should say, not, not so, a so, specific... So, yeah, Dr. Raju Kapoor, if you have any common points, uh, so which of common interest, you may highlight that, and then invite one or two persons on that. Uh, but the sure. time limit is, is one hour. Now you can see. I, I think I think you have already set the tone. So let me just go by the tone that you have set, Dr. Chakravarti. So I right. think the core issues, one of it definitely is to fortify the portfolio of the products available in the country. So new products, uh, how do we get them in the country faster? What will motivate people to bring those products in the country? That's one. Number two that we are talking about, you mentioned, and I think uh, we fully agree with you. Uh, there's a significant need for... Uh, uh, you know, capacity building in the regulatory and the quality infrastructure throughout the country. That's to me, that's second big ticket item. Uh, there is also an issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the country's positioning as a, a, as a responsible country in the agrochemical supply chain globally. So I think uh, there are issues regarding patents, etc., that also need to be addressed here. Uh, openly, because I think uh, in the regulatory system it should not be uh, stepping on the uh, uh, patent regime in the country, because that kind of sends a very wrong signal uh, globally. So that's three for me. Uh, fourth one is definitely the invasive and the resistance best uh, uh, thing. Fourth one could be, uh, you know, the the decisions to allow or ban a product must be science based. Uh, I think that's fifth item for me. Uh, one of the items that I have clearly is the new application technologies. So if you could address the issues around, uh, uh, you know, a drone was mentioned by one of the speakers earlier. So maybe we can address that. And uh, PMB could be, uh, pesticide management will could be another one. But in between, if there are more issues coming up, we can continue to discuss. So let's start with the, the first speaker, Sitawaji. Uh, uh, kindly, uh, uh, your views on these issues. Uh, as, as directed by uh, Dr. Malhotra, sir, Please take minimal time because we have to finish in uh, one one hour's time. Now, 55 minutes. I have taken another five minutes. Uh, Mr. Sin, uh, you are not visible. I'm oh, sorry, you are not audible. Sorry, uh, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, please continue. Yeah, thank you. I was on mute. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't take more than two minutes because anyway, I'm not a technical uh, scientist and uh, there are more competent people to talk about some of these uh, technical issues that we're talking about. I must first uh, thank and congratulate uh, Dr. Chakravarti uh, for organizing this. Uh, also, Dr. Malhotra for his time. Dr. Naik, uh, uh, very good discussion uh, which is going on. Sure. Uh, Sir, in the, in the interest of time, uh, uh, I will thank on everybody's behalf to all these scientists. We can yes, proceed with the issue. Correct. And, uh, you know, uh, crop life has always stood for um, 
collaborative uh, approach uh, to work on certain specific issues and challenges uh, with the government. Uh, and I must also uh, acknowledge the effort which uh, Dr. Malotra and uh, CIBRC has taken to address many of these issues. Things are moving. We had a great uh, 3D meeting uh, for three days where a host of issues has been identified and the Crop Life India team is working very hard on many of them uh, to help the government uh, to address those issues in a uh, practical manner. So Raju uh, Kapurji has already talked about uh, most of the issues. Uh, you know, uh, one particular issue is that about uh, registration timeline. And one of the solution to that issue is potentially outsourcing data evaluation. So, um, you know, whether it is uh, 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 chemistry data or toxicology data or uh, bioefficacy data, why don't we think of, uh, you know, identify government institutes who under a very strict uh, guideline and confidentiality agreement against a fee, uh, why can't they um, take up the job of uh, doing some of these evaluation uh, on an outsourced basis, which is there in Australia, which is there in the US and many other countries. And that could be one of the potential solutions um, for reducing the registration timeline, which currently is because of various issues including manpower shortage uh, in the CIBRC secretariat. Uh, also, I think uh, one more issue is the, uh, uh, Raju Kapurji talked about the way of uh, uh, evaluating uh, uh, pesticides and how, how, whether they should be allowed or not allowed, uh, what is the process of doing so. Uh, that the immediate challenge is those of uh, 27 molecules, which uh, the Dr. Rajendran committee has been formed and we have appeal to the committee as well as the Joint Secretary Plan Protection to uh, at least um, hear the industry out uh, molecule by molecule as to what they have to defend uh, their molecules. So that uh, stakeholder consultation is uh, fairly important. Uh, we have also covered uh, uh, issues of biostimulants. Already there is a guideline, but the implementation issues, we are happy to work with the government and Dr. Malutra, who is the chairman of the Central Bios Biostimulant Committee uh, to ease out those implementation issues. Uh, drones we have talked about. Uh, we are working hard on uh, some of the guidelines for evaluation for, as I said, uh, bioefficacy, chemistry, toxicology, and others, which we will be happy to submit to the government shortly, including a temp template for a service level agreement uh, between RC and a potential outsource agency, as I talked about the outsourcing um, issue. I think minor change guideline is another one, which is pending for a long time and can be revived. Uh, the pesticide management bill uh, we talked about, uh, stakeholder consultation on some of the clauses uh, can make it better. Confidential business information is another key area, which was also covered in uh, 3D. A lot of sensitive information, uh, uh, formula of the um, product, et cetera, are uh, put on the label today. Uh, there is a need for farmers to read the chemical composition of the uh, uh, material that he is buying and using, but uh, to what extent is the question? And uh, Joint Secretary has requested the industry to share uh, what we believe would be they are going as uh, in the level and what should not be needed uh, or what is not needed to be uh, given in the level. So confidential business information is one more important topic. Um, there are many other issues, uh, drones, uh, management of empty pesticide containers, and there are many, many other issues. But I thought some of these key issues and uh, our technical experts, including Raju Kapurji and Arpita and um, Anirvan and many of our regulatory experts are here today, they can talk about it. Uh, that's thank it you. from my side, thank you. Thank you very much, Sitawaji, and thank you so much for sticking to the time, I appreciate it. I think the points you have highlighted are very important. So let's let's move to Dr. Arpita Roy. Uh, Dr. Arpita Roy, uh, she is General Manager uh, Regulatory from Adama. Do you have a point to make, Madam? Arpita Roy. Mumbai. May I request the rest of the speakers, uh, except uh, uh, Dr. P.K. and uh, uh, Dr. Malatra to kindly go on mute. Uh, Dr. Arpita Roy, are you there? In case, in case she's, are you there, madam? Yeah, you can, you can take up the next one, I think. Oh, okay, I think. fine. Thank you very much. By the time, so, if anybody joins, we will ent entertain them. So let me invite uh, Dr. J.C. Majumdar from Crop Federation of uh, from Crop Care Federation of India. Dr. Majumdar, are you there? Or anybody on his behalf from CCFI? I think we had uh, Harish talk about it. Uh, Harish, would you have anybody else to talk about uh, any issues that you want to talk? I think we have Mr. Ravi Hadde coming in. 
because I would only be able to counter it. I'll not be able to add anything. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you are. <laughs> this is so that is that is my target. So not you. Know. You give your point of to counter then definitely. Okay. okay. Yes, I'll if be sending you a entire dosage, sir. Okay. Ravi, In that Ravi. case, let us invite uh, uh, Dr. Ravi Hegde. Are you there, uh, Dr. Ravi? So you was there. He was there Dr. in the Ravi list. Ravi Hegde. He is there in the list. Okay. It's interesting. Uh, <laughs> So I'm choosing people who are not there. Okay, fine. <laughs> Dr. Kalyan Goswami, uh, are you there, sir? Director General of ACFI. Dr. Kalyan Goswami. Wow, no, he's not. Finish very soon. No problem. <laughs> okay, Dr. Dr. Kalyan Goswami, are you there? Uh, we can. Uh, otherwise, we can move forward. He's not there. Okay. Uh, Shri Pradeep Dave, Chairman, Emco Pesticides. Pradeep Dave? I don't see him in the list. Okay. So I think I must I must uh, uh, compliments to Rajiv Kapoor for a <laughs> time management. You got to finish in time. Don't worry about it. You are doing a best time management practice with you, which you have. Uh, absolutely, we are going to finish way ahead of time. Don't worry. <laughs> the way nobody is coming up. Are you and Dr. Harish has to take up all the issues if they are the end? No, but he is only going to defend. So I, have, I have to take a role of uh, attacker. No problem. I would not do that. I'll defend in the last. Let me now invite uh, Dr. R. D. Kapoor. Uh, Dr. Kapoor, uh, head agri support analysis PI Industries. Dr. Uh, Dr. R. D. Kapoor, are you there? I don't see his name there, sir. You can talk mm -hmm. about Dr. Obray then in, in place, I believe, uh, because he is there. If he okay, has I mean, uh, should I go by the sequence? Then we can possibly no, no, there's no yes, none. Yes, then the yes, people yes. who are visible can speak. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are right. You are right. So let me just go by the sequence. Otherwise, you know, it will be a mix and match. Okay, so uh, uh, Dr. Adi Kapoor, if you are not there, I will proceed to the next. Dr. Uh, Abhijit could be there because from uh, from uh, uh, ACFI, Abhijit Singh. Because he, uh, his his name appears here, as if he has joined. So I will go by the sequence, sir. If you allow okay. me. Yeah, so so that we know who was not there, who could not talk. So, okay, in that case, Dr. Vandana Taki, Parijat Industries, uh, are you there, please? Seventeen. Don't tell me I'm so lucky. <laughs> Making your task easier. <laughs> Absolutely easy. Okay, Dr. Vandana. No. Right. We let's move to Dr. Bhavesh Shah, Joint Managing Director, GSP Crop Sciences. Dr. Bhavisha, are you there? No, no. no. Sir, am I reading a wrong list? No, no, the list is same. No, 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 the, name list is same. the name doesn't appear yeah. there. He's not, he's not among the participants short, available. Short, short notice. No problem. No problem. Dr. Sanjay Singh, uh, Insecticide India Limited, um, EGM. Dr. Sanjay Singh, are you there? Rajesh. Dr. Sanjay Singh. Okay. So let's go on uh, to Dr. Uh, uh, Rajul Adolia, uh, Vice President uh, from Coromandel International, old friend of mine. Dr. Uh, Rajul Adolia. Anybody else from Coromandel who would like to talk? Yes, I, I can talk. Okay. Mujhe, mujhe lagta hai ki ab aapko Raju Kapoor ko bhi invite karna pade. Sir, I feel like I'm going to get a wrong list. No, I'd like to... Please, I'd like to invite you to the speakers. Please, I'd like to listen to the Oberai Sahib. Then, I'll turn it off. No, there's another one, sir. There's another one, sir. There's another one, sir. But I'm from Coromandel, so... Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. I have only one point to make here. I'm very happy about the regulatory reforms that are taking place under the ABLE chairmanship of uh, uh, Dr. Malhotra, the Agriculture Commissioner and Chairman RC. And uh, the 3D meeting, of course, was a great success. I'd only like to talk about two points. One is on label expansion and crop grouping. Minor change has already been touched upon by uh, Mr. Asita Vasen. So I'd like to talk about crop grouping and label extension, label expansion, because this is very important for our export business, and this will stop rejections of our consignments overseas. 
I'd like uh, uh, this point to be dis to be uh, deliberated if uh, by anybody else or supported uh, have, or negated by whoever point? wishes to do, do so. Do you have a suggestion, uh, Britsa? Do you have a suggestion on label expansion? Is there an issue that you want to highlight? No, I'm saying that we should uh, we, uh, label expansion is something that we should introduce on a on a on a very very fast track, and also on crop grouping. So these are these are the suggestions that I'd like to make to this uh, esteemed panel. Thank you. So, Malatra sir, uh, the issue being raised is: uh, Can the label expansions uh, be expedited? Uh, uh, label expansion ka agar main jaha tak thik hoon, kyunki mere paas kyunki issues to pahi examine hote hain jaha ap proposal submit karte hain. Jaha tak mujhe lagta hai ki wo issues jab submit karte hain within a six months, even within a three months, label expansion. Within... वो जितने भी इश्यूज हैं तीन से छह महीने के में एड्रेस हो जाते हैं और पर मुझे लगता है ज्यादा टाइम नहीं लगता है और उसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है अंटिल अनलेस कि जो एस पर एस पर द चेकलिस्ट अगर अगर किसी का प्रपोजल आता है तो उसमें कहीं किसी को रुकावट नहीं है कहीं आपकी रुकावट है तो बताइए आप जहाँ कहीं बात आ रही है तो बताइए डॉक्टर मल्होत्रा डॉक्टर मल्होत्रा वी विल गेट बैक to you on uh, this issue of label expansion thank you very much for your support so i think uh, so what, now uh, second second point relates to his uh, crop grouping again it's an again a very important issue both are in, interconnected i should say label expansion yes. uh, and then then crop grouping yeah, several some some technical points are there where uh, industry as well as some research institutions they have uh, data which is available with them in case data is not, not available then industry needs to get the Uh, data generated for a particular minor crop. Nine, one, four, My suggestion: uh, I would like to utilize this platform, and we will be very happy to extend the label if such issues comes and proposal if, if, if they submit to us. Right. Any, any suggestions from anybody about yeah. the uh, crop grouping? Because the scheme, while it is there, it's still not moving forward. So, any suggestions from anybody? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kapoor sir, I am Anirban from uh, uh, BSF India. Okay. and maybe i'll uh, because this was already part of my presentation so if you allow me i can share this slide as well so uh, uh, malotra sir acha nahi dekhiye meri baat suniye aap slide mat share kariye aap bolenge to mujhe lagta hai ki achhi tarah se hum logo ko okay okay so okay. uh, okay. uh, okay. uh, malotra sir abhi kya ho raha hai ki insecticide fungicide herbicide tino division mein 2 saal 2 years ke baad label expansion ki file khul rahi hai and then the first deficiency that is coming to us is after 2 years or uh, second option is about crop grouping humne i think we are one of the first company who applied for crop grouping under crop grouping principle usme bhi there is no separate queue so koi incentivize to company ho nahi rahi hai and then uh, it is about one and half year we have submitted and still uh, the file is under scrutiny matlab koi uska deficiency wagera aaya nahi hai and so that is the concern सेकेंड स्टेज uh, पे क्या होता है सर कि आफ्टर दी स्कूटिनी हैपेंस एम आर फिक्सेशन का क्या प्रोसीजर है उसके लिए भी काफी कंफ्यूजन है अभी भी मतलब नॉर्मल सिचुएशन में जैसे तीन लोकेशन के चार लोकेशन के डेटा के ऊपर होगा या दो के ऊपर ही एक्सट्रापोलेट करेंगे उस पर भी थोड़ा एक्सपर्ट्स के मन में कन्फ्यूजन है तो अगर आप थोड़ा सा उस पर इफ यू कैन सपोर्ट दैट इज द रिक्वेस्ट या well well he has raised three points three yeah. points he has mentioned he is asking that label claim expansion it is taking two years two years so so, so to which society you belongs to because you have associations pesticide association which as sir i am i am from bsf india crop life association so crop life association i am i am requesting them please see uh, also other associations so can you send us the list of uh, such such things i'll i'll definitely look into it that i'll okay. see why this is not happening why delay is happening kindly provide me the list of such uh, such uh, applicants another point is you are asking for a separate queue so separate queue it's already there because separate queue i should say that because this is again a uh, government issues and then uh, 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 for what i should say so there is already a separate queue for this purpose uh, but anyway i i'll discuss this matter again uh, in the committee sir i will add a point to your your uh, this comment 
I think uh, government has, you have already instituted a committee. I think Dr. Anupam, uh, Dr. Anupama is already there. Uh, she is a member of that committee for fast tracking registration. So, uh, such no, this is different, sir. May this come is different, from... Dr. Secretary. Achha, achha, this is different. The point okay. being raised now is. This is a label expansion. Ki baat chal rahi hai. Okay, okay. Okay, or the uh, crop grouping applications which are not addressed so far, please compile them and send them uh, to CIB secretary with a copy to Dr. Malhotra. Dr. Raju Kapoor, uh, and one point I will also uh, miss uh, for the uh, information of uh, Honorable Chairman uh, now uh, of the committee as well as uh, of this session along with Dr. Naik, that we had under his chairmanship only, we had already approved the guidelines for my... So we had proposed to the government of India and probably Dr. Anupama is also pro will be proposing that those which are uh, those chemicals which are for uh, registration and label expansion for minor crops because 85% of the crops are uh, in the country are um, off, off label use of uh, yes. is happening. And uh, to talk about what to talk about it, 4,000 million US dollar worth of spices are exported. None of the pesticides are registered uh, with the great difficulty under Codex Committee on Pesticide Residue with the monitoring data we have been able to do for 10 pesticides, 10, 10 spices. But those which are minor crops, which, which constitute the maximum amount, sir, all horticultural crops and all only the pesticides have been registered on 83 crops out of 554 crops in the country. So you can imagine that 45 is uh, about 450 Pesticide I means about 85% about, uh, of the crops are registering offline registration. So those we, we have to fast track such kind of thing. Well, well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Chakravarti, I think all, all of the house, they might be knowing it, that Dr. Chakravarti was the key person where, uh, who, who made uh, these, these crop grouping guidelines. And I remember we discussed and one in the NAS complex meeting, uh, NAS complex also one meeting was held. And in depth discussion took place, and several participants were. You were chairman. Uh, you so were also. What, yeah, two points. On two points, we need clarification from you also. I think you can better explain here. I may be the right person for that one. One is MRL extrapolation, he's telling. Right. So we can throw light on that part. Another is, which, which I would like to mention here, and I will, uh, I'll just call upon to the industry that here a lot of informations are available in our ICR system to our crop-based institutes for minor crops. So if they share that information or industry can request them or uh, they can pay them some little amount for uh, sharing that knowledge because here, here one reservation is there that if any request comes from uh, our research institutions, we will not be in a position to consider that proposal, but the original registrant of that molecule, which they have taken registration for some other uh, crop, but now they want label claim expansion through crop grouping part. So they need to apply because ultimately responsibility will be the will be with the industry. That yes, particular because MRL issue, toxicity issues, several issues are there. Who will be in case of any mishap or any kind of uh, other other uh, uh, abnormality? Who will be the uh, answer? Who will be answerable? So I, at least industry needs to take the ownership, and they need to come forward for, from that angle. This is my viewpoint. So you further add on these two points. One is MRL extrapolation. Another is this is this is the issue which is now cropping up, and it has come before me also. Right, sir. Uh, what has been done under crop grouping? The entire 554 crops have been grouped under 28 subgroups, and and there is a there is one representative crop of, for each of these groups, and MRL suppose uh, uh, has to be done on on a group say say cauliflower group. Though those uh, which are falling under the cauliflower group, uh, the the international 
organization they say internationally codex committee says that uh, if somebody has to register or a, a label or la go for label expansion uh, on cauliflower he has to do that residue uh, analysis or, or study on on um, uh, this thing residue data on broccoli but in india uh, we we uh, impressed upon the codex that our major crop is not broccoli which is there in india uh, in in uh, usa and european countries and western countries but we said we want to register on this so they said okay uh, all other crops on which uh, the, you we because it crop grouping can be country specific depending upon the pest scenario this depending upon the mode of receiving pesticides on them the crops are grouped it is not based on a family or based on that suppose up ground even if a potato it will be underground will be grouped with underground potato will be grouped with something overground say stuff will be grouped with something where the pesticide um, uh, the the pest scenario or the application mode is uh, same so in such crop one group or two members of a group suppose a group is there in a in a in in cooker bits family cooker bits group so there are only one cucumber has to be done the residue has to exist on cucumber but so that that particular uh, mrl can be extra used because cucumber is the one which is most susceptible to accumulate uh, the pesticide residue so the crop representative crop is the one it is selected based on the one which can retain most of the even like uh, um, like say in cucurbit uh, there is a pumpkin pumpkin will not be able to having that much residue on that whereas we have to register a, a, a residue on cucumber even if we want to have a label on uh, pumpkin so that automatically it becomes very safe because the 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 residue uh, remains very uh, very less in that case so residue we don't have to go for again and again but bio efficacy needs to be done if there are 40 crops in a group called cucurbit group uh, cucumber residue has to be developed and bio efficacy has to be developed in other crops where we are taking so mrl will be not not exploited or extended on all the crops based on one bio efficacy bio efficacy has to be done in all the crops but mrl will be same mrl will be same for the most vulnerable crop of that group uh whether i don't know whether i could clear myself or clarify you know, myself i i i can just come in dr kurthi once because see yeah. uh, the yeah. fact is that crop grouping has been approved quite some time back but it is still not taking off uh, yeah so maybe you know colleagues here could say okay what is holding people back because this is an excellent opportunity so so maybe uh, people from regulatory somebody wants to uh, yeah yeah i will explain to sir kapoor saab the requirements in 407 rc which was the crop grouping meeting says two location data on that particular crop and one location residue yes. so the data has been generated by the industry we have submitted to cib and more than one and a half years have already passed now you know the scrutiny has not started so wow. the ten, the you know confusion in the mind of the cib experts are one mrl pro forma which has to be completed by cib and sent to food safety and do they need to do any kind of explanation to the food safety because food safety has been looking into multi location residue and this is this will be only one location residue that we have given so, so that is what uh, dr anivan that yeah. is the one and the guidelines has been approved that in instead of uh, four different locations for expansion label expansion on as a crop grouping or group mrl only one location is needed so yeah. fssai okay. has to agree because that's a government of india and cibrc is also government of india yeah, so yeah yeah uh, and elsewhere outside except for the country like india other they don't ask even one uh, residue hmm. whereas we have insisted to instill more confidence and that was also another understanding that one residue studies will be done that too will be given off or that will be exempted once we we have the experience and confidence to see that the the, the residue on the res, uh, this uh, representative crop always remain within that limit yeah 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 so so yeah, this you are is correct sir uh, only thing is that unless this happens and we get a label approved i know uh, so i know you timeline, have been, yeah. uh, so i think i think sir to sum it up to sum it up dr chakravarti to sum it up i think uh, what is required is basically a bit of a clarity at the cib level 
because possibly yeah. the experts there uh, are not either okay. understanding Manutrai or not okay. willing okay. to take the well, well, I'll, I'll just respond to it. I'll respond to it. Anyway, I have, I have just now uh, 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 aware about the issue which you have just explained, Mr. Mr. Gangopadhyayji. So here, what we will do, two types of decisions are required to be taken at RC level. One is first acceptance of the application which you have done after a thorough discussion by the RC committee. We will analyze your bioefficacy data. We will see that where you are going to further compare it and what kind of MRL uh, uh, level is required to be fixed into. Ultimately, MRL information is also given by you. Yeah. And that, that's the only information which is further passed on to FSSAI for further consideration. But anyway, I have noted your points. We will discuss. We will do it on a, on a fast track and uh, we will welcome such proposals if it uh, comes to the RC. And uh, definitely this issue will be discussed in the next RC. So okay. maybe, uh, maybe you know, uh, uh, sir, thank you so much, sir. I mean, uh, this is the advantage of having you in the meeting because then uh, the boss is here. We can, uh, uh, we can the, all be assured that there will be action. For the information of RC, are, uh, all those people who are going for group level expansion, they should cite a different in a category that is a label expansion or group MRL expansion. So that, so that it will be fast tracked, automatically kept in a, in a different channel. Uh, so that and then then they will be seen and if they require the quality meets the requirement like sir uh, what dr malhotra has uh, has uh, has a concern that if the residue mrl they they do not have to fix if the the on the basis of that single residue it remains within the residue which is already fixed on the representative yeah, yeah. crop it falls within that category. Limit, so it is almost the point zero one. You are right. You are right. Dr. One. Chakravarti, what the fear is with my consultants, with my experts, that how to deal with such issues? Sir, we have to... We there have to there have will be a separate the... category. There will yes. be a separate category. As we do it for MRL information, which is passed on to FSSAI for further consideration, similar kind of information will go and there will be a mention that it is a group MRL. Right. Right, right. So this is a kind of, I think, uh, uh, a kind of inhibition which is existing uh, in, in our expert that is required to be removed. That can I, sir, can I submit? Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Yeah. please. Sir, uh, uh, it is just... Uh... Uh, you know, in relation to this, the point that you raised that how this kind of, you know, delays can be avoided and how this should be taken on priority. And now, because being in the, that scientific panel on pesticide residues in FSSAI, I have, you know, uh, I'm being the member of that, you know, I have just uh, looked at that perspective that there is a need to bring together CIBRC and FSSAI periodically to, you know, so there should be a kind of, they should be put, uh, brought into the form of a like working group meeting of the CIBRC and FSSAI regarding so the changes, some of the changes regarding the rules and the guidelines and the things that are happening. So it's, it will be sort of refresher training to both of them together so correct, that if correct, there correct. are any issues, I, so, I, so I, that, I that would help. I, yeah. I, I, would help. Well, I would very strongly support issues. her. I yeah. very strongly, I mean, we've been, support, we've been urging for this for the last two years, three years, but I think somehow this but members are also there from RC yeah. used to attend uh, this meeting uh, and they, they so we have uh, sir, the honor of having uh, anyway, Dr. Now, now, Dr. So Dr. Dr. Malotra, you have to see that uh, the guidelines you have approved and guidelines may no doubt near. This is uh, the doubt is in the minds of CIBRC uh, people, those who are there. Because guidelines we have given, who are they doing? If they follow it, everybody can, anybody can uh, follow that one. And that is in sync with the codex rule. That is in sync with the uh, with with the Canada, USA, and you are there. And uh, I am surprised Dr. Obray is not telling. Uh, he was in CLI at that time. And then he himself was a part CCFI, CLI, and all of them are, were a part of uh, making it. Abhi yeah. aapko koi problem to nahi hai. Jo, what Anirban's ka, Anirban ka case hai, and Dr. Anirban ka case hai, that is straightforward. That that qualifies for fast tracking. So it has to come to the notice of CI Barsi. Or aapko so, aapko koi bolna hai. 
So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So so in the at the, in the interest of time, let me just move forward. Uh, so so the decision here is that uh, at the level of uh, Dr. Malhotra, he would possibly uh, see within the system what can be done, and then uh, Dr. Like Dr. Arumbama said, if we can have let's say two or three meetings every year between uh, the CIB and the uh, <coughs> CIBRC and the uh, FSSI, so that these things can be sorted out. Okay, let me get the next uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Sajal Kumar Biswas. Uh, Miss Okem. Dr. Sajal Biswas. He's not there, I believe. He's not there. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Anirban, you have anything else to add to what yeah, you said? Yes, sir. Just one thing uh, on uh, the. We have already talked a lot about fast tracking registrations and uh, what is required for uh, uh, the, you know, the. So, just made a small slide on to it. Uh, uh, you know, I will be very fast on it. Uh, uh, so, you know, we said on crop grouping, we have already done. The second sign is an international sign about minor change. It is also already a guideline. And the third thing is about the, uh, the slide got changed. I'm sorry. I'll not share all these. I'm sharing only the first. See, my one. suggestion would be if you do not go product specific. No, 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 sir. Be... Uh, sir, that was the uh, that was the follow-up slide which I actually mm. have sh shared with Dr. Anupama. Mm. So I'm sharing only one slide. So what I'm trying to say is these all the guidelines are under shape and a lot of work under Dr. Malhotra's leadership has been done. But you know what we what are the issues? You know, first I said level expansion more than two years. New molecule registration, you know, all the uh, MNC companies, including us uh, leaders, have submitted new molecules in parallel with USA and uh, Europe. And we are now in four years, more than four years time frame. I have examples of two molecules where Canada, uh, Australia and India submitted together. Now they are already registered and I still could not get the, you know, uh, get into the queue for uh, the scrutiny. So, and the next, what we already discussed about crop grouping, minor change, Suddenly, you know, very uh, momentous decisions have been taken, but the implementation piece is somehow missing, Kapoor sir. Mm -hmm. So what I sub propose is in the green box on the right, right side, it has already been touched upon. I will not, uh, you know, again, repeat resourcing of CIB and RC, and you have talked on various lines. Uh, the second thing is about F2F meetings. So we had this once a week chance uh, due to the COVID, this has moved into the VC. But then I would uh, dearly propose that this can uh, start again because at the ground, various teething issues would have been, uh, can be mitigated and things uh, made, may be made faster if these meetings are again reinstated with industry and the CIB experts. And, uh, you know, so, so that is the rest three of the points I have already touched. So something Malhotra sahab will have to do on new molecules, you know. Four years yeah. for a new molecule. So we are also unable to show our representation to our global uh, counterparts. So four years for uh, new molecule registration and more than two years for level expansion, this has to be somehow addressed, sir. Okay. So, I think, I think uh, uh, Anirban, your point well taken. So you can basically, if this is all that you have to share, then this you is, can possibly, This is all, this is all. So that you I can, have. you can just uh, uh, go off your representation mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, basically, I think we are already under the 3D program, we are already talking about fast tracking. So I hope action would be taken. Uh, as of today, I think uh, since the joint secretary, now the additional secretary, who is now uh, the chairman managing director of FCI. So I hope uh, his uh, moving out does not derail that 3D. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Atish Chandra is now the CMD of FC, uh, FCI. So so I hope uh, that happens. So, but then Dr. Malhotra is there. So I, I think we are in safe hands. So, Whatever has been done, we will have to possibly follow that up quicker and faster and uh, make sure that, you know, we are uh, moving fast on that, sir. So on that, uh, Dr. Malhotra, do you have a word to convey on that? What's up? You are in mute, sir. Dr. Malhotra, sir? Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll put our request to him again. Uh, as he, as he, uh, I think possibly he may be come to something else. Okay, so now uh, Dr. Jitendra Kumar, uh, uh, IPFT. Our good friend, Dr. Jitendra Kumar. Okay, if he's not there, then uh, we have the uh, <coughs> Dr. Anupama Singh. This is interesting. <clears throat> 
good to good to host you, Dr. Anubhava Singh. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I thank the IPS to give me this opportunity to speak on this occasion. I like uh, I like to I take two minutes only, and uh, I like to share my you know brief presentation because it will be easier for the please, please. audience to. Please. Yeah, I'll be speaking here, you know, as a. So, am I allowed to share? Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. So. Okay. A lot of people have donated time right now, so we have plenty of time. No worry. Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, could you go on a uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, though uh, i'll come straight away because the as the topic assigned in this stakeholders yeah. meet is that uh, you know what are the key issues and then where are the opportunities in the plant protection and uh, because i will be speaking here uh, a lot has been said about uh, the the grievances of course the concerns the genuine concerns of the industry on which i'm sure our government and our learned uh, Prof professor malhotra ji they are working on it so i'll be speaking on you know uh, the the con the um, from the perspective of the public r and d sector but that is that is means from the public r and d institution side because when we are talking about uh, the the uh, chaos and the priorities and the priority setting then there is always a, a call like uh, it should be done it should be done but then where is the way forward and if you correctly remember then during the stakeholder meet where uh, tas had uh, taken a lead and all the three major plant protection societies had been roped in the way forward was that there has to be an enabling environment and there has to be a priority setting which i have flagged here also so if i take you know ban of pesticides as one of the issues in the right in the present context which is actually keeping the industry the uh, the farmers and all the stakeholders quite on a on an anxious side then of course since this is a policy related issue right now awaiting decisions but then opportunity when we talk about then there is of course it's a huge opportunity for us when i'm saying for us it doesn't mean the institutes so it is for us that is the public private partnership when we say public private partners that is the only key for india to really make big onto the global sector where onto the global map when i say so there is that is an opportunity which i see strongly as the, that there is an opportunity for r and d for future on discovery of new candidate molecules i really don't bother on the point which is being really sad and actually the point of concern always is that we shrug off this this particular priority by saying that it is it's a huge capital investment thing fair enough if it is a capital investment thing then you know public there that there is a need to really identify whether then it is a priority if it is a priority then there then uh, you know we have to look on it that discovery of new candidate molecules for future in case you know say the the worst of the worst is that all the pesticides which are F, F, you know quite effective but they are so called old so you know if they are banned then what next will we will we always be you know looking forward for the import of the molecules or for the new molecules which are being you know researched upon and by the industry and the public private uh, public partnership outside or will india do something so what has to be done on that count so where who will take the lead and who will do of course there is then uh, you know the need, in the need i'll come upon that and then second part as uh, uh, our uh, learned uh, honorable uh, you know um, uh, uh, dr chakravarti he mentioned that during uh, when he was calling upon the buyer representative about the smart formulations so the smart formulation and delivery system r and d also is a huge sector and there is there, that is where you know we have to look upon and then what is the need so you know these are of course the opportunities but then we need to have you know there is a need i urge upon the policy uh, level uh, um, our authorities that we need to show up real smartness on the priority setting and enabling environment for the lab to land mode r and d purely in country and for that i i coined this term not as the national plant protection or national agrochemical so this is basically a national plant medicine mission that we need to look at 
the way you know our pharma missions are there their r and d is happening so the same way the agrochemical r and d in country needs to be given that much focus as the space r and d and the pharma pharma r and d are being, being given that kind of you know uh, emphasis simply by saying that agrochemical sector is a champion sector is not going to make any if any you know much of the difference if we will keep uh, you know saying that it is a capital intensive thing okay but then it has to be given that priority and for that uh, as i have already said if if we do give that if we do get that kind of uh, opportunity then of course the the research institutes a hand in hand approach with the industry i don't think we are less than you know any other uh, research bodies of the of the globe in creating opportunities on the capacity building and the our own you know more, you know the the festival of patents i am a patent savvy person with uh, a, a good number of patents in my own basket and the agricultural chemicals having you know huge number of patents in its basket of uh, portfolios so you, we know the importance of patents so that's why you know we must look upon the molecule r and d and the formulation r and d in country so 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 for that but what is needed for that is of course a priority setting so i'm i'll uh, urge upon again our policy makers to look upon this as a as a as a point of you know urgency so that is that is it as a as a r and d representative second part is that uh, the another issue is the quality biopesticides uh, in our speaker session there these issues were this there were certain sessions and uh, it, it's a coincidence that i also considered that as a major issue that uh, when we talk about the biopesticides uh, the major question mark is on the quality so what is the opportunity that there is a need to mine you know where are we right now we are out of the total wealth we have you know harnessed so far only 0.1 or 0.2% of the total biodiversity of our country and with the kind of you know the the expertise available with the kind of uh, the emphasis which is right now be being given by the government of india and also at the global level regarding the ipm regarding the biopesticides importance and all so there is a need to mine and harness the biodiversity of our country in of course again not in the in the in the isolation approach it in the ppp mode so here metabolomics is the key to that and uh, major research institutes they are all well equipped with this kind of facilities the only need is again for the uh, for the industry to show that kind of faith and trust and you know uh, take on the the r and d uh, organizations uh, as their uh, trusted partners to come forward to invest and again to get back so there uh, the wealth exists only thing is now to harness on on that and uh, no better time than the present when we are talking about you know the sustain uh, the sdgs the greening the agriculture natural farming organic farming all sorts of things are there and the biopesticide market is growing like anything i i'm so happy that right now here there are the industry representatives from across india and outside so it can, no other platform can be the better platform for me to voice this so if at all you know i'm able to really make that point and then you know biopesticide formulations uh, as uh, sir had chakravarti sir had raised and uh, uh, the biopesticide formulations of course you know i i won't go into the technical uh, parts of it we all know that and if i talk about as an ic iri representative or as an icr rnd representative then we have the excellent trained man force but how many of the industry represented how many of the industry uh, associations or the industry they know that you know there is a, there is a point which is really waiting for to be explored and to be exploited i am using the word exploited because it is the industry which is which will show the uh, light of the tunnel uh, at, at the end of the tunnel the, the leads that are being generated here with a, in a very dedicated manner so again here i must say that the ppb partnership in this regard is the must and the key to foster i'm not saying make in india i'm saying invent and make in india mission so here you know i will urge upon the industry i'll urge upon the government to look into it you know as the national biopesticide mission into which you know the part there is a structured partnership between industry and the r and d units of the research organizations then you Thank know you. there is a point on sir give me just okay okay just one Please. minute 
yeah i'll uh, there are two points only that i like to make uh, make sir that one is the policy and r and d on nano pesticides when we are talking about the reducing load in environment and greening the agriculture and of course nano is talked about but not much has been really you know it has not come to the surface and i'm sure uh, the the multinationals they are also doing a lot on the nanos but nano but it's still you know again a question mark on that so policy level clarity that's why i have taken this point regarding the agri nano products and technologies unlike you know the pharma nano uh, products so because it's an open environment so there is a need to do the to do the structural structured r and d bioefficacy and risk assessment in country ecosystem perspective so what is being done right now is a is a patch based approach the universities keep publishing their thesis and uh, papers are published but not much is coming so if, if there is an expeditious action on that and the priority setting on that i i hope there can be an agri nano tech mission based uh, working on uh, uh, this thing and here i'll uh, before i end up i will like to uh, because i could get from the uh, the um, lectures which were given by some of our preceding people that uh, many may not be aware what uh, icr or iri is having in its basket so we are working here in iri at division of agricultural chemicals in a very interdisciplinary and across the interinstitutional approach on the smart agrochemical formulations with a real multi target and multi modal action modal action approach they are uh, in a computational and in all sorts of you know high tech researches are done here and then bio rational r and d on the innovative biopesticide formulations we have lot of patents and we are working towards more uh, ip filing on that and then r and d on nano pesticide products r and d on molecular discovery where there is now a flagship platform which is being now uh, proposed to the icr and then innovative mi microbial pesticide and pgpr formulations and to to substantiate that and to really foster a uh, r and d uh, ppp partnership we have the state of the art facilities that can be exploited and harnessed thank you very much thank you so much dr anupama every time i listen to you you know i get back to my own company's vision where we are talking about women in agriculture and agriculture in, and science in agriculture both of them merge at you so you are the perfect ambassador uh, for this one so thank, thank you so sir. much i think i fully agree with you dr raju she has a place in fmc then <laughs> no, I mean she. Uh, you know uh, what you say is that uh, the the my my glass is small. She is ocean. So no, no, sir. Uh, no, I think uh, what she is saying makes a lot of sense. I think the Indian farmer deserves innovation. Very simply, if we can do that in country, definitely we should do that as a first priority. But if we can't do that, we must get the products and make sure that the innovations are available to the. Pharma. and i think uh, what dr anupama i think uh, globally what is done is all the universities go out make their pitches uh, make their pitch to the uh, corporate sector and you know they pitch for uh, collaborative research i'm very sure uh, we can i i can possibly discuss with you uh, offline but i think uh, you you got to do that because uh, unless it's a, it's a mutual trust so uh, they trust you and you trust them and that's where it will move forward but but the need is well underlined and i think it's a it's a high time that you made this call and i'm i'm so proud uh, that we have people like you in the system who are passionate about moving this forward so thank you so very much for pointing it out uh, let's move now to uh, uh, who's next okay sorry uh, then we have uh, dr anesh shakil uh, division of agriculture chemicals icr ira dr shakil are you there no okay uh, so dr agrawal okay in that case uh, dr pratibha sharma uh, uh, sorry you did not have time to talk about it dr raju to start to dr harish has few points i think he is raising his uh, fingers maybe i i, uh, I couldn't see him uh, yeah yeah okay. he, yes please uh, harish yeah so basically is no counter it is basically to talk about the philosophy of top care federation we are basically working on make in india we have had a major sitting with all the companies we have given a list to the government of india saying that 35 intermediates 89 formulations and 31 technicals can be made in india and we are requesting them to include this under pli scheme so that's a proposal which has already gone in december to the secretary chemicals and to the secretary in agriculture ministry plus we have also approached the commerce ministry saying that pli under pli agrochemicals should be taken and we are committed to uh, manufacture these intermediates technical and formulations which are being imported in india 
it might take a span of two three years but then that's the time frame which we are asking for certain benefits also have been incorporated but Absolutely. we would like you to focus on recommend something in make in india Absolutely. manufacturing i fully areas. agree with you i fully agree with you dr mishra i i think i have also taken it up many many times in the last meeting uh, just about a week back at the uh, agrochem summit i asked the same question i said whatever happened to the pla in agrochemicals and the secretary chemical says please don't ask this question <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> question don't, has become don't, fractious, don't, so. don't, don't lose hope we'll continue i know so we'll continue to do that so thank you yeah. so very much uh, thank you. in that case now there are two people left uh, one is my own self <laughs> and one is uh, <laughs> so so maybe sir we can have her presentation first <clears throat> uh, and then i can come Malutra, in there is dr malotra there is he silent uh, you know people have not been making interesting voices that's how he's possibly <laughs> the malotra is, is there so he's there and he's there oh. आपके बिना तो मजा ही नहीं आता सर आपको आप मैं बड़े बड़े देखिए इंटरेस्ट से ये लास्ट जो अभी बात थी वो मैं नहीं सुन पाया इससे पहले जो अनुपमा जी बोल रही थी रियली इट वाज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लाइक टू रियली रेस्पॉन्ड टू दैट एनीवे मिस्टर राजू व्हाट यू वांट वांट टू से नाउ सो नाउ 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 पैनल डिस्कशन इज ओवर Or uh, sir, just uh, oh. just couple of things uh, we thought we will move forward one of it, it clearly from my side is uh, of course we have discussed it but uh, you know somewhere uh, respecting the patents is becoming very important mm -hmm. so so when we give regulatory approval I, i think we have had this discussion there also where they said that the rc could be culpable in case a patented product is granted registration so i hope that decision is carried forward and it is taken to its logical conclusion uh, uh, so that so that you know when we are, when we are looking at approving the patented products we are actually clearly seeing that the rc does not get embroiled in the uh, legal tiff or it does not become a party to abatement of a uh, violation of a patent of any a person just because both the arms of the government have to talk together so we would request sir a follow up on that so we will leave this request with you Uh, uh unless you have a because that day i think you also agreed that you know there should be a affidavit taken from the applicant that there is no uh, uh that, that the person is not uh, in violation of any patent or that he and then then you know the, the original applicant uh, whoever is the patent holder could also be kept informed that you know while you are in a patent this application has been filed so this is one request we were making uh, the other request has been uh, made time and again it is about uh, Uh, when you are looking at uh, incentivizing people for bringing in new molecules first of all let me just get back to what i said to dr anupama is that if the technology is available in the country it must get the first priority and if it is not available i think the farmers cannot be held uh, ki okay the sal baad aaya hai naya molecule to ab 10 saal tak hold kar so i think we need to facilitate the introduction of those newer facilities uh, newer uh, technologies to the farmer i think there is some destruction at his end so let him get over with it so dr raju i think lakshmi has some point let let the final word before the, dr malhotra takes over lakshmi you have any point uh, it goes to biopesticide eco friendly uh, so uh, eco friendly that's a good word yes sir uh, i think whatever is covered uh, so far uh, there is nothing covered from the biopesticide uh, that's what i was here uh, per se because see the label claim, yeah the the basic thing i mean label claim uh, is uh, quite different uh, when you are looking at uh, a chemical pesticide to a biopesticide see if you are looking at a biopesticide like a npv for uh, a heliotis i don't see the reason why it should be Uh, done in various things because everybody knows wherever the heliotis is there only all those crops can be used because it doesn't have a re resurgence or residue or reentry or uh, uh, any of those kind of issues where uh, uh, label expansion needs to be done i think that is one of the things which we need to be looked at i mean similarly on the pheromone also that particular insect may be a polyphagous uh, pest maybe it may be coming in different crops why the re registration should be done on this and uh, the residues are not there in the biopesticides i mean in that kind of a thing where it should be done maybe that kind of a angle should also be looked at sir so interesting point what what you saying dr sir is that yeah 
sorry what you're saying is basically uh, that instead of uh, carrying out multi locational trials if the product establishes itself in one crop one pest it should be given uniform uh, uniform uh, uh, approval across crops right no no, no. i am not saying multi location there can be multi location but what i am saying is label expansions okay so no. if, if you are taking a bt it, it is known for all lepidopteran so how much i mean see how many if you can if you have to do a number of crops and number of pests that needs to be so much and the biopesticides can never see the uh, this thing i mean basically biopesticides are not the multinational companies most of them are smes and they don't have the uh, time and energies to do all these expansions and other things whenever it is required we are ready to do uh, i mean just because representing one global company i can come back that uh, uh, all global companies all major global companies are big players on biopesticides very big players i i do agree globally i think so in agree. india we are in india we are not able to come dr lakshmi is because of the constraint that we discussed in the question number 1 in the beginning where the imports were constrained i think the point was raised by uh, one of the uh, colleagues of there so once you allow that you will see a tour of innovations coming into the country so i think dr malhotra has very kindly agreed to uh, have that but what you are saying is very interesting because if it applies to why pesticide same principle should apply to chemical pesticide also because in that case if a pesticide is known to uh, you know impact one pest uh, ir- then irrespective of crop it should be approved no But i i'm not making that wherever the situation demands in that way when i taken the example of npv for a heliotis or a spodoptera specially wherever it occurs in pheromones it attracts only that and there is no residue no uh, resurgence no reentry issues no waiting period issues so why yeah, should... yeah i i i believe uh, dr lakshmi uh, dr raju there is a strength in that means case to case basis like like i am not saying blanket it, it is non specifically it kills lepidopteran pest certain cell but then but then but then somebody says like in, in fall army worm specific um, uh, npv That's different that's a different so but if it is a one strain of fall um, uh, army worm specific npv then it should be effective against npv whether it is in bombay or it is in madras or in kashmir so yeah. anywhere it goes so so it should not be uh, the, that kind of where chemical has to be studied on every label expansion for label expansion on each crop there because we are controlling not crop we are controlling the pest on which is same on all of them and there is no pesticide issues so mrl is not an issue here so I, there i fully I think, support that sir i yes. fully support that only i am saying is the same logic can be extended to chemicals as well because the uh, principle remains the same no yeah, no yeah, chemical, I mean, chemical, chemical you cannot do chemical to mrl it is based on this one host if you are applying on tomato tebucorazole uh, on i am talking about bioefficacy sir i am talking about bioefficacy bioefficacy again it depends no the pest because the strain of the pest you don't know whether helicoverpa armigera the same strain goes to cotton and the same goes to pigeon pea maybe the same strain goes to pigeon pea because they, they are their collateral crops within the same season they are growing but the one helicoverpa which is there on on the cotton and on one on brinjal whether they are same so i think need- i think it's a good point i think we can, it's a good point to park for a separate broad discussion Yeah, and I would I would fully support it. Right. Yeah. right. One more issue, sir. Uh, what I would like to say, is, see, uh, see the biological uh, uh, companies. Uh, see today with the new gadget notification for the biostimulants coming. I I just cite an example, sir. There is a six months time, and uh, in every state there are at least three hundred fifty companies who are in uh, biostimulant issues. Sir, this, this needs to be heard by Dr. Malhotra. Uh, yes. Uh, what the concern? Whether Dr. Malhotra is there, sir? Sir, sir. आप जब वो off camera जाते हैं ना सब घबरा जाते हैं. Sir, जब जब आप camera के पीछे चले जाते हैं तो हमें डर लगता है. कौन समझेगा? Ultimately ऐसा है ना भाई office में हूँ तो मेरे को बहुत सारी multitasking भी करनी पड़ती है. लेकिन issues attend करने पड़ते हैं. But I mean because it's a mass closing also. हाँ, I know. तो अब Lakshmi आप बताइए. Uh, you just tell about bar stimulant but nobody has covered those because i myself yes. have certain point 
बट मैं नहीं आपके पास सवाल भी आपके पास है जवाब भी आपके पास नहीं लक्ष्मी का मुझे क्वेश्चन जो बताइए अभी नोटिफिकेशन के बाद जो आप बात कर रहे हो यस आई थिंक नाउ वी नीड टू डिस्कस ए गुड फीडबैक इज नाउ कमिंग फ्रॉम now come industries also asking that microbials have not been listed into it microbial yes. should be there this is one of the feedback then they are asking that uh, we need to uh, uh, decrease the number of uh, i mean uh, location and others they are asking number of years seasons etc etc those are required to be reduced and so several suggestions are coming time and again and uh, then they are asking that some uh, toxicological data which you are asking for again uh, it's a it's a very uh, uh, i mean uh, i i mean very stringent so right. you are asking for the very safe products that toxicological data is, are required to be submitted but anyway i have assured them that here if you will go through this notification is it is clearly written that here product specific guidelines will be made these guidelines are general in nature and uh, dr chakravarty is the key person behind uh, behind formulation of this uh, general guideline so specific guidelines will be there product based eight categories are there but anyway now you are asking that one more should be added microbials and others because there are many sir, sir microbials are already there microbials yeah my, i think my mistake something happened that it has something happened off somewhere it is written microbial but inside somewhere it is omitted but anyway that that rectification is required to be done and uh, as i have mentioned in my in, in my inaugural speech or i should say my my outset remarks when i made i clearly mentioned that here we are going to conduct a meeting through this meeting we are going to set our agenda and further we need to decide that uh, what are the points where the where we need to further uh, have a kind of clarity if we have to put this uh, this regulatory system in force so from that angle many things are required to be set and uh, and and uh, uh, we have decided to again discuss with the industry and whenever anybody approaches to me i am approaching to me or if he calls me then i i am requesting him that please send your suggestions to us to your email uh, because we need to discuss with the group of our experts uh, by the committee so here we are waiting for uh, notification that one more notification will come uh, regarding uh, regarding that uh, central biostimulant committee now notification has been done but for uh, for that particular committee one notification is awaited soon it will come already it has been approved but it is in the stage of uh, uh, translation and something something so after after approval only then we will be in a position to discuss that one so biostimulant i think this is not it, it, it it's not far away now so now now it is just just we are reaching uh, reaching nearer to it so six months issue uh, that i uh, mentioned here but already delays on our part we may further uh, extend it i am not assuring it don't don't take it guaranteed that if i am saying any word it will be captured you are going to record it and sometimes even <laughs> so so kindly don't your take, your hint, there are many things yeah sir, your, your hinting is assurance <laughs> okay anyway we'll do that if we we speak we'll do that so 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 from that angle if needed we will extend it and uh, already our uh, our biggest extension again it will be in my purview now gazette notification has come once gazette notification comes it means it's a government order so if any change change is hap, change happens then again it will go through the same get the permission and all other things so that is that's the point that's why i am mentioning here so uh, i think two years period has been given to develop the data submit the dossier and if any product is already doing business we are not going to put any sort of hurdle hurdle to them so uh, so so let them do it but they should start generating data they should give a proof that they have now started the exercise for generating the data and information that's why this six months uh, 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 time that has been given uh, right from uh, from the notification date which which uh, 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 from the date of notification i mean so i think i will not be in a position to tell much deep and uh, some some other points related to biostimulant but i i think we let's hope for the best something good will come definitely and and uh, in a larger picture 
now uh, uh, country will be in a position to regulate such uh, such such products and definitely quality products will be there and quality assurance system will come in force because that will that will follow this regulatory system uh, automatically it will uh, help in uh, boosting the quality product anyway uh, these were the points related to bio stimulant if uh, i think let me continue with my own uh, concluding remark yeah. or would you like to say something before that sir uh, thank you very much sir uh, for your clarification but my one humble request sir uh, what happens is uh, when we need to generate this kind of a data uh, is it possible to suggest for uh, uh, because most of them are from msc's are small small and medium scale can the pool data be possible or access to data from as uh, the supply source then that will be helpful for make in india and doing thing faster sir mr lakshmi i think nobody knows better than you so you further tell us because you know the experience of pesticides in 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 totality in particular so yes. in 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 case of uh, pesticide what we'll do we give a permanent registration to to 93 category okay then we have yes, category 93b where we give a temporary registration okay by the time uh, uh, industry will come up with some some kind of 94 they will get a time lag to 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 uh, uh, come up to the expect, expectations as per the guidelines so the, 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 always there are provisions there are pros and cons thank you thank you very much sir for the kind from, from that angle so Can't repeat registration yeah now now second point which i am asking you why because i am asking yes. first registrant original registrant should be there because considering the original registrant you will make the comparison then only you will you will allow the others to come in picture to compare with the with the with the one original uh, registrant and then we will set the guidelines as per fco so here fco it will be dealt in the fco so so original registrant somebody needs to first time register then only you will compare all other will come into the good i am asking thank you thank you answer to your question yes sir thank, thank you, sir. you very much so uh, uh, anybody uh, else uh, anybody uh, else who I, i had a point uh, yes. whether in case of biostimulant 94 is given i don't think because uh, biostimulant is not like a pesticide uh, where a specific chemical is there a biostimulant suppose i make with a proper, proper a certain proportion of vitamin certain proportion of protein certain preparation of humic acid and uh, another person he may mix something uh, else also some polysaccharide with it so that will be different so i think that that will be a kind of trade no, no, i i just for example sake i cited here i wanted to tell him that one original registrant should be there to make comparison for for further giving him another registration but anyway uh, your point is uh, is well taken because there is a no provision for uh, 94 or 93 kind of thing because it is it will be governed under the fco so under the fco a uh, uh, broad guidelines and broad uh, spectrum that has been adopted for by bio, central biostimulant committee so the, the, that will be done then then again it will be case to case basis we have broad eight categories accordingly uh, it will be standardized because there since it is a bio product being a bio product there are many things which could not be established as such as we do in case of chemicals some mirror images and all other things are there so if there is a little change in process definitely uh, 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 many many means he will have to reveal the process also if there is any change in the process what kind of raw material he is going to use what kind of inert ci he is going to use uh, there will be many other things which are further required to be looked into uh, i think still uh, some deliberation is needed on many fronts but as and when any case appears and 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 will be put up before the committee uh decisions will be taken accordingly yes sir thank you so much sir so any any uh, body else who wants to intervene now because uh, i think uh, is we are already 532 sorry i have not been able to maintain the timeline but a couple one one uh, one more point uh, on the main issue not on the the same can i can yes, i please, ask please, please please go ahead add one please yeah sir uh, i i support uh, mr raju kapoor's uh, Uh, suggestion on the patent sir uh, the biological companies i mean bio companies are also uh, uh, basically they are generating more number of patents into this uh, as we see uh, the protection is definitely needed sir uh, 
for smaller companies more required uh, the larger companies they have their own uh, armor to fight with but the smaller companies are really uh, defending their patent becomes very very expensive maybe some kind of a thing uh, suggestions what uh, mr kapoor has uh, told uh, uh, that should be looked into sir uh, one more thing what i would say as an observation is out of 20 made la- largest selling agrochemicals 19 are out of patent and only one, only one is patented uh, product sir uh, that's the global sales of 20 uh, molecules only one is still in patent or generic they have become generic 19 of them are generic and they are ruling the roost so this is uh, what is the scenario and we wish uh, that newer things to come and make in india to happen more put, uh, patent protection and other things are needed and maybe the way forward will be the biological sir with uh, a kinder gloves so you you pro- one, promote one, we point promote is, you. one point is sure make in india will always get a kind of uh, priority make in india will definitely be promoted because <laughs> national agenda this is government agenda where uh, we feel that atmanirbhar bharat that part but but we have a fear in mind in, in our mind once you start uh, do, uh, regulation doing this one import uh, 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 request will yes, we want that uh, production should happen in india yes sir it's a it's a uh, i mean I, i like i said in the beginning it's a it's a full process of course sir has gone to attend a phone but anyway i think it's a, it's a life cycle uh, of a product so that's why i mentioned that you know the farmer deserves to have the product if it is available in the country it must be fast tracked at the fastest possible space if it is not we must introduce sure. for him and then look at the avenues of how to manufacture that in india as a phase 2 but and but i fully agree with uh, dr lakshman and your point that you know unless you unless you defend those who innovate in india i mean nobody will want to innovate in india so so thank you so yeah. very much pointing it out thank you okay thank in that you. case anybody else any points uh, otherwise we will just wrap it up uh, uh, quickly we have now left with just about 28 participants <laughs> from a big list so before everybody goes out <laughs> mr kapoor i like to thank you and that's the point i'll do after you have spoken up i'll thank you and the others so thank you so okay uh, so uh, if if there is none uh, then in that case uh, uh, ek min dr malhotra i think is uh, okay sir you are back again sir uh, you have already touched this issue on the uh, invasives and the resistant ones <clears throat> the label expansion around them so i think possibly that's one area that we would urge you if you can look at you know providing faster approvals on uh, products and you have already said that if the innovator applies you would possibly fast track the uh, approvals of Uh, expansion of such products to uh, either the resistant or the invasive or the new pests that come about <clears throat> yeah, dr raju i think uh, um, dr anupama is already uh, given the charge to make or develop the the outlines and the points on which any uh, on all these chemicals are can be fast tracked there are six or seven um, uh, areas she has already um, is uh, made and dr anupama if you can tell and uh, that will be uh, a good thing no? uh, I, i think we have also suggested sir abhi abhi i abhi mujhe lagta hai ki i i think she has already spoken now okay already i i think ha she has already given her points we can give uh, in response to her points i'll i'll just little mention in my closing remarks so so let me i think you will get the answer you will get the answer let me just thank everybody and uh, <laughs> thank you dr chakravarty for putting me in this position where i am not able to put my own points across <laughs> but thank you so very much I appreciate that very much and thank you so much for everybody joining in Did let I me just hand it over to dr malhotra for his concluding remarks and then i'll hand it back to uh, dr chakravarty thank okay, you sir thank you thank you so much really i i i can see that uh, here a good discussion took place and uh, our uh, colleagues from industry as well as from our research sector they they gave their uh, valuable input valuable points and uh, several good suggestions have come and uh, mostly people are asking fast track registration for several categories that's really required to be done and already we have done a fast tracking for bio uh, pesticides which includes microbial also so already a kind of uh, feel is there that yes 
we should welcome uh, all such proposals which are related to this biopesticide part. So we are doing it and uh, uh, and we are promoting it. We are helping the industry for that point of view. But uh, Dr. Anupama, I remember she had, she made a very good presentation, and uh, she also mentioned that fast track registration is needed. And uh, then she further mentioned that pheromones as well as uh, nano fibers. This is another area, but nano always there is a fear about this. But how we can overcome that fear? It, it will take time because we need to have long term data. But I'll be very happy if uh, Dr. Anupama could share uh, the informations that at worldwide what regulatory authorities are doing for the nano products. So if you can give me a concept note on that, that what is the status of uh, status uh, uh, at global level for uh, these nano pesticides in particular? I'm saying. So rest products you forget it, but I want information from your side. Related to nano pesticide, but what kind of regulatory authorities? Either it is EPA or uh, it's uh, some other uh, regulatory systems are there in the Europe uh, as well. So that information will really help us in further uh, 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 helping it doing doing this. So I remember as a chairperson of Central Fertilizer Committee, first uh, nano fertilizer, nano urea, that product has been registered. But it is a temporary register, register uh, registration for one year, and uh, we have further asked them to generate some long-term data. Though they have submitted uh, uh, acute informations, then they have submitted some chronic information. But chronic, we need to have long-term data. So that long-term data they they have partially submitted, and uh, and still then then we discuss with this matter with the Central Toxicological Research Institute. Then only we reach to the conclusion because there are chances there 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 are risk uh, 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 chances which are required to be assured so regulatory authorities they are always conservative from that point of view because research people they they see from their different spectacles and uh, and uh, here regulatory authority has its own handlers to to check it and see that how uh, uh, the safe product is so anyway, good good suggestions which you have made and uh, some my, um, some micro uh, herbicides really this is, this is a breakthrough and if such proposals comes we will definitely welcome them and uh, Dr Anupama also mentioned about this quality of the bio, bio pesticides it's really an issue it's a really a great issue before us so here uh, the responsibility lies with the industry they need to assure and they should pass through the quality assurance system and they should make available the quality products in the, uh, to, the, to the farmers. But here, uh, uh, Anupama also mentioned that research, academia, industry partnership, I really agree with you because uh, abroad in the many other, in, uh, many other countries it is happening, either it's Australia or USA, they have a kind of system where uh, a strong partnership is emerging. And, uh, and even uh, we are... Uh, we are sometimes questioned that India does not have original molecule available with us, but if industry comes forward and our, our because I, I have seen several laboratories with, with the industries, they are having very strong setup, which is available with the industry also. Our ag agriculture research institutes, they also have a very good uh, institutional uh, mechanism for nano, as she was mentioning. I remember when I was ADG horticulture, uh, we started one network program on the on the nano uh, use of nano in agriculture, and that research was promoted. And then at that time we identified CPRI Central Potato Research Institute as a lead center, and uh, then several other uh, uh, cooperating centers were there. And uh, that 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 uh, uh, system that networking mode uh, uh, that system uh, that worked. And uh, now today we are having several technologies which are available with us. But we need to see that how we can take them. We can how we can take them forward. Uh, that that's the issue, and uh, the issue lies with the policy also. Uh, here, uh, 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 that networking mode is needed for that. Part. So patent patent production, that patent part also. That uh, Mr. Raju also raised that issue. Again, uh, what I feel, what to my understanding, you can you you may further correct, and uh, later on we can discuss. Here we don't need any clarification. But my, my point is the patent part lies between one company to another company and further doing business. So they, they, they do not have much concern with the patents because it lies with the, with the person 
industry whoever is get going to get the registration for that purpose so uh, ipr issues then data protection several other interconnected issues are there where uh, uh, country has has its reservation and we discussed depth during our meeting at the india habitat center uh, raju raju he knows very well about this point so uh, but you have mentioned that we need to incentivize the people yes incentivization will uh, definitely it will occur if some kind of uh, 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 government as well as industry some kind of uh, uh, collaboration if it happens uh, automatically they will get a kind of uh, a boost to this and the scientists they will also get a kind of boost we we have in the icr system we have a kind of uh, uh, all committee recommendations are there for incentivizing uh, for scientists for this purpose so here uh, uh, one and uh, one more point was there but anyway it has slipped from my mind uh, but anyway a uh, good discussion has taken place i assure you that uh, for uh, for one commitment which i have made uh, for level claim expansion and crop grouping definitely i will discuss this too which mr um, uh one of our uh, colleague he raised that point so these are the points further uh, if if any any point is left out you can further add up, add on and uh, you can you can send me the recommendations you can send me the proceedings and accordingly we'll we'll do that and uh, 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 we'll take the out out of this thank you so much for your active participation i think this was the best uh, 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 panel discussion where it they were very open and our research sector was very open i must admire uh, harish mehta ji that how how nicely he he mentioned and uh, he clarified that point time and again we say that this much loss is occurring this much previous pesticides are occurring really i i must uh, uh, give my compliments to him thank you sir so, well well thank you so much thank you so much so so Uh, i think from my side my remarks are closed now so you have anything to ask uh, our organizers they will not take note of uh, note, note of it please anyway so, thank you so much again if, if, if your coach uh, here coach here who is uh, yeah i am really sorry for this uh, uh, dr mk nayak dr sahab honorable vice chancellor i uh, my, my uh, folded hand request to him for uh, his uh, valuable remarks for this session uh, because he was also uh, uh, he was also taking a note of many discussions many points which we discussed here if he is online we can have his views i, I request him to kindly join us dr naik please dr naik is there yeah i can see his uh... Uh, sir, muted. muted sir sir is muted actually okay. he is there dr rob is there sir is there is there yes dr naik is there is the doctor is dr naik there because uh, sir is, is there sir is doctor. muted uh, he he kept uh, muted and also his uh, video also not coming that time also it was interrupted his video mm -hmm. Mute, yeah. muted sir is there in the online Okay. I think we would we would like to express our thanks to uh, uh, the society, uh, to you, Dr. Chakrabarti and uh, Dr. Gogoi, uh, Dr. Uh, Naik, and uh, Dr. Madhudra, of course, uh, and and all the colleagues and all the scientific community who joined in. I think it's a great initiative. We would request if we can have a follow up to such meetings, maybe once in six months or so. Uh, so that we have better coordination, uh, better connect together. Uh, so, so thank you so very much for uh, organizing this, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, before Dr. Bogoi takes up, uh, uh, we I must thank uh, for, um, uh, for uh, uh, we had a very lively discussion on plant protection issues and active interactions between the industry, academia, and policymakers. I I feel this is. one of the unique meetings in the in the um, conferences because unless we get in touch and coordinate with the industries and farmers of course farmers scientists are contacting but you are the spokesperson for farmers as well as industries are also spokesperson so the, in that way we have all the four important stakeholders have come and expressed their issues we are highly grateful to dr chairman dr sk malotra and dr 
MK Nayak for enabling this lively discussion to happen in a very fearless and fair mode. In fact, uh, he is a very proactive person and uh, uh, we can take and he, he has done so many advancements and these things are very, very rational points which have been raised by the yeah. industry. They are very valuable and needs for further removal of any detriment in the, in the field of plant protection. We need molecules, we need their registration. The government of India uh, also needs uh, to, uh, to uh, means make it very fast. And we have to engage, um, outsource many of such kind of toxicological studies and um, in bioefficacy and all those things to bring in greater uh, transparency and all those things. Already they are transparent. Industry. Indian industry is one of the most sincere industries I have seen. And because I have, I have uh, been uh, means, uh, engaging with them for, and in fact, I learned a lot from them. Whatever I learned today, I, I, I give um, uh, those things about plant protection. 360 degree learning of plant protection I, I had with them, uh, with the, with by um, interacting with them. And thanks to all my colleagues uh, and thanks to um, ICR, thanks to NABAR, thanks to my uh, sponsors, Means they have uh, the industries who have always been uh, in the forefront for sponsoring uh, our such kind of events. So thank you all, and thanks to all my colleagues, Dr. Gogoi, Dr. Kalyan, Dr. Saran, Dr. Malkan, and um, uh, last but not the least, uh, my uh, uh, panelist, uh, panelist, and one Raju is there who is uh, behind all this. He never comes in the front. Raju of IPS and uh, Dr. Anupama. Uh, and other other people, uh, other stakeholders or panelists uh, who have participated actively at a very short notice. I can see Dr. Celia. Uh, she had been maintaining contact and remaining there for a long time. Dr. Krishna, Krishna Kumar, Dr. Dinesh. Uh, so all of you, Ms. I was Dr. Susant Banik, Dr. Pant, and many others. So my colleagues, Dr. Baranwal was also there initially. Dr. Rashmi Agrawal was there. Um, for your participation in this and making this event successful. So I would request uh, that these recommendations which have stemmed out of these discussion, all this discussion, if some of them related to policies, some of them related to issues, or uh, most of them are policies, and some of them uh, advancement um, uh, of uh, research. So Dr. Pant is also there, and many people are there who are behind my screen, uh, which I am not able to see now in, in one platform. So, uh, Dr. Srinua, my rapporteurs who are there, definitely they have done a very good job, but it's a very, very, Dr. Harish Mehta, definitely all of you are um, uh, very uh, widely uh, acknowledged for your participation and making this uh, interaction very lively. Dr. Raju, I am very grateful to you for taking everybody's point and um, letting, giving us some food for thought, giving industry, given, giving policymakers, and giving academia certain food thought and wherein we, we really work in the spirit of um, uh, PPP mode or the private public partnership mode. We have to come forward. The days are, uh, are there. Now we have to join hands together to make it more effective. And thanks for, uh, thanks for such kind of uh, enabling us making such kind of publications which are very good and that's, that kind of stewardship products, stewardship and do's and don'ts and handling stewardship for all those agrochemicals and biopesticides also will will need and even yesterday doctor um, our honorable secretary dare has recommended that there that should be translated in all the languages of the country and it should go so there so with those words i am grateful to dr malhotra dr naik and all the industries who have maintained but some of them have done at a very short notice i don't know whether we we could do justice to the uh, the entire industry's thoughts because uh, uh, many of them are in a meeting and many of them expressed that they had uh, uh, it, it was a very short time for them. Uh, thank you all. Dr. Roboy, uh, over to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, President, sir. So I, I on behalf of uh, Indian Phytopathological Society as a secretary, I express my acknowledgement and thankfulness to all the participants. Really, uh, Dr. P.K. Chakravarti sir has mentioned that in the, at the 11th hour, we could send the invitation to all the industry people and also um, few selected academic uh, people. So that's why we feel sorry 
So definitely in future we'll keep uh, well ahead of time we'll be uh, starting the communication uh, exchange of views and ideas. And uh, uh, Sir sir, so I would like to mention here. So I have also attended many conferences so far, but for such type of longest discussion with the stakeholders uh, so on this particular line. So this discussion today lasted for three, more than three and a half hours, including three deliberations and then panel discussions. Mm -hmm. Really it is uh, amazing sign. Mm -hmm. And this has happened because of the guidance and leadership of Dr. P.K. Security, he is presently our president of this society. So, and uh, from society, again, I would like to uh, acknowledge S.K. Malhotra, this Agriculture and Horticulture Commissioner, and also Vice Chancellor Dr. M.K. Nayak for spreading their valuable time. And also Dr. Malhotra uh, moderated and also this, uh, uh, directed all the programs very nicely. And, uh, and uh, also Dr. P.K. Chakravarti uh, needs due this uh, acknowledgement because he moderated the entire panel discussions uh, with the presence of our industry uh, these uh, persons. Uh, in the beginning, I mentioned that uh, so we are always working isolated. We are not coming to a single point. Definitely, there should be some convergence, and uh, in that case, uh, we should time to time we should have some of the meetings. But this is three and a half hours discussion. I feel it is not enough. So we can say this is a beginning. So, uh, from Indian Phytopathological Society, uh, so we'll be uh, planning to have at least whole day program so that we can give uh, each and everyone to express their views, suggestions, and recommendations will come from those suggestions. So at least one day, whole day, so one brainstorming session also we can organize. And uh, Dr. Anupama, uh, agricultural chemicals also uh, will be supporting because already from uh, our society, so we organized uh, two discussions. As in when that, uh, it is declared that banning of those selected 27 pesticides. So similarly, so we have to plan, definitely we are targeting to keep a plan to have a brainstorming session for entire day. It is not hardly for one hour, two hours, three hours. So in one day, so uh, we'll be planning. So we'll be meeting in future day. And uh, so I once again thank uh, to all the uh, persons who are viewing. And at one point of time in this session, I saw total uh, 48 participants were present. Now it has come down. So and today's in, uh, I feel this fruitful discussion took place. And those things recorded very sincerely uh, my uh, junior colleagues, Dr. Srinivasa and Dr. Susanta Banik. Of course, Dr. Susanta Banik is connected from Nagaland. So his uh, network problem was there. Now also, I don't uh, think that he's having a smooth network connectivity. Despite of that, he is able to record all the discussion and important uh, points and your dis suggestions. And uh, Dr. Srinivasa from our own divisions also keeping records. So at last, not the least, so I would like, like to thank all of you and hoping to meet you once again in some future planning. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, we end up. We leave. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. You could see the questions on the chat box. Yes, yeah, sir. sir. We'll see, sir. Yeah. We'll not on. Yeah, there are five or six questions there. Uh, yeah. Srinivasa, you record. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'll record, sir. Record, yeah. So, if uh, Dr. Srinivas uh, records, then we can make a gist of all the recommendations coming out. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can submit uh, when we, uh, because tomorrow in validity, we may have. Uh, uh, okay, sir. So, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I'll make it. Thank you so much, Dr. Srinivas. Okay, thank you, sir. And, uh, thank, you, sir. thank you, thank you. So, happy holiday to all of you. Thank, thank you. Happy holiday to thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.